racing week on SEN Track. From Warwick Farm to Kimbla Grange, Ballina to Hawkesbury, Tamworth to Gunnada. In lockdown, racing continues New South Wales wide and SEN Track is your home for all the action. Welcome to SEN's coverage of the Olympic Games 2020. For Mate Communications, award-winning Aussie service and a bonus title music subscription included on selected mobile plans. And Zero, invoicing but instantly, receipts but organised, cash flow but clearer. Try Zero free for 30 days. Search Zero X E R O. Uh, yes, indeed. A very good evening to you. The evening session for day three. Wonderful to have your company, Sam Hargraves, here on what has been just an amazing day uh, in Australian sport. And we heard Basil Zemplis earlier today say, to become a legend, you have to beat a legend. And that's what Ariane Titmus did today when she beat Katie Ledecky, widely considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest, female swimmer of all time to win gold in the women's 400 metre freestyle. They'll meet again in two more events in these Olympics. But this was one of those moments, wasn't it? This was this was on this was the hopes of a nation moment, and we get a few events every Olympics where we pin a lot of our hopes uh, for gold on that particular moment, on that particular event, and this was absolutely one of them. We're going to relive that throughout the course of the evening as well, because there's never, no such thing as hearing something too many times when it comes to history being made and in the way in which it was made as well. So if you want to share your memories of today, how you viewed it, what you you went through watching it one three hundred seven three six seven three six or zero four double three ninety eight uh, eleven sixteen. So we'll relive the race again. We'll get the reaction from Ariane Titmus's parents. Uh, Steve spoke to Jared Waitley a little earlier on today. We'll hear from Katie Ledecky as well after the race, uh, and from Dawn Fraser too. After six thirty, uh, we're going to catch up with the only other Australian, well, the last Australian woman, I should say, to have ever won the women's 400 metre freestyle at the Olympics. And that was Shane Gould, who won three individual medals, a bronze and a silver as well, back in 1972 as a 15-year-old. So that's how long it's taken for us to get another gold in that particular event. And we'll ask Shane why, why it's been such an elusive medal for Australians uh, to claim. She's the third woman to ever claim a gold in, in that event as well. So we'll go through the history uh, of that event and the women who have claim that title and the ones who have gone pretty close as well. But 0433 98 11 16 off the text uh, if you'd like to get involved. And we've got a heap of action tonight as well, and Australians abound in a heap of it. So uh, Alex Winwood's not too far away from getting his uh, preliminary round in the 48 to 52 kilogram men's flyweight in the boxing. 24 years of age from WA, a proud Noongar man from Mandurah. He's an amateur flyweight champion. He just missed out on Rio. So he will take on uh, Patrick Chinyemba from Zambia. Uh, and we'll give you a result of that. Surfing, we've got two surfers still alive in the surfing, and hasn't that been just a wonderful addition to, to the Olympics? It's really given just something a little bit different uh, to the overall uh, rich tapestry that is these games of the 32nd Olympiad. So, unfortunately, uh, Steph Gilmore was knocked out today, and Julian Wilson was just knocked, uh, knocked out by uh, two-time world champion Gabriel Medina. But Owen Wright is still alive. His heat's scheduled to go uh, at around 6.30 this evening. Um, he's taking on Jeremy Flores, who's the currently ranked number 25 in the world from France. So we will uh, catch as much of that as we can at 7 p.m. Tennis, men's, men's singles, round two. Max Purcell, this is a great story, 190 in the world. Uh, Dominic Kopfer is his opponent from Germany. Now, Max beat the world number 15, Felix Agor Aliasimi from uh, Canada, and he only was included late when Andy Murray withdrew. So he's doing the country proud, um, and he will be in action from about 7 p.m. tonight. So too will Sam Stozer and Alan Perez. Uh, they take on Monaco at Nicolescu and Raluca Olaru. 
uh, later on this evening at 7pm. That's the same time that our men's rugby sevens have their second game today. They went down 29-19. to 19. It was a great fight back, though. I think they were 29-0 down at half time, and they were able to put 19 points on the board against Argentina. But we're currently ranked number five in the world in the men's rugby sevens, taking on uh, the Republic of Korea. So South Korea ranked 31 in the world. They only qualified by upsetting the 21-ranked Hong Kong in 2019. Japan, who's ranked number 10 in the world, they were already in, uh, given that they are the host nation. So um, a bit of work to do for Australia. The last Rugby Sevens tournament was back in March in 2020, which New Zealand won. Fiji, of course, the reigning gold medalists uh, from Rio. And it's been a little while since Australia have actually won uh, a Rugby Sevens tournament. It was the Australian Sevens back in 2018 uh, that they were able to claim a title in. Water polo tonight, the Aussie Stingers uh, are in action against the Netherlands. That's the women, so that'll be at the Satsumi Water Polo Centre. Ash Barty in tennis action with Storm Sanders there second round match uh, against the team from China. Uh, we've got swimming tonight as well. So heats uh, in the swimming. Madison Wilson, who was part of that 4x100 metre relay, the heat team, uh, unfortunately wasn't in the final team, but still does get a gold medal. Uh, she will be in action in the women's 200 metre freestyle uh, in heat two. Ariane Titmus will be back in action today after claiming that remarkable gold medal and one that we will not ever forget. Uh, so she got gold in the 400 metre freestyle today. Her heat for the 200 metres, expected to make the final, expected to go head-to-head with Katie Ledecky uh, again. And we might even ask Shane Gould, who does she believe has the edge in that event? And they'll meet again in the 800 metres as well, you'd think. So we'll talk to her about that. The men's 200 metre butterfly heats are on. David Morgan representing Australia in that. Maddie Temple as well in the 200 butterfly. Boxing, the women later on in the featherweight. Sky Nicholson uh, in action against AG Im from the Republic of Korea. Uh, And we've got softball too. So Australians, the Aussie spirit have to beat Mexico to get themselves into that bronze medal game against Canada who beat them 7-1 a couple of days ago. USA and Japan will play for gold. Badminton tonight, Titania Mapasa and Gronje Somerville in women's doubles action and then the swimming will continue on. So the women's 1500 metre freestyle, Katie Ledecky in that as well. But Maddie Goff will be our representative uh, in that particular heat in heat four and then Kia Melvilleton uh, will be the last of our swimmers to go around as well. So heaps of action to bring you tonight. Would love you to be involved with this as well. And the reason why is because at every Olympics we find great stories. At every Olympics we find some great names. At every Olympics we find some peculiarities like false starts in the triathlon today when the boat just decided to just roll up in front of half the contestants that are about to jump into the water. Um, I saw a, I saw a funny meme coming through the other day from an Argentinian volleyball with the surname Loser, uh, which was highlighted and obviously not making fun of the person, but uh, there's just little interesting things that come through. And because there's so many events and so many athletes, you can't be covering everything all the one time. And we've always said on SEN, this is as much your show as it is any of ours that sit behind the microphone. So we'd almost love you to be a part of this and co-host with me tonight and throughout the next couple of weeks. So if you're watching something that we're not uh, as part of uh, 7 Plus, you might be watching an event that isn't uh, on prime time and you want to report in, please do so. 0433 98 11 16 1300 736 736. The night session brought to you by Tire Power. Tire Power, your trusted tire experts. Uh, and for Mate Communications award winning Aussie service, mobile plans from $20 and zero online accounting to help you do business but better. So we'll keep going around the grounds throughout the course of the night too. And we do that for Beaumont Tiles. Shop Beaumont Tiles, tile.com.au. So, you being involved will be a great part of the evening sessions with me. This is the one thing we can do that no other broadcaster can, and we are so proud to be a broadcast partner uh, of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. We can do it interactively. So one 736 736 whether where you're listening, no matter how you're finding us and where you're finding us, right around the country, that number, one 736 736 or 0433 98 11 16 uh, off the temper text. So we'll hear from Shane Gould uh, after about 6.30. Uh, and when we come back, we will go through all the action from today. But before we get into the evening session, let's hear from uh, Top Sport. Uh, Top Sport, the day three evening odds. An odds update for Top Sport. Home of the Top Sports betting multi. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858. Good evening. It's Tristan Merlihan here from Top Sport. We have four gold medals still to hand out this evening. 
two in the fencing and two in the taekwondo, which are not likely to feature any Aussies, but we do have markets up on the top sport platforms for each and every one of the medal events. We have a big night ahead in the pool where Titmus backs up her impressive victory in the heat for the 200 metre freestyle, where she's currently a short price favourite to claim another gold for the Aussies, with Madison Wilson also a chance to medal. Another event to monitor for Aussie fans is the women's 1500 metre freestyle, where the heat start just before 9pm, where we see American Caddy Ledecky going as a very short price commodity to win gold, but with Ledecky's hectic program, Aussie Maddie Goff will be fancying her chances for a big swim, where she's currently on the third line of betting at a quote of $8. For anyone doing what I'm doing, sitting up to all hours watching the great event, enjoy yourself and make sure you gamble responsibly. Top Sport, home of the Top Sports betting multi. Download the Top Sport app today. Gamble responsibly. 1-800-858-858. Uh, big thanks to Top Sport. Uh, don't forget, you can get in touch with us on the temper text, 0433 98 11 16. SEN's coverage of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics for mate and for zero. So we're going to get stuck into the night session. Alex Winwood, of course, the first Aussie in action tonight in the men's 48 to 52 kilogram. That's the flyweight division, the preliminary uh, round of 32 at the Koguga Khan Arena. And then at 6.30, really looking forward to this, Owen Wright, um, the last of our men in the hunt, in the surfing. He won his first round heat, beating John John uh, from uh, the US and uh, John John Florence. And he's up against Jeremy Flores in the round three heats. So the, the the first round heats were against four other surfers. Now they're through to the knockout stages. He bypasses round two and into round three against the world number 25. So for those who may not know a heap about Owen Wright, 31 years of age, New South Wales, um, and this is the guy you would have remembered hearing about. He had two perfect 10 rides to win the Fiji Pro back in 2015, and then shortly after that, uh, he had a tumble and suffered a really serious brain injury, had minor bleeding on the brain during a training session at Pipeline in Hawaii in December and two days before the final event of the year he sat out the whole 2016 season had to learn to surf again essentially teach himself how to surf again he won his return event at Snapper Rocks uh, at 2017 on the Gold Coast and he put it down to dad power at the time after becoming a father to his son, Varley, just three months earlier with his partner, Keita. So he's a three-time uh, World Surf League event winner. And he's up against the number 25 in the world, Jeremy Flores. So uh, that will be the one that we'll be trying to bring you uh, the most of the action from over the next half hour. So we will take a break and come back. And when we do, if you've missed out on uh, the medals for today's events, I'll take you through the medal tally. And we'll go through some of the highlights of today's proceedings. Powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game-changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility, while the high-back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer today. Purchase any 4 and 20 product from anywhere 4 and 20 is sold for an opportunity to win four PS5s. One for you and your three best mates. Together you'll go head to head in a game of Fortnite with your AFL Dream Team. Plus a 4 and 20 branded Sharon footy to be won daily. TNC supplies. The FNT AFL game on .com .au. 31 21 Retain receipts or wrappers. NSWTP TP slash 00896 ACT TP 21 slash 00450 SAT 21 slash 420. In one carry on an overturned car back on its feet northbound just past the Central Coast Highway. Police were on site. Earlier smash at Beverly Hills. It's on Stony Creek Road eastbound. Lane 1 taken out past Dora Street just east of King George's Road. No problems the M2 I'm seeing past Penny Hills Road with a run on Penny Hills Road steady up towards Thornley past the Commonara Parkway. New South Wales, Optus have a special offer just for you. Until August 1st, get 20% off the $55 month to month SIM plan over 12 months. T's and C's apply. Visit Optus online today. The Hockey Roos and the Kookaburras are going for gold at the Olympics. Check out the Hockey Australia website for ways to watch all the matches and find out where you can play. Go Australia! Then after the game, see our biggest stars on home soil in the Sultana brand Hockey One League. How good is hockey? Watch our Hockey Roos and Kookaburras at the Olympics, then see our world-class Australian hockey stars on home soil in the Hockey One League. Buy your tickets today at hockeyone.com.au. Save that try when Brownie takes one for the 
team at Brandry skated by This golden crusty pastry watched us tailor kick the sky When Ben Simmons makes a three, we give a big high five What future sport looks like just won't be right without a pie Oh, what a lovely pie, me mates of four and twenty pie Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. Hot potty you've ever seen Rain comes on steady Hot and strong It just keeps on and on Ask your plumber about Rain's advanced Stainless steel water heaters With 12 year cylinder warranties Install the rain Install the rain Except nothing less than Australia's best. Just really want customer support from someone close by. True Blue award-winning Aussie support, you betcha. Mate has got your back. Mate serves up award-winning internet and mobile. Get unlimited talk and text, plus great data inclusions with data banking of unused data up to 100 gigabytes for only $20 a month. Plus, you get a Tidal Music subscription included free with selected plans. Mate, how good's that? What are you waiting for, mate? Choose a provider you can trust. Like mate. Visit letsbemates.com.au. SEN's coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Mate Communications. Award winning Aussie service and a bonus title music subscription included on selected mobile plans. Uh, it's wonderful to have your company. Evening session on day three. Plenty of action to bring you throughout the course of the night and uh, looking forward to having your company through it. Um, mentioned earlier today, that, and we're going to relive uh, Ariane Titmus making history uh, in the 400 metre freestyle, but it seemed to be one of the moments where it was a uh, the hopes of the nation rest on. And I want to know from you, when you look at the Olympic schedule throughout the next couple of weeks, what are those events where you think this is the one that will stop us all in our tracks? These are the ones that we're hanging on. This will mean so much to so many people. There seems to be a few at every event. There seems to be a story and a narrative. And this is certainly one of them. Uh, Ariane Titmus looking to topple off uh, a, a woman that many consider the greatest to ever do it. Five Olympic gold medals, 15 World Championship gold medals. Uh, Katie Ledecky is still a world record holder in three uh, of the individual swims. So just wanting to know from you, what are the moments? Is it the boomers for you? Is that what you're really hanging on to? Is it Jess Fox who can't not win world championships but hasn't yet been able to win an Olympic gold? And could this be the year because she's been competing in the K1, which despite being a star in that, the C1 classification is actually her better event. So that's finally at the Olympics this year. Uh, and she was fantastic yesterday getting through pretty much unscathed. So is that the event that you're most looking forward to? What's the hopes of the nation event for you in this Olympic Games? one 736 736 433 98 11 16 But this today uh, was that moment. It's getting tighter. This is where Arnia has to turn it on. And an excellent turn set from Titmus. She needs to set herself up for this last 50 metres, which means she needs to be going into it and extending her stroke, lengthening it out, putting in more speed so she can come off the wall quickly and deliver a great final last 50 metres. Here come on, Arnie. goes. She's right up on the shoulder of the great American now. 20 gold medals at Olympic and World Championship level. Now nothing between them. 350 She's in front now. for the first time. 50 to go. This is it going to be a sprint now? What can Arnie bring out here? This is what they've waited for. Here we go. The sprint to the end. Can she be beaten, Katie Ledecky, the defending champion, the world record holder, Ariane Titmus in front, match race down to the end, stroke for stroke, she's in front, Arnie Titmus, Ariane's in front, to become a legend, you have to beat a legend, and that's what we've seen, Australia win gold, Ariane Titmus, confirmation, a coronation, we can start the celebration for Australia, Arnie gets it done, 
in the 400 free. She beats Katie Ledecky. Oh, Baz, to borrow a line from Bruce, what a legend, what a champion. Arnie, you did it. Describe this moment for us. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm trying to contain my emotions. Um, you don't have to, you know. Why do I get the 200 tonight? Forget it. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. You know, this past year, I don't know whether it's gone fast or slow, but more than anything to get here was a relief. And then to come here and do the job, um, I'm over the moon. Katie just walked past. There was a lovely moment on the pool deck. What did she say to you at the end? I mean, I thanked her. Um, I wouldn't be here without her. You know, she sets this incredible standard and um, all credit to her for the swimmer she is. And um, I've just been trying to chase her. And so it's really exciting now that we kind of have this battle going. Um, it's really fun to race. So, yeah, that's the, the best part about it. Um, in the race, I tried to stay as composed as I could. Tried to stick to my race plan, and I can't believe I actually pulled it off. You nailed it. Um, we just heard from mum and dad. We know that your sister and your grandparents are with them in Noosa. You have a look at the monitor there if you like. Oh, that's no. Dawn too. <laughs> Who's that? Dawn Fraser. Oh, Dawn is there. Um, they're listening to you. What do you want to say to them? Oh, I just want to thank them for everything. You know, none of this would have been possible without them moving to Brisbane to train, and it's not just my parents, it's my sister, my my boyfriend, my entire family, my cousins and their partners and my auntie and her partner up at Noosa as well. So it's a big crew around me and I definitely couldn't do it without them. We saw some amazing vision of your coach Dean Boxall going absolutely bananas, which you would expect from Box. Um, what's he meant to you? Oh, Dean means everything to me. Um, coming into this race, we knew exactly what we had to do, so we didn't really discuss to do in the pool. It was just more of a have fun moment. Um, I love you. Um, have fun. That type of thing. So we practiced this for so long. Um, I just knew what I had to do when I got out there. All of Australia is so proud of you. Well done. Everyone's been watching on the edge of their seats. You've done us so proud. Thank you. Go and get your gold medal and we'll chat to you again. Well Thank done, you. Arnie. Ariane Titmus, uh, the race itself, and when she loomed up with, uh, was starting to make ground with about 150 to go, and then when they got on almost level terms and turned, you just, you just got the sense that you knew, didn't you? It just felt like there was no denying her there, and. Oh, it, I don't, and I, and I'll speak about this to Shane Gould a little later, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I don't know why. But I was in tears, and I've never, ever interviewed Ariane Titmus. I've never spoken to Ariane Titmus. I've never met Ariane Titmus. I've had nothing to do with her life in any way, shape, or form, yet when I was watching that all unfold, uh, I was reaching for the tissues. Uh, and, and there is something about the Olympics that will do that to us. I know people that don't watch any sport at any stage of the year, but when the Olympics comes on, they are glued to it 24-7 during the course of the Games. And... Every Olympics, we find a story that resonates with us. We find an athlete, and it might be a sport that you've never, ever paid any attention to. It might not be something that you've even knew existed, but you, you turn on the TV at a certain point, you hear somebody speak, or you see somebody achieve something, and it sticks with you forever. And if you've got memories of some of those over history, then I'd love to hear them. Um, I remember, I reckon it was 1988 uh, for me, Duncan Armstrong, that was that was the first time where I ever really connected at seven years of age. I think it was to, to the Olympics, and 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 I was hooked from then on. You might have a moment like that for you, and I'd love to hear about it. One three hundred seven three six seven three six zero four double three ninety eight eleven sixteen. Before we keep moving through, and we're going to hear from Katie Ledecky in just a moment, Dawn Fraser and Steve Titmus, who spoke to Jerry Waitley today. I really would love to be interactive with with you throughout the course of the night sessions over the next couple of weeks. I'm with you till midnight, uh, and I'd love for you to get involved too. So your impressions, what you're seeing, even report in on sports that you think we're not giving enough attention to. This is your show as well. One three hundred. 736 736 and I'm sure people I've already seen memes making the comparisons between Dean Boxall and his reaction today which was uh, <laughs> almost violent in its celebrations it was exuberant to say the least uh, people have been putting that in comparison with Chris Scott earlier in the year with the uh, the Gary Rowan kick out of the siren side by side they're not that dissimilar um, but I don't think Chris Scott had someone trying to get his attention saying, please go back to your area and put your mask back on. Um, 
So that will uh, entertain us throughout the next couple of weeks, I've got no doubt. Uh, but Greg's given us a call from Blackburn. Hello to you, Greg. Hey, Sammy. How you going, buddy? I'm oh, fantastic. Um, how, could, how, could I, how could I be anything but great? Well, how could anybody... Is, I mean, look, we're in lockdown and everything, but look, you're getting ratings of 2.8 million, so at least, you know, people are getting a bit of enjoyment. Um, my greatest memory was Perkins coming from the 8th lane. Oh, in the yeah. 1500. Yep. That was incredible. Um, and I was also in tears uh, today with uh, Ted Bridge. Amazing. But Cole Chalmers, Bastards of the 32 um, splits for his, uh, to get us a bronze. Mm. Fifth fastest in history. That was mine. I mean, even though, you know, Ariana was unbelievable, Cole Chalmers, that was really my moment. It, he powered over them in the last 20. Incredible. And it's great to be in lockdown. I can sit and work with my computer and my laptop and I can watch the Olympics and it's, um, you know, it's quite special, really. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Greg, and you, we're working beautifully together. As I said, I, I want I want you and the SEN family to co-host throughout the next couple of weeks, and you've done beautifully. So let's relive that moment. Uh, the 4x100 metre uh, men's final uh, weren't expected to really do much in this, but Matty Temple, Zach Inserti, uh, Alexander Graham and Kyle Chalmers, and it was Kyle Chalmers who you spoke about that came from sixth to second. Out in front of the United States still. Look at Chalmers coming. Chalmers is getting them up into bronze medal position. Can he get to silver? United States first, Italy second. Kyle Chalmers, what a swim from this young man. A bronze medal for Australia. Kyle Chalmers, one of the great races. So from six to third, I should have said, uh, I meant to say there, Greg, but it was an incredible moment, mate, and thank you for just segueing into it beautifully for us. Spine tingling it was. It absolutely was, Greg. Call as many times as you like throughout the course of the next uh, couple of weeks and with you till midnight every night. Uh, Paul in Newcastle. Hello to you, mate. Yeah, how you going, mate? I'm really well. Mate, um, I've probably been said a hundred times, but, mate, when Karen Perkins won that gold, that, that was uh, coming from, like, last qualifying to winning it. That was insanely good. Yeah, you, you get no argument. It, it um, as I say, I think, and we often talk about our greatest ever Olympic moments, but I think there's always a moment too, and it might not be the greatest, and it might not be one that a lot of people know, but there's always a moment that somebody has. If you're an Olympic devotee, there's always the one thing that reeled you in. There was always that one event that you saw. I can remember Debbie Flintoff King going, that was amazing, uh, and couldn't believe what she was able uh, to achieve. And, and, and there's always the one that reels you in. Was that it for you, Paul? Yeah, yeah, because uh, like, I, I just read him off like everyone else and I thought he mm. just wasn't possible. Yeah. And I heard an interview with him later and they said, when did it really start hurting? And he said the first lap. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, it was true, cheap will. Yep, yeah, uh, absolutely. Beautiful, yeah. Beautifully recollected. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I reckon Ivan is in Ivanhoe. Ivan, um... I love the fact that your name is the first part of your suburb. It makes things so easy, doesn't it? I, I, I wanted, I'd love to do a phone <laughs> oh, going, is your name your suburb? Uh, but far away. Oh, look, the, the gentleman before just talked about Kieran Perkins. And that Saturday morning, you talk about get up. I was laying on the couch, not much happening. And Dennis Committee came out. Perkins can't win. They'd written him off. Dennis said, come on, Kieran. Get up, Australia. And I got up and stood up. And I cried, <laughs> like you said before. Yep, that yep. was unbelievable. Dennis Committee, was he? God, he couldn't win. He can't win. He got up and won. Fantastic. But what about the other one? Duncan Armstrong and Laurie Lawrence. Remember after he was yelling at the animal. Go, the animal. Go, you animal. How good <laughs> yes. was that? It was yeah. absolutely fantastic. And uh, I guess Laurie's still going. You should get hold of him tonight. It'd be worth hearing from him. Uh, we'll have to make a point of doing that over the next couple of weeks. Beautifully. Uh, it's a great suggestion, Ivan. Uh, and I'm all for it. Thank you very much. Give us a call at any stage. one three hundred seven three six seven three six zero four double three ninety eight eleven sixteen. 736 736 Our other medal today, uh, Emma McKeon. Now, this is someone we really need to keep an eye on throughout the course of the Olympics. Seven events she's going to be competing in. She's already got a gold in the 4 by 100 metres in the women's. That was an incredible moment. Our first gold medal of, of these games, our second today with Ariane Titmus. But she's got another five events after today and is eyeing off history. Perkins and Jones, Liesl Jones, have got more Olympic medals than any other uh, swimmers. 
nine respect, so nine each. And she is looking to put herself up in that and maybe even past. She's now with today's bronze has six Olympic medals. And this was the bronze medal swim today in the 100 metre butterfly. the screen, Emma McKeon, Sarah Showstrom also a good start alongside McKeon, the American Tory Husk number one ranked this year, a very good start from her also. Marie Wattle really got up and racing nice and quick, Emma McKeon off the blocks of 0.73 which is a little bit slower than her technically quick start, Zhang Yufei is getting on the wall here, going out 25-7-1, so a nice sharp first 50. So the Aussie back in, fourth spot at the 50. She'll need to bring it home. She's got Husk alongside her. Number one ranked this year, Zhang Yufei out in front. Marie Waddle, the French swimmer, lifting as well. So is Emma. She's in this race. She's in this finish. They're under world record pace. Showstrom can't win. What's Emma got? Pushing up into second spot. Going hard. She's in this finish. Lane three. Look for champion at 21 and a bronze medal for Emma <laughs> McKeon. What a swim. Maggie McNeil can't see the ball. She has no idea. She's just won the 100 fly. She has just had the most exceptional swim of her life. 55.59 and a Commonwealth record from Maggie McNeil. Emma McKeon took that Commonwealth record off her and now she's won it back. That is an outstanding swim from out in lane seven. Maggie McNeil, our Commonwealth record holder, you've done a great job. I just love that she couldn't see the board. She was just so shocked. She executed that perfectly. She went out. She just sat a little bit behind but just came in at the wall there. So Emma McKeon sitting in third place with a time of 55.72. So... There we go. Uh, so the sixth ever Olympic medal for Emma McKeon and four, uh, five more events for her at this Olympics. It's a story to watch, uh, and we'll hear a little bit uh, from her uh, and her post-race interview uh, a little bit later on as we go around the grounds for Beaumont Tiles. Uh, they are keeping your Renault dreams alive. Shop online at tile.com.au. Take it from me. They are sensational. Uh, did a brilliant job uh, at our place. Uh, so don't forget Beaumont Tiles. .com, tile .com .au. Uh, 1300 736 736 of course, to get yourself involved. Uh, Owen Wright is is in the water at the moment uh, against the Frenchman Jeremy Flores in their heat. So we will take a break and come back and I'll bring you some of that action uh, on the other side of this. Beverly Hills, all this smash. Let's take it lane one eastbound, Stony Creek Road, Dora Street. The M1 is smash in lane one northbound. Carry on just past the Central Coast Highway. Cruiser are on site. Looking at the M1, steady between Newcastle and Sydney both ways. No problems at Princess Highway. Southbound odds the M1 down towards Wollongong, but the Harbour Tunnel steady off the freeway north, Sydney up towards Moore Park via the ED Tunnel. Until July 30, all non-essential businesses must close to the public and operate online or through click and collect only. Visit nsw.gov.au for the rules. From rugby to running, sporting dreams start at Rebel. Shop the biggest range with the best brands in store or at rebelsport.com today and bring your sporting dreams to life. Rebel, sport is calling. Giddy up for New South Wales Racing Week on SEN Track. From Warwick Farm to Kembla Grange, Ballina to Hawkesbury, Tamworth to Canada. In lockdown, racing continues New South Wales wide and SEN Track is your home for all the action. At Harley Heaven, the front doors are closed, you know, it's Campbell, but in lockdown, the day roar day of Harley Davidson right is SEN. louder than ever. We've had to adjust to a new normal, but some things are just not normal. Why didn't you poo? So join us today Not on normal. SCN Track. A recent change in your bowel habits. Not normal. Streaming live 
any unexplained anytime weight loss on the SEN app. And not if you want to watch normal. this in the studio, severe oh, no, abdominal can. pain. Jump on the SEN app and you not can see normal. everything unfold. If you notice any symptoms, well, that's talk with your GP today. today. You knew to find Jersey, out what's pacing, not normal racing, or to donate, go to bowelcancerAustralia.org. Rightio, Fletch, here's a bit of trivia for you. Think about this. They're Australian made. They will help you sleep in comfort. Snoring, sore neck, etc. I've got one of these. I love it. Fits the right SEN track for the winners. You'll have just his trainers, owners, tipsters. You want too, to know so what's happening today in racing? Don't miss the winners. So many people have been asking me about that. They say, is it really that good? Your yes, yes it is really that good. So you can order yours. Spinely Pillow with free delivery. Just go to spinelys.com.au. That's spinelyze.com.au. And you know what? You can take this one. You can take it now. You can take it later. Don't call me. Campbell Brown, all in the studio. When the cravings hit you, how does a ripper mega box from Red Rooster sound? Mega, yes, please. Packed with a rip roll, two buttermilk wings, chips, mash and gravy, and a drink. Get your station. Ripper Mega Boss now in Red Rooster. Anywhere, the Rooster's anytime. calling. On the SEN app. Giddy up for New South Wales studio, Racing Week on SEN Track. On the Warwick Farm, and you can see and everything Ballard at the Hawkesbury, Tamworth to Gunnada. In track. lockdown, you knew racing Tracy, continues Tracy, New South and Wales wide. And SEN Track is your home for all the action. This radio station endorses the commercial radio codes of practice, which have been registered by the Australian Broadcasting Authority. The codes relate to taste and decency, accuracy and fairness in news and current affairs. Winners. Advertising, Australian music content, you and complaints handling. Copies of the codes are available by contacting this, this radio station we'll or Commercial Radio Australia on 02 9281 6577. If you feel a code of practice has been breached and you wish to register a complaint, myself, your complaint should be made G, in writing. No See the complaint section at scn.com.au. Last year, he turned 130k into 500 grand for punters. Congratulations to Troy Little is Inside Track Club, you're part of an exclusive punting group with Australian best. Greyhound Hunter. Hunter. Join Troy Little in live, live chat and video analysis for every Greyhound race app. each Thursday and Saturday in night. Studios, SEN can. Inside Track Club. Join now. And you can Look for one session and try it out or get early happens. bird deals and jump on board the gear. SEN.com.au forward slash SEN Track. Club Venture Dems Feeds Muted. Reply. Gamble responsibly. Call 1 800 858 858. SEN's night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for tyre power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at tyre power now. So Owen Wright uh, at Surigasaki uh, Surf Beach at the moment. 13.84 in his heat against the Frenchman uh, Jeremy Flores. Uh, so just having a look at the oncoming sets uh, and paddling out a little bit further to find a position that he likes at the moment. And I'll bring you some of the action as soon as it looks like he's about to mount up. Uh, off the text, Steve, not a fan, though, of the surfing. Surfing like watching paint dry, waiting for waves, then not knowing what's actually a good ride. Um, easily most excited to see Stewie McSwain's race uh, come in, Australian long-distance runner. Here's Owen Wright. Hey. Owen Wright used his priority there, Jeremy. No, used the priority and uh, and then had to pull out. Didn't like what was unfolding with that wave. Uh, off the text, Dean. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Stewie McSwain uh, in the, uh, obviously, the athletics is next week. Uh, he's Australia's uh, long-distance runner, so he'll be in action there. Uh, Tipmas Unbelievable is at her coach going Burko. I'm hoping that the Boomers can knock off the US and take the gold medal off them. Well, uh, US went down to France, and there's a fair bit of infighting going on from what we're hearing from Team USA been a few little Kevin Durant things which shouldn't surprise any basketball fans of him being quite petulant towards teammates and uh, and uh, overly conf confrontational, but that's just how Kevin Durant rolls. So there's some issues and some of the players are getting a bit grumbly. They're not liking uh, Coach Popovich's San Antonio offense. Uh, so there's a few just... Just things that aren't quite going swimmingly for, for Team USA, but they are so stacked full of talent that you'd expect them to be there at the pointy end. But uh, Australia getting their start off uh, with a solid, not spectacular, but solid win uh, over Nigeria last night, if you weren't aware of that result. Uh, so we're just keeping an eye on... Surigasaki Surf Beach at the moment to see when Owen Wright's going to uh, pull the trigger. But he's got a 13.84 lead at the moment. Flores has caught a couple, but nothing to great effect as he drops in now. Let's have a listen. Jennifer Reyes, two ways. This is his third. Pumping along there. Went for a big alley-oop manoeuvre. Incomplete. 
Priority goes back to Owen Wright. Might be a good time to visit the judging criteria. Commitment of degree of difficulty. There's five components. The first being the commitment and the degree of difficulty. Innovative and progressive manoeuvres. I suppose the tube rides aren't necessarily that, uh, but the aerial surfing is the combination of major manoeuvres. There was only the one tube for Jeremy there. Variety of manoeuvres and speed, power and flow. So 7.17, he's got himself up to score-wise now, but uh, 13.84 for Owen Wright, uh, currently ranked number 20 in the world. Flores ranked number 25. Uh, off the text, uh, hi, Sam. The surfing will be even better tomorrow if the typhoon turns up. That's from Daryl in Reservoir. Fingers crossed that it does, and obviously it doesn't do any damage and doesn't hurt anybody, but it does make for much better waves when they get those kind of conditions rolling through. Uh, off the text, well said, Sammy. Love Love to have a beer with Duncan. Used to sing that. Can't believe you said that on 41. There are two standout moments. Duncan Armstrong winning and Hayley Lewis winning. Cheers, mate. Top stuff. That's from Azza. Uh, Carl Lewis and Debbie Flintoff King, the earliest memories coming through off the text. Uh, given that we're going all around Australia on the SEN network, some of your numbers uh, might not be saved in the Melbourne system. We're on base. So make sure you put your name and where you're texting from around the country. Love to know who we're conversing with. 0433 98 11 16 off the temper text. Temper, a mattress like no other. Uh, so plenty happening tonight, as I mentioned, and uh, just to go through a couple more results throughout the course of the day, and uh, we'll have a quick look at the medal tally, and I'll get that up when my computer starts cooperating with me. So uh, the medal tally at the moment, United States, 14 medals, 7 gold, 3 silver, 4 bronze. China, 6 gold, 3 silver, 6 bronze. Japan, 6 gold, 1 silver, 2 bronze. Great Britain, 3 gold, 2 silver, 1 bronze. Korea, 3 gold and 3 bronze. And Australia, our 2 golds, obviously the women's 4 by 100 and today the 400 metre freestyle, Ariane Titmus, uh, our silver Medal, of course, was yesterday, and we got a couple more bronze today in the 100-metre butterfly with Emma McKeon uh, and in the men's 4-by-100-metre freestyle final. So we are currently sitting sixth on the medal tally, uh, and our Olympic medal tally proudly brought to you by Rebel Sport. Uh, sporting dreams start at rebel, rebelsport.com. Uh, so every day we will bring you that medal tally throughout the course of the evening as well on the evening session, uh, which is thanks to Tire Power, Tire Power Trusted Tire Experts, and the medal tally for Rebel Sports. Shop the biggest range with the best brands in store or at rebelsport.com. Uh, a couple more results today before we go away and come back with uh, swimming legend Shane Gould, uh, the last woman to win the 400 metre freestyle back in 1972. Um, the men's 200 metre freestyle semi final, Aussie Thomas Neal placed fourth. Uh, he just missed the final. The women's 100 metre backstroke semi, Chelsea Hodges finished fifth and missed out on the final by one one hundredth of a second, which is uh, devastating for her. Mitch Larkin swam really well, um, just an out and out professional. He finished second in his semi. He's qualified third fastest. Uh, Isaac Cooper placed seventh in the women's 100 metre backstroke semi. Kaylee McEwen finished second. Emily Seabom was third to qualify for the final tomorrow. John Millman was defeated in his round two match against Dav uh, Davidovich Fokina um, from Spain. Uh, Julian Wilson knocked out in round three of the men's surfing by two-time world champion Gabriel Medina. Uh, it was, the score was 13 to 14.3. So we'll hear a little bit from Julian Wilson uh, a little later on in the evening. Steph Gilmore was knocked out too of the women's surfing heats by South African uh, Bianca Buitendag. Uh, Gilmore scored a 10 to Buitendag's 13.93. Gilmore had right away on the last wave, didn't like it, or one of the last waves, didn't like it and gave it up, and it turned out to be the heat-winning wave um, for the South African. Uh, that was in the surfing. In the triathlon uh, today, Jacob Burtwistle uh, finished 16th. Uh, Kristen Blumenfeld from uh, Norway uh, was the gold medalist. Uh, we'll hear from Jacob Burt with a little bit later as well. In the Rugby Sevens, our men uh, were beaten by Argentina 21-19, to but they're back in action tonight against South Korea, so we'll bring that one to as well. But on the other side of this, uh, I promised we'd have a chat to Shane Gould. Now has an affinity with Ariane Titmus. Uh, we will hear from one of our greatest ever after this. SEN's coverage of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. When painting, tools make a difference. Monarch Premium Quality Brushes and Accessories give that professional finish. Get inspired at monarchpainting.com.au and find all your Monarch Painting tools at Bunnings and leading paint specialists. Oh. 
purchase any 4 and 20 product from anywhere 4 and 20 is sold for an opportunity to win four PS5s. One for you and your three best mates. Together you'll go head-to-head in a game of Fortnite with your AFL Dream Team. Plus a 4 and 20 branded Sharon footy to be won daily. TNC Supply. See fntaflgameon.com.au. It's 31 8, 21. Retain receipts or wrappers. NSWTP slash 00896. ACTTP 21 slash 00450. SAT 21 slash 420. Giddy up for New South Wales Racing Week on SEN Track. From Warwick Farm to Kembla Grange, Ballina to Hawkesbury, Tamworth to Gunnedah. In lockdown, racing continues New South Wales wide and SEN Track is your home for all the action. Just a bloke in a bar. Made from the finest natural ingredients with no artificial flavours, Bloke in a Bar is a crisp lager with mild hops brewed to taste like real beer and enjoyed with best mates. You could even call it banter in a can. Get a taste of Bloke in a Bar. Visit blokeinabar.com, click on the store locator and enter your postcode to find your closest stockist. Brought to you by the Bloke in a Bar podcast. Enjoy responsibly. If you love racing, then must listen radio is Bensley on SEN Track Sydney, 15.39am. Each morning, Andrew Bensley covers the latest news from the stables and track. The news is that she has run her last race. He's the broadcaster that racing personalities, leading trainers and jockeys talk to. Craig, you're going national. Bensley, Monday to Thursday, 8 till 11, on Australia's home of chasing, pacing and racing. SEN Track Sydney on 15.39am, the SEN app and DAB+. At Harley Heaven, the front doors are closed, but in lockdown, the roar of Harley Davidson is louder than ever. Contactless, virtual, new and used motorcycle inquiries and appointments are all available on Zoom, Teams and FaceTime. Bike buying with free pickup and same-day payment. Call and collect for parts, accessories, merch, essential servicing, workshop repairs and finance options. Harley Heaven is weaving through lockdown. Your home of Harley Davidson. Harleyheaven.com.au Hello, Bank. Hi, I've seen your advertise rates much lower than you're giving me and I'd love the same rate. Hey, we got you. You mean you'll drop the rate? No, I mean we got you. You're already locked in, sweetie. So how come new customers get a much better rate than me? Well, we got you. We don't got them. Well, you just lost me, sweetie. Athena automatically gives new and existing customers the same low rates on like-for-like loans. See our automatic rate match promise at athena.com.au. Athena, love us and leave us. Standard credit criteria, terms, conditions and government charges apply. Be beaten, Katie Ledecky, the defending champion, the world record holder, Ariane Titmus in front, match race down to the end, stroke for stroke, she's in front, Arnie Titmus, Ariane's in front, to become a legend, you have to beat a legend, and that's what we've seen, Australia win gold, Ariane Titmus, confirmation, a coronation, we can start the celebration for Australia, Gold in the 400 free. She beats Katie Ledecky. It might very well be the moment of these Olympic Games for Australia, the moment where it was a hopes of the nation moment, wasn't it? We're going to speak about that throughout the course of the night, the events where everybody will stop and and, and pause and take it in, uh, the moments that will be the, on the hearts and shoulders of a nation. And that was certainly one today, Ariane Titmus taking down um, a, a woman who may very well be the greatest uh, female swimmer or one of the greatest swimmers uh, in any gym of all time, five-time gold medalist Katie Ledecky, 15 world championships uh, and a swimmer who could also lay claim to that particular title is the last Australian woman to ever win that event. Uh, I'll speak, of course, of Shane Gould at 1972, 15 years old at Munich. She's still the only Australian swimmer to win three individual golds. It was in the 200 free, uh, the 200 metre medley and in the 400 metre freestyle where Ariane Titmus captured the hearts and minds of everybody today and it was way back in 1972, the last time uh, we won that event. And Shane Gould has been kind enough to join me today down in Tassie uh, to give us her thoughts on a remarkable moment. Shane, hello to you. Oh, hi, Sam. Yeah, it was great. You know, I was on the edge of my seat and willing her along. And, um, you know, when she was behind, you know, she was at a hip length behind and nearly on her toes at one stage. And 
Um, and I thought, oh, God, can't, no, don't get any further behind. Got to stay with her, you know, and don't don't lose her. And, and then, then when on that, that last lap, when she turned um, turned first at the um, the 50 metre, last 50 metres, I thought, OK, she's, she's got, a, got a chance now. And I was willing her along and... It did bring back memories of some of my races too, where you, you know, it's cat and mouse, and it's a, one one person's ahead, and, and then then you get behind a bit, and then ahead and behind, and you know, it's just just there's, there's great tension, and 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 that's um that that's the beauty about um about racing and and competing, and um I, I did did remember, but I was on the edge of my seat for, for Ariane, and um and she was able to come through. And, Kate, Katie couldn't hold her off, so I feel sorry for Katie, but um, but very, very happy for Ariane. I want to get to your memories uh, in just a moment, but when you were watching that today, I found myself in tears, and I've never met Ariane Titmus. <laughs> I've never even interviewed <laughs> Ariane Titmus. I don't know how well you know her, if at all, but with an affinity that you would share, especially with those two swimmers, because they are swimmers like yourself that swim mm. in just about everything. Katie Ledecky, um, I mean, you at one stage held the world record in every single event you swam in from, you know, the, the 200 to the 1500. Katie Ledecky's much in the same vein, and Ariane Titmus as well, so you would have an affinity yeah. just from that alone. Yeah. So, how did you yeah, feel look, watching it today? Well, I, I, I was, um, you know, it's a long time ago now, but it, it is very, you know, it's a visceral experience. You feel it in your guts. You, mm. you, you remember it in your muscles, and and of course, then in your in your memory as well. So, so yes, it does does bring home very dear and serious memories for for, for me. But uh, so. Yeah, look, just just a, a, a fact as well. I did hold the hundred freestyle as well, and so it's okay. <laughs> oh, you're right. I did have that written well, here, and I said two hundred, not one hundred. And I apologise wholeheartedly. That's right. Because <laughs> right. look, statistics are, are a massive thing. You know, they how many are. medals, you know, and, and how many and the times and all these sorts, sorts of things. And you know, to, to me, like, like it is, they're important. They're, they're, they're very significant, and, and num I love numbers. But the thing that I, I like most about um, both Katie and Ariane is their sportsmanship. Mm. You know, they're, they're, they're proud of their, their female strength. They're proud of their, their competitiveness and their, their try and their, 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 their muscles and their, their, their effort and, and their, their um, um, uh, strategies. And, you know, they, 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 they have been in the past the domain of men. And I think women's sport is really going from strength to strength mm. and, and young women like like those two battling it out we can say it's it's great to to honor women in sport mm. um for, for for those things but particularly their sportsmanship you know to thank each other thank you to your competitor for helping me to swim fast to, to making it a race to to, to making me enjoy racing even more so so that's that's what i remember of of, of that <clears throat> of that event today, and um, I think that that's that's the greatest thing that we should should take out of, out of today. And um, Ariane and Katie Ledecky, their their competitiveness, but their their appreciation. Uh, for each other, for pushing them to... Yeah, you know, to that was a beautiful moment, wasn't it? Because mm. uh, because Ariane thanked Katie because said without her, she mm. wouldn't be who she was. And Katie said, without Ariane nipping at my heels, I may not ha have done some of the things that I've done. Mm. So the ability yeah. for, of both of those to have the impact on each other to achieve what they've achieved, uh, it was... I I'm with you. I, that was something that really stuck with me throughout the day, hearing from both of them. Yeah, yeah, and... You know that you, <clears throat> you mentioned being in, in tears. You know, I think think all of us for for you know, since COVID um, started, you know, in March last year, when we when, when we were confronted with the reality of this pandemic, that that um, you know it, it's been a, a roller coaster of emotions mm. and difficulties, and then uncertainty and confusion and. You know, people grasping at, at you know, cert, try, trying to find certainty. So I think, you know, a, a, a race like that today, and and there will be other races and competitions too, but but this this particular one was was pretty significant, and I think it gave us the opportunity just to sort of to release some of that that tension and distress that that we've all been feeling. And um, yeah, so so, but but we do like great rivalry rivalry with, with the Yanks. <laughs> <laughs> we do, and it's always good to come out, come out top. 
Um, it doesn't always happen, but it's always nice to nice to feel like a winner and be a winner. I know this is a question you, you you would have answered a thousand times and you did open the door to it and you said the memories of your experience when you think back on, on days like today and that's this is something that you and Ariane will mm. have in common for the rest of your lives yeah. is that you both have a gold that's medal true. in this event and you, you joined Lorraine yeah. uh, Crap with that as well. She was gold yeah. in 56 ahead of Dawn Fraser yep. and we've had some bronzes with Hayley Lewis and Karen Morass in 92 and mm. 68 uh, respectively. Yeah, and world, world re- World records, you know. Don't don't forget Tracy Wickham. You know she, yes. she was a demon, demon in um, you know, those 400 and 800 and uh, 1500 meter swims. You know, so we've had, and um, uh, yeah, yeah, we've, we've done done really well in long distance. But that 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 400 is um, is, is a real tricky one because mm. you've got to have that endurance, but you've also got to have a bit of speed that you can carry carry throughout the the whole race. Um, yeah, yep. So there's been been quite a history and. And also in the men too, of course. You, you. It was great, great to hear, great, great to hear Ian, Ian Thorpe commentating on it, and and he was nearly in tears too. Yes, <laughs> was starting to crack. He was so excited for, you know, for um, uh, for the race as well. Well, he was someone gunning to equal you with three individual medals, and it wasn't quite to be. Mm-hmm. Your, your memories of Munich, you, you set a world record in each of the events, the 200, the 400, and the 200-metre medley. When you think back, what's the thing that still stands out to you these years on? Well, look, there's the pomp and ceremony of the Olympics, mm. and it's it's an event like no other. That's why we, we often see breakthrough event, um, swimming, uh, break, break breakthrough competitors, you know, come through and who surprise mm. everyone with, with her, and you, you know, that you thought they were the underdog, or you, you know, you didn't know that they exist. So, so the the competition there can just, you know, you can be the best in the world, as Kate Campbell, you know, knew in um, uh, 2016, 2012. You know, you someone else can just come along and, and pick you, and so, so I think think the the the, the intensity of the Olympic competition. Is, is very different now. These these women are, and, and men are having the opportunity to swim more and more Olympics because professionalism and, and there's more money in the sport, so you can stay in it for longer than I could. So um, so so they can go to more Olympics and have that uh, race experience. So so look, the, the, there's the, the intensity of the competition, and then also the pomp and ceremony. And <laughs> no, they they had the opening ceremony, and the speeches and. And then there's the uniforms and the, all the, the, the historical ceremony mm. and meaning around what, what it is to be the Olympics. I think, think that's, that, that's something that I, I certainly remember. And then, then people from all different countries coming together yep. to celebrate, um, you know, health, vitality, youth, um, and be able to play games together in, in a peaceful way. I think, I think they're my greatest memories. And then, of course, very specifically, each one of my swimming races. Um, and like the 100 metre freestyle, I was so desperately wanted to win that one and I got third in it. Mm. And I had to, and I finished, get to the end and I thought, can we do that again? <laughs> 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 but there's no do overs. No, there's not. There's well, not. That's it. I've actually heard Ian Thorpe say the th- same thing. I can't remember what uh, Olympic... It might have even been in his first where he said he found that little place in the water where you're weightless and it's effortless. And when he looked up and he realised yeah. he'd not only broken a world record, he thought, I actually could have gone way faster. Can I do it again? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just two yeah, more questions well, well, from me because I know you've, yeah. you've, you've got to go. Um I want to ask you about uh, Emma McKeon because, and I'm going to get mm. back to Ariane Titmus and Katie Ledecky, but you, you have five individual medals at an mm. Olympics. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what Emma McKeon is looking to try. Yeah. And so, someone else looking yeah. to take a record off you, Shane Gould. Um, she's got two already. What are your impressions of her for someone who, again, like you, swims in a lot of events, yeah. like in the relays, though, as well, but as, as in the individual ones too? Um, how does... Uh, <laughs> Doing, is she doing five individual? No, races? not individual. Oh, she's she's doing. Yeah. Um, she's got uh, the relays, and then she's got. Uh, I think it's three or four individuals. Yeah. But she's got seven events that okay. she's that she's going for uh, in terms of medals. Yeah. Well, see, well, well, this is where statistics. You can have damn lies and statistics, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can, you can make up stories about any sorts of numbers. Like I, I think Emma's going to do great. She's going to ha- come home with a swag of medals. Mm. But four of those are individual and three mm. are relays. 
So remember, all five of mine were individual. We well, won't forget. Swim two rela- <laughs> I did swim two relays, but Australia wasn't doing great. We didn't even make the final for yep. the medley relay. And we got eights in the hunt, four by hundred freestyle relay. So, so Australia wasn't didn't pay a lot of attention to relays in those days, and we didn't have the depth of talent that mm. we do now. So, so I did do the two relays, but um, but didn't didn't medal in those. Yes. But um, yeah, so <laughs> looking looking at looking at history, but but Emma, I, I reckon she's on fire for the hundred freestyle. Yep. So it's going to be a great race. You know, between all the the, the speedy freestylers, including Kate. Kate Campbell. Last question from me. Um, Ariane Titmus and uh, and Katie Ledecky uh, should be meeting again in the, the 200 yeah. uh, and the 800 and predictions. Yeah. Uh, I think I think Ariane would probably swim better than um, than Katie in the 200 and I think Katie will swim better than Ariane in the 800 unless um, Katie's ill health earlier in the year mm. just Took took away too much of her fitness, but Ariane too. She she had an injury. She was um, uh, so so. Yeah, it's. I know it's going to be a great race, but I think I think the four hundred today it won't won't be as close as what it was today. That, that's my prediction. Shane Gould, it's been an absolute treat for me to be able to have you on, and for and for those listening as well to to have be able to have your views on today and you, you share history now with Ariane Titmus, and you've yeah. just got one of the the greatest stories uh, in Australian sport yourself, and it's always wonderful to be able to speak to you about it. Thank you so much. It's been a treat. Yeah, thanks very much, Sam. Yep, go Aussie. Shane Gould, uh, that was just an absolute thrill to have her on. Of course, 1972, she won the 400 metres uh, along with uh, the 200 and also the uh, 200 metre individual medley and then got silver in the 800 metres and bronze in the 100 metres as well and put a world record in each of the races that she won. Uh, so there's plenty of action happening at the moment. Aussie's just getting started. So uh, in the tennis, Max Purcell up against the German, Dominic Kopfer uh, and the women's double, Sam Stoza, Alan Perez against uh, Monikoa Nicolescu and Raluca Olaru. And at the moment, with five minutes to go in their heat, uh, Owen Wright has a score of 15 ahead of the Frenchman Jeremy Flores, who's on 8.87. So uh, let's take a break and come back and we'll take the closing moments of that heat. Of course, Sally Fitzgibbons is through to the quarterfinals after winning her round three heat today in the surfing. No Steph Gilmore and no Julian Wilson. They were knocked out today, sadly, but we're still represented and we're still alive in the surfing. And then the Rugby Sevens, the men's second game starts at 7 o'clock as well. So we will take in some of that as well. They've just got going there as well. So we will come back on the other side of this. We'll get some Aussie action as SEN brings you the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. From football to basketball, a serving an ace with a tennis ball. Sporting dreams start at Rebel. Shop the biggest range with the best brands in store or at rebelsport.com today. Rebel, sport is calling. Powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility while the high back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer today. Tylers, want to win your tiling products for a year? Thanks to Beaumont Tiles and their partner RLA, simply go in store or jump on iconwin.com.au coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Tyre Power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. Uh, wonderful to have your company, Sam Stoza. Alan Perez took the first set in that doubles match uh, and are currently 1-0 down in the second, but uh, claiming the first set, that is uh, good news for Australia in the tennis. Uh, and we've got Max Purcell playing 
at the moment as well. He currently is down a game against Dominic Kopfer, uh, who is the German player, and uh, that's on serve, I think, 4-3 at the moment. We'll keep you up to date on that. Australia has just run over the first try in their Rugby Sevens game. Uh, we're going to go to that action very soon, but there's just two minutes to, pl- to go in the heat between Owen Wright and Jeremy Flores. 15 points at the moment for Owen Wright, and uh, Jeremy Flores has just caught a very nice wave and has 12.9 points on the board. So let's take the last two minutes of that before we before we head to the Australian Rugby Sevens. A wave that he caught earlier in the heat. Here we go. Fade straight down the face, waiting for this section to stand up. Carves out of the lip, drops down. Wave gets all funky and weird, and he, he does too. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> decides to jump out of that one. It's not what he was waiting for. Still one minute and 40, though. Still enough time, and it's an 8.5 he's going to need. It's an 8.27 exactly, but, you know, with the rounding down, as the judges do, dropping off the high and the low, averaging the three middle scores, he'd need an 8.5. So it's doable. It's right there, but it would need to be one of the best ways of the day and of the event so far. Owen Wright does have priority. That is probably the reason why he's just sitting out there waiting for Flores to come back to try and as you mm-hmm. rightly attained, not to attribute this to luck. Yeah, absolutely, and, and use that priority in a defensive sense with one minute to go and make sure that Jeremy Flores only catches something you allow him to. Set, peeking up in front of Owen here, though. Not interested, and rightly so. 50 seconds. Flores moving away from Owen Wright. 45 seconds to go. What a great second day of Olympic competition it's been. Owen Wright paddling to try and get closer to the Frenchman with half a minute left to go. Flores has spotted something. Little double up inside, chip paddles in. Struggling, struggling. Gets his chance, drops into the wave. <laughs> Casual, calls it a day, calls it an Olympic campaign. But the Australians have got another through. Congratulations to Owen right there. Indeed. What a heat. Very professional. Very professional. He set his stall out from the start. He got the scores in early and just let Jeremy Flores chase him and he couldn't catch him. Fantastic. Owen Wright through to the quarterfinals. Fantastic performance from him. He's a wonderful story. As we mentioned before, that injury where he sat out a whole surfing season, he suffered extensive brain injury and a minor brain brain bleed after a crash at Pipeline in December in 2015 and had to teach himself how to surf again. Uh, it, just an extraordinary story uh, is Owen Wright, and he is through to the quarterfinals after beating the Frenchman, uh, Jeremy Flores. Uh, so there's only about a minute 40 to go uh, in the first quarter in Australia's Rugby Sevens game at the moment. They are 14-0 up. So we'll take bring you the final stages of the quarter here. Chang, here's a penalty. Strong contact there from the skipper, Nick Maloof. Tackle needed to be made. They can't let the pressure off, though, Australia. They're in good position. They need to get a little bit more desperate, have some urgency to, to get the ball back. Nick will have to be careful there. Looking for the big shot, but not a lot of arms in the tackle. I think he just got a hand there in the nick of time. So it's 14-0 Australia over Korea. Yong Hyong Chang is OK. He's played test rugby for Korea, 2015 through to 2017. They play in the Asian tournaments. Four professional rugby teams in Korea, a military team as well. Maloof is great at jumping in the defensive line out, so it wouldn't surprise me if Australia regained possession here. But they go to the front, and Han. Kim. Okwalad floats one over the top to Lee. Back cleaning up is Hyun Su Kim. Yeah, has that gone forward? Yes, it has. So that's all about the pressure that the Aussies are putting on the Koreans. 
And particularly in that moment, it was Lockie Anderson with the number 12 on his back. Sydney Boy just rushing up out of the defensive line, knowing that the pass was getting to the player a little bit slow. So he put plenty of pressure on there, forced the error. Australia's scrum feed. Anderson, Hutchinson and Maloof in the front row. They're playing 15, so be out in the back line. So here is Longbottom, allowed to run again. There's a little goose step, turns it back on the inside to Miller. What a way to finish the first half. Simple stuff in the end for Australia. And Lockie Miller, he gets his first try, Tokyo 2020. It didn't take much, just the steppy man, Maurice Longbottom, to drag two defenders across. And Lockie Miller, he timed that switch perfectly, dropped under and just sliced between two defensive players. Here it is. The front action, Lockie Miller too strong in contact. It's a good fend in the end. Miller dives in. And it will be a simple conversion for Marisa Longbottom from right in front. So much better display in the first half this time by the Australians at half time. It's Australia 21, Korea nil. Good start to Australia. We were always sort of expecting that, weren't we? The Republic of Korea, so South Korea. Uh, it was an incredible story for them just to qualify. Ranked number 31 in the world. They had to beat the 21 ranked or the 21st ranked Hong Kong uh, to get through because Japan was already in as the host nation. So uh, they're finding they're going really tough uh, against a quality Australian outfit that is currently ranked, I think it's fifth in the world uh, at the minute. So just repeating the news, Owen Wright is through to the quarterfinals of the men's short board surfing. Sally Fitzgibbons got through to the quarter earlier on today. Sadly though, no Steph Gilmore and no Julian Wilson. Julian Wilson uh, spoke a little earlier today after bowing out to two-time world champion Gabriel Medina. You announced recently that you're stepping back from surfing. What's next for you? Yeah, time with my family. Um, I won't be travelling outside of Australia for a while. Um, just be there for my wife and my kids and um, surf back home in Australia and um, continue to do what I love but yeah I need to take a break it's it's not um, the easiest time to spend to be uh, separated from the family and not sure when I'll be able to travel with the family again so I'll just wait and see where the dust settles and maybe one day I'll come back when the family's able to travel with me. So that was uh, Julian Wilson a little early. So it's almost a retirement for Julian Wilson or a step back anyway, and uh, he'll just take on selected events from now. Uh, Ash Barty and Storm Sanders uh, are just starting to warm up for their round two game in the doubles. Uh, Sam Stoza um, currently locked at the minute with Alan Perez uh, up against the Romanian team uh, to all. Uh, in the second set on serve after the Australians took the first set. And uh, Max Purcell down 5-3. So he's been broken uh, in the first set in his game. Um, he had a medical timeout. And thanks to Alex, who's reporting in on this. We, with so many sports going, we can't watch all of them at once. But uh, really appreciate Alex texting through. Uh, he just lost his serve and uh, he had a medical timeout for his back, which he um, injured before Wimbledon. So, Alex, keep those coming through. And if you would like to keep reporting on something that you might be watching that maybe we don't have an eye on at the minute, uh, the priorities for us tonight, the Rugby Sevens, uh, the women's water polo as well, uh, the tennis too with Ash Barty just about to step out on court. So there's a heap for us to sink our teeth into, but there's plenty of events going on uh, this evening as well. Uh, I'm going to come back and get the results for Alex Winwood in the boxing. Uh, he had his bout against the Zambian Patrick uh, Chinyemba uh, a little earlier on this evening. I'll come back and give you those results too. And there's more boxing this evening in the women's Sky Nicholson up against AG Im from South Korea as well in the featherweight division for the women's. Our softball team tonight, the women's Aussie Spirit are up against Mexico. Have to win that to get into that bronze medal game uh, against Canada. Uh, so there's swimming, which starts uh, from about 8 o'clock tonight. So we'll catch up with Rob Woodhouse uh, before that first event, which is Maddie Wilson in action in heat two of the women's 200-metre freestyle. And then straight after that, Ariane Titmus, gold medal winning Ariane Titmus in the 400 today. She's backing it up and swimming her heat of the 200 freestyle uh, a little a little later on. So Australia at the moment, 28 nil up over South Korea. They've scored straight away from the restart. We'll take a quick break and come back on the other side of this. And 
You're listening to the evening session of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, and uh, we do it all for Tire Power. Tire Power, your trusted tire experts. We'll go around the ground. The- Go around the grounds again in just a moment for Beaumont Tiles, who are keeping your Renault dreams alive. Shop online at tile.com.au. Your local bowls club is seeking competitive teams. You'll need your natural, whose sporting prowess is unmatched. Your technician to roll you in and out of the tightest spots. Your thinker to lead your game plan. Your enforcer to strike when needed. And Steve, uh, he can get the drinks. Local legends want to. Search Bowls Club near me to join a team or start one. Not sure who can best take care of your European car? Your local Repco Authorised Service Centre is fully qualified to provide logbook servicing on all popular European cars. With access to the most up-to-date information and training and backed by a nationwide warranty... You can relax, knowing that taking good care of your pride and joy is our pride and joy. Book in or book online at repcoservice.com. Hello. National tiles of European-made Timberlook laminate flooring for under $19 per square metre. Yes, National Tiles exclusive European oak look flooring for under $19 per metre. That's less than $190 for an average 10 square metre bedroom floor. So rush into National Tiles' all new spectacular mega store at Alexandria or go to nationaltiles.com.au now and save. Can we get much higher? So- Introducing the winner of Drive Car of the Year. The seven-seat Kia Sorento large SUV with first-in-class safety features never before seen in the category, class-leading tech and interior space offering the finest comfort across all seven seats. I fantasize about this. We paid attention to the details. So did they. The seven-seat Kia Sorento SUV. Drive Car of the Year. Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. Sportscraft are the official formal uniform supply for the Australian Olympic team in Tokyo as they go for gold. For your own podium finish style, discover the latest Sportscraft collection of men's clothing, including relaxed shirting, classic jackets, warm coats and chinos. All perfectly curated to bring quality, style and versatility to your wardrobe. Sportscraft, we are Team Australia. Discover the latest menswear collection online at sportscraft.com.au. Session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Tire Power. Get a grip on tire safety. Book your five minute tire safety check at Tire Power now. Uh, it's fantastic to have your company on the night sessions. As SEN brings you the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games and night sessions for tyre power, your trusted tyre experts. Let's go around the grounds now for Beaumont Tiles. Tile.com.au to shop Beaumont Tiles. So two minutes to go. Let's take the last two minutes of Australia uh, and South Korea uh, in the Rugby Sevens. It's 35 to 5 at the moment as uh, they just set the scrum. Uh, South Korea have possession way back on their defensive line. We'll go there now. Uh, Ash Barty and Sanders are underway again. And Zoo and Yang games on serve one all. So now, penalty to Korea. Points for and against could be crucial a little later on as we look ahead to the gold medal quarterfinals. And earlier on, New Zealand beat Korea by 50 points to five in Pool A in this pool. The Aussies, if they're not going to finish in the top two in their pool, they really want to have uh, a good for and against as the third-place team to try and 
get one of the last two spots in the quarterfinals. Remember, the top two from each of the three pools go through to the quarterfinals. And then the top two third place teams. So another couple of tries will come in handy for the mascot Wally and the Aussies, the men in green and gold. Not straight. You could hear the plea from the Australian players, not straight, sir. They were right. You mentioned them earlier. They've got an excellent set piece, especially defensively in the line-out. So they know their staff. They'll come away with possession here. Hopefully they can get more points on the board. As you mentioned, Clarkie, the all-important points, depending on how they go tomorrow with New Zealand. That is a game not to be missed tomorrow morning, Australia and New Zealand. The turner out to Karevi. Now, he hasn't played on the World Series when he was named in this Australian team. Samu Karevi picked up the phone and he spoke to one of his relatives in Fiji asking for a few tips. And that was Jerry Tuwai. And this is Dylan Peach. And Peach is over the 22. They will not rein him in. Dylan Peach scores. The crowd were a jury man, one of 16 Indigenous athletes in the overall Australian team at the Tokyo Olympics. He scores for Australia. That's right, the 23-year-old with an abundance of experience under his belt. He does a lot of a lot of volunteer work, work off the field as well, Dylan Peach, proud Indigenous man, as you mentioned. But he's someone to keep an eye on over the duration of this tournament. He's a fantastic player. Well, let's play on now. Korea, the ball goes into touch. And that will do us. So after losing to Argentina early on day one, the Australians have hit back to keep their hopes alive in Tokyo 2020. Each one of the try scorers. Full time, Australia 42, Republic of Korea 5. There we go. They no, don't mess around, do they? The rugby sevens, uh, two halves are over in very, very quick time and a 42 to five win. So earlier on today, they went down to Argentina, uh, 29 to 19. They were really, uh, really on the back foot from early in that game. Um, and the second half was the half where you thought, okay, okay, they've, they've, they've found their groove now, but, uh, the first, First half was not good. Um, they ended up finishing up 29 to 19 down. So they're now one and one uh, in this tournament as well, which will be really tough. Uh, obviously, our women won this event uh, in its first ever uh, entry into the Olympics in uh, at Rio in 2016. But the, the men... Um, not so much luck. I think uh, if memory serves, they were knocked out in the quarters, but I'll double-check that uh, on... Uh, I'll double-check that and come back to you. But that's a good result uh, for Australia to get that win uh, over South Korea, a confidence-boosting win. At the moment, uh, games are still on serve. 2-1, Barty and Sanders versus Zhu and Yang, the Chinese pair. Uh, let's drop in on some of that action now. And keep getting your text through 0433 98 11 16. Uh, if you're watching an event that you want to report in on or give your thoughts on, just text it through any time on the temper text or give me a call, 1300 736 736. I'm asking you tonight, what's the event for the Olympics, because we've seen one of them today already, the hopes of the nation rest on. So what every Olympics says an event that everybody will stop what they're doing, find a TV or a radio station, uh, us, because we are the, the, the rights and the broadcast holder, broadcast partner of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Uh, every Olympics, there is one of these events that are, are the, that are a hearts and minds events, the hopes of the nation events. We've seen one today with Ariane Titmus winning the 400 metre freestyle. There's going to be more. Is it the Boomers and their medal chances? Is it as Ariane Titmus is? Uh, they're just actually going to do a replay at the moment of yesterday's race. Uh, today's race. Uh, I thought <laughs> I thought she was coming out for a heat. I'm like, that's not the time that it is. Um, is it the Boomers? Is it Jess Fox uh, in the canoe? Um, give me a call, one three hundred seven three six seven three six. The event that you think will be uh, the Hopes of the Nation event, the one that we'll be talking about for years and years to come, one three hundred seven three six. excuse me, 736 one three hundred seven three six seven three six. So swimming tonight starts after 8 o'clock. 
Uh, we'll head to the pool. We'll catch up with Rod Wood- Rob Woodhouse uh, before the first, the, the second heat of the women's 200 metre freestyle, where Maddie Wilson will swim a best of 155.68. She was part of that women's four by 100 relay team. Uh, that got them through in the heat but didn't make the final team uh, but was presented a, a gold medal as she should because they qualified fastest for that event. Uh, Ariane Titmus is in heat four of that event and then Morgan, uh, David Morgan will be in heat four of the men's 200-metre butterfly. And Maddie Temple, who is a, a bronze medalist as of today after the men's 4 by 100 metre freestyle final, he'll be in the men's 200 metre butterfly. So I mentioned before about uh, the boxing, Alex Winwood making his Olympic debut. Unfortunately, he went down to Patrick Chinyemba from Zambia. So his Olympics is over, but congratulations to him as well. I'll go through some of those uh, other sports that we don't get to hear as much of uh, through the uh, events of today. We had Aussies in 21 uh, events throughout the course of today and tonight. So there's a heap to work through. Uh, 1300 736 736. And off the text, the temper text, Alex says the event for him is the Boomers, I hope, but Dante needs to pass more. That's Dante X. A bit sloppy against Nigeria. Big test is now against the two European teams. So we'll have a look a bit later about the pathway for the Boomers from here. Um, let's take a little bit of. Um, Ash Barty and Storm Sanders against the Zoo and Yang team. Uh, locked it to all in the first set on serve. Right idea. Just missing on the execution. 40 love, comfortable game for the Chinese. for the match. itself to radio does it the tennis on the commentary we need bp uh always descriptive all the time uh one of the best in the business so uh double fault there 40 30 in uh the fifth game of the first set so they're locked to all uh, on serve at the minute uh in the women's water polo uh they're not too far from taking to the pool the Aussie Stingers up against the Netherlands. That game should be starting uh, or should have started um, about now. So we'll take a break and come back and I'll give you a result. I'll give you the uh, updated score from that uh, in just a moment. Do you reckon there's a way to save money by bundling mobile and internet? Mate. Choose a provider you can trust like a mate. Mate serves up NBN from just $59 a month with award-winning all Aussie service. Bundle a mobile plan to save a further $10 a month on your internet. No contracts and no setup fees. Mate, how good's that? I know. What are you waiting for? Mate! Mate's got your back. Visit letsbemates.com.au. Powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game-changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility while the high-back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer. Today. If you love racing, then must listen radio you know, is Ben's Lee on SEN Track Sydney, 1539am. Each morning, tracks. Andrew Ben's Lee covers the latest news from the stables and track. The news is that she has run her last race. He wants to broadcast to that racing personalities, leading trainers and jockeys talk to. Radio going national. Ben's Lee, Monday to Thursday, 8 till 11, on Australia's home of chasing, pacing and racing. SEN Track Sydney on 1539am, the SEN app and DAB. 
Brown, all a in the star. studio. Plus, That's don't forget to upload your quaddies for the Quaddy Act. It doesn't matter Check when, out throughout the or day where, for all the or how. You need to know. Just so start. Today on SEN Track, With the biggest range and the best brands, the sporting station, dreams start at Rebel. Anywhere, Sport anytime, is calling. On the SEN app. Beaumont Tiles are keeping your Renault dreams alive. Shop online at tile.com.au. With Australia's biggest range, either delivered to your door or click and collect, you'll be happy you chose Beaumont. At Harley Heaven, the front doors are closed, but in lockdown, the roar of Harley Davidson is louder than ever. Contactless, virtual, new and used motorcycle inquiries and appointments are all available on Zoom, Teams and FaceTime. Bike buying with free pickup and same-day payment. Call and collect for parts, accessories, merch, essential servicing, workshop repairs and finance options. Harley Heaven is weaving through lockdown. Your home of Harley Davidson. HarleyHeaven.com.au Last year, he turned 130k into 500 grand for punters. Inside Track Club with Troy Little is back. With Inside Track Club, you're part of an exclusive punting group with Australia's best greyhound punter. Join Troy Little in live chat and video analysis for every greyhound race each Thursday and Saturday night. SEN Inside Track Club. Join now. Book for one session and try it out or get early bird deals and jump on board the year. SEN.com.au forward slash SEN Track. Club banter, terms, fees, and conditions apply. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858. SEN's night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for tyre power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at tyre power now. Uh, welcome back to SEN's coverage of the 2020 Olympic Games, the night session. Uh, just a couple of people are texting in. I'm, I'm finding out what the issue is with the ad breaks, uh, playing both at the same time, and I will come back to you on that, and we'll, we'll get that sorted out ASAP. Uh, so just bear with us on that, and I apologise, because I know how annoying that must sound. So uh, just an update at the moment in the tennis. Um, still on serve. It's the sixth game of the first set. Barty Sanders up against Zhu and Yang. They're 40 love up uh, and about to go three all in that. Uh, it looks to be a, a sad story developing with Max Purcell. So he lost the first set 6-3. He's down five love in the second. Uh, Alex is telling me uh, that he's gone to another injury timeout. Yep, thank you to, the, uh, to those who are texting in saying there's two ads playing at once. Uh, I am letting our techs know and we will get that fixed and I'm sorry that that is happening and I know how annoying that is, but thank you for letting us know as well. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, Sam Stoza and Alan Perez at the moment, one set up and uh, games on serve for a piece in their second round women's doubles match as well. So Aussie women really doing well. I've got a feeling that's going to be a theme of these Olympics too, that I think that when we tally up our medals... Uh, <laughs> now I'm getting more text saying that the ads are doubling up. I, I am fully aware and we are aware and I'm going to get that sorted out as quickly as I can. Uh, why don't we head to the pool? Uh, the water polo at the moment. Uh, Australia 2-3 down against the Netherlands. Uh, this is at the Satsumi Water Polo Centre. We'll see if we can drop in uh, on our women's stingers at the moment in action. See how good that Australian defence is now. Netherlands certainly playing a wide attacking play of water polo. Penalty there against Halligan. But great defence from Australia. Good pressure from Halligan and Buckley. They just want to attack. And with water polo, you have to do both if you want to succeed. That's why it's so exhausting. Here come the Aussies, they've decided to go wide. Here comes Halligan. Hasn't had a shot yet, thinking about it. Offset. This is Andrews, who gets up really high. It's incredible how much height, it's incredible how much height Abby Andrews can gain before that shot. It takes such leg strength for her to get that high in the air before the skip shot. Cracker of a shot, that one from Andrews. Hard to defend off the bounce. Two from two for Andrews. It's all locked up, Australia and the Netherlands. Three apiece. Mm -hmm. 
Hey. Moving around with his swimmers, trying. How are we doing? Australia defence is good. Buckling in trouble there, but no exclusion foul. She's tight defence. I liked that about Palm. She wasn't shy in coming out to the ball. She's 23 years of age, is the Australian goalkeeper, Gabriella Palm. She debuted in 2017 for Australia. There's a bit of action there. Ball's out, bring it back into play. Looks as though she was impeded as she was about to have a shot. It was after the goal throw, but the referees begged to differ with Keisha Gophers. So, quarter time right now. And Australia and the Netherlands are locked up three apiece. So Australia and the Netherlands locked up at three apiece. Uh, gives us a good chance uh, to go back to the pool uh, and speak to Rob Woodhouse, who's just been doing an incredible job uh, bringing us all the action ahead of each of the heats and setting up the days and nights events on what's been a truly special day in Australian sport. Ariane Titmus gold in the 400 metre freestyle. We've had, a, uh, we've had a bronze in the men's 4 by 100 metre freestyle and Emma McKeon with so many events, seven events in total for her at these Olympics gets a bronze. It's her second medal after she was part of the women's 4 by 100 uh, metre freestyle win. Uh, Rob's been good enough to join us again and we'll check in with him throughout the course of the evening. He is poolside. Uh, Rob, hello to you. Hello. How are you going over there? Uh, look, uh, no complaints from me. I'm surrounded by about 16 televisions, uh, trying to keep abreast of everything that's <laughs> going on. But uh, set the scene for us tonight. Um, we, we might as well start with Ariane Titmus uh, before we get through to the heats of the evening. I know you've spoken to Jared today, but um, the response to this has just been extraordinary, whether it be from the parents, from Dawn Fraser. I spoke to Shane Gould a little earlier. Of course, our last uh, woman to win this event back in 1972, from the athletes watching on the big screens in the village to places all around the world. Just talk us through what it's been like there, poolside. Oh, it's been fantastic. There was a huge build-up uh, here, poolside, uh, for that 400-metre race. Uh, Ledecky, arguably the greatest female swimmer the world's ever seen, um, and uh, she's out to, to win her third uh, 800 later in the week, but also she was defending the 400, of course, and around Titmus, who beat her at the World Championship in 2019, and, of course, because of COVID, they haven't met since. So the build-up was just immense. There was no trash talking. I think there was a little bit of a media beat up that there was some disliking between the two, but there's nothing but yep. respect between the two. They both swam the perfect race. Uh, absolutely sensational. Radecki had to take it out hard. She had to try and get a lead over, over, uh, Ariane, uh, but Ariane's third 100 metres was where, uh, probably where the race was won, I think, the, the, the premiership quarter, if you call it that, but the uh, <laughs> a really strong third 100 and, and, and drew level almost with uh, with Ledecky at the 300 metre mark uh, and certainly by 350 it looked like she was going to overpower and that's exactly what happened. Almost a world record as well. That's kind of been lost with the hype of the great race that it was, but mm. uh, absolutely sensational. Not much of a crowd here, of course, but uh, everyone was just spellbound and, and uh, it, is, it, it will be remembered as one of the great Olympic races. I think Dean Boxall more than made up for the lack of crowd, didn't he? The coach? <laughs> I think he did. Well, I'm showing my age, but I was over in Seoul a long, long time ago in 1988, and there was a bloke called Laurie Lawrence who was uh, very, very similar to uh, <laughs> with his antics when Duncan Armstrong won the gold medal. But uh, Dean, uh, I, I did uh, catch him um, out of the corner of my eye up in the, uh, the grandstand over the other side of the pool, and uh, he was going berserk. Everyone's kind of used to that with Dean. And, and look, Dean may be a little bit embarrassed about that because he is such, he's a pretty humble guy. He, he, he just puts his heart and soul into everything for his athletes, and uh, that was pure emotion, and uh, that helps to get the athletes fired up. But uh, he's an emotional guy himself. He was in tears after the race. It was actually Arnie herself that was quite composed. And, of course, she's racing tonight in the 200 metres freestyle, not racing Ledecky in the same heat, but Ledecky is, is swimming in another heat, uh, the same heat as uh, the other Australian, Madison Wilson, actually. Yeah, so I, I asked Shane Gould this earlier. I said, OK, so they've got the 200 and the 800. Who wins? And she says, well, it'll be Ariane in the 200 because she's the better sprinter, but it'll be Ledecky in the eight because she's the better long distance. Would you agree? 
that's what uh, that's what everyone seems to think. Um, there's a few other factors in play. Uh, Ledecky's doing the 200. I'm surprised she's doing it, to be honest. She may withdraw from the final. She may see how she goes tonight because she's also got the 1500 meter heats this morning. Uh, so tonight, and uh, the 1500 hasn't even been hasn't been swum before at the Olympics for women. So that's the first. She'll certainly be out for that. She may yep. withdraw from the two. I'd say Tim is the favourite in the two. Uh, if Timmis wins the two and Ledecky's done the 15, I'd still put my money on Timmis in the eight. Ah, look, I like the sound of that. I mean, uh, before we get to tonight's events, Rob, it, you mentioned Duncan Armstrong and I brought him up as, as I was seven years old when that happened and that was, I think everybody's got a moment in Olympic history that dragged him in. That, that 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 snared them, and from that point on, you didn't miss an Olympics. It was it was Duncan Armstrong for me in '88, and then we've had people saying that for them it was Perkins, obviously at Atlanta, and that's one of the most famous sporting uh, moments in Australian history. But does it? Do you feel like this is going to be in that category? This will be the the the, the thing that will bring people to want to swim. Uh, it'll bring people into the Olympics. It'll, it's a hearts and minds moment. Are you putting it up there with those? Yes, I am. I think it's um, it just signified so much a, a changing of the guard, I suppose. But uh, but but also just a, um, I guess almost a celebration of what everyone's gone through and and, and the swimmers. And and Arnie hasn't been able to race. None of the Australians have been able to race internationally for two years. Uh, and coming out here and beating the best in the world and a true legend is uh, absolutely magnificent. And I think it, it probably means more the victory, of course, to Australians. It will mean more over the years. And um, but uh, it, it will go down. We'll be remembering that in ten years. And, and I'm sure, just like yourself, when you're eight, seven, eight years old, there'll be kids now that, that that'll see that and never forget it. And that'll inspire them to get in the pool or to get on the running track or do whatever and they may be the kids we see in brisbane in 2032 so let's go through tonight rob 805 we're going to catch up with you again before that but um maddie wilson in action and i think it takes a certain what i love swimming such an individual sport we know but what the relay and the emphasis on relays has done is really brought uh, the team element to swimming and the ultimate thing that anyone can do is put team above themselves so to be one of the people that gets you into a final in the fastest time and knowing that you're not going to be in the final, I think is the ultimate team mate. Uh, and, and, and that's what we can all aspire to look to. That's the we above the eye. So she was part of the 4x100 and gets a gold medal, but she'll get a chance to um, put her own name up in lights tonight in the 200-metre freestyle heat too. Yes, yeah, she will. And uh, it's a great opportunity for Maddie. Uh, you're, you're right. They, they, all the swimmers want to be in that final. They want to stand mm. on the podium. They still receive the gold medal, but it's it's the next day from their teammates rather than be on the podium listening to the anthem. Maddie's been there and done that before with various relays. She's been mm. on the podium winning world titles and Commonwealth Games gold medals, uh, but she missed it, missed out last time. But she's got the 4 by 200 relay in a couple of nights' time, but also this 200 freestyle. This is a chance for her to shine on her own. And look, she's a real chance. She's a, she has a definite medal chance. She's got to get through these heats into the semi-finals. That's all that tonight's all about. And then tomorrow, focus on the semi-final. And if she gets that far, then it's the final the following morning. Yeah, are, you, are you expecting final for her? Yes, I am. Uh, if she can swim close to her best, she's, she's a genuine medal chance. And particularly if Ledecky... Uh, does pull out after the heats, which I think may potentially might happen. We'll see how things go tonight. But look, it's a pretty tough field. Uh, obviously, Arnie Timmons is the one to beat, but we've got it. There's an Italian swimmer, Federica Pellegrini, who's been swimming, it seems like, for about 15 years. She won the Olympic gold medal back in 2008 in this event, and she's won about five world titles in this event. This is her last ever swim for Italy. She's an absolute superstar in Italy, the, the, the greatest swimmer Italy's ever seen, and she's going to want to go out in a high uh, come the final on uh, Thursday, Wednesday morning. Ariana, of course, we can't speak uh, enough about her, but uh, at, with a 153.09 uh, best, where obviously that's a fait accompli unless something disastrous happens. So should we have a look at the men's 200 butterfly? David Morgan, what can you tell us? Well, David Morgan, uh, he's, he's actually, uh, he's been swimming for Australia for quite a while, 27 years of age, trains up uh, in Queensland with Chris Nesbitt. This is his second Olympics, and uh, he's just a, he's a true soldier, David. He's, uh, he's been around the traps. He's won medals at a lot of uh, a lot of events like Commonwealth Games, but he would love to get himself into this Olympic final. It's going to be really tough. There's some great uh, competitors, the Hungarian uh, Milak is the uh, the world record holder, and there's uh, a Japanese from Adaya Saito who, who uh, surprisingly missed the final of the 400 medley on yeah. day one. He's got something to prove, and they're probably the two to beat in this event. Uh, and then Matty Temple, of course, a bronze medalist now, men's 4 by 100 free. Uh, his uh, event, the men's 200-metre butterfly, he's in heat five. 
How we? How we? What are we thinking for him? I, I think. I think man. It's probably better at the 100, the 100 butterflies later in the week, but we saw him uh, in that final this morning. I mean, he led off against the great American Caleb Dressel, and uh, Dressel finished uh, about 0.7, 0.8 a second of a- ahead of him, but it was a 48.0 lead off in the freestyle for Matt Temple this morning. That blew the cobwebs out, but also um, it shows he can mix it with the best in the world. He's mm. not going to be afraid of anything, so I expect to see him go through at least to the semifinals as well. Uh, and you mentioned uh, earlier that history in the making, obviously the 1,500 metres in the Olympics for the first time for women. Uh, Matty Goff and Kiara Melvinson, uh, our representatives in heats four and five. Uh, are we expecting to have a finalist? Uh, it's, it's hard, isn't it, to say we expect things, but I guess we do <laughs> as Australians. We expect to be there on the uh, when, when it really counts in the final. But look, Maddie Goff, she came fifth in this event at the World Championships in 2019. Again, I'll, I'll probably keep repeating this all week. The Australians have not raced internationally for two years, so yeah. it's really hard to see how they go. But uh, she'll be looking to improve on uh, on that performance and obviously so firstly to get herself into the final in that 1500. Kim Elverson got seventh in that event at the World Championships too. So look, they're both genuine chances to be in that final. I'm sure they'll be coming again. Uh, coming up against one uh, Kaylee Ledecky in that final. Rob, we'll go through uh, the heat, uh, the second heat and the fourth heat of the uh, Women's 200 in a bit more detail after 8 o'clock, mate. But thank you so much for setting up the scene. You're doing just a brilliant job and we can't thank you enough. Thanks. Look forward to a great night of swimming. Uh, Rob Woodhouse, of course, for Tire Power, winning service, winning prices, and they are Canstar Blues' first place getter, award winner for service again. Uh, we'll catch up with Rob uh, a little bit early, a little bit later on uh, as the swimming heats start tonight at the Tokyo Aquatic Centre. So uh, at uh, what are we looking at here? Two minutes 29 to go. Let's take in uh, a little bit of the water polo at the moment. The Stingers, 7-4 down uh, against the Netherlands. Timeout call. What would you be saying to them now? They've just, they've, they've just had that, that terrific lob just sort of stop the rot, so to speak. If, if you're Mihailovic now, what are you saying? I'd just be putting in a very strong extra man attacking uh, combination and I would be going to our, one of our favoured plays and I'm pleased to see Abby Andrews go in. Obviously, she'll be more than prepared to take the shot. Oh, it, it, she's been brave. She's already scored two tonight. She's only 20 years of age, playing her sixth international. She's just a baby. Yeah, she is a baby. And she's a, 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 alongside... She's very mature. Yep. yep. I was about to say, a, alongside Ronnie Halligan, who um, is... Not all that old herself, only only 24, and she's someone that we saw a couple of nights ago. She's confident. She'll, she's someone that will will look for the ball. She wants to take a shot. The uh, the Stella Maris women, I tell you, they'd be going nuts watching uh, Ronnie. That's where she went to school, the great water polo school. And... It's nice that they've a buckling on the post, so I might look for We'll jump out uh, in uh, from the the uh, the water polo at the moment. Australia trailing seven four against the Netherlands. Two minutes to go in that period, but Ash Barty is just about to serve for the first set uh, in the doubles. Best put away, and the first set goes the way of the Australians. Ash Barty and Storm Sanders, just the one breaking at six four. So there we go, uh, Ash Barty, Storm Sanders take the first set against the Chinese Bear Zhu and Yang. Uh, and the other tennis match going on at the moment, Sam Stoza and Ellen Perez uh, into the second set. Uh, they've, no, they've won. So fantastic night uh, at the moment. Um, I'll double check on that result in just a minute, but it's looking like, or my computer's telling me that uh, that they have that they have won that match, but I'm going to double check that in just a a moment uh, as my computer decided to shut itself down. So uh, that's very good fun uh, to be able to have that happen and I'm greatly appreciative uh, technology. Isn't it a wonderful thing? Uh, why don't we take a break and we'll come back and I'll work our way back through those results uh, in just a moment. Hey, Fletch, if you ran into somebody, right, and they said, oh, geez, I'm having some sleeping problems, what would be your recommendation? Change pillows immediately and change it to spinal ease without a doubt. Yep, and you need to know whether you're a back sleeper, side sleeper, whatever the case may be, because they tailor-made it and it might just change your life. So the way to do it, 
Or your Spine Lees pillow. We both have one. With free delivery, go to spinalease.com.au. That's spinalease.com.au. And you can thank us later. Everyone needs an injection of kindness. Kindness is simple and can change someone's day or life. Kindness is also contagious, so pass it on. If each one of us did just one act of kindness every day this kind July, that would be 775 million acts of kindness across Australia. The possibilities are endless. And together, what a great country we can be. Do something kind this kind July. Find out how you can get involved at staykind.org. Are you ready to find that guaranteed catch? Download the Real Adventures app. Cast the line with Paddy Dangerfield and Aaron Red Habgood. I'm on tank water in Mogs Creek. Do the kids and, get fast? So like, no, George, you're in the mud, you sleep in the mud. Just hose them down out <laughs> Everything fishing, boating, recipes and hotspots. Plus catch up on all the Real Adventures show podcasts. They are working. Right on to the guys that are in WA actually using the bins. I reckon we should see these spread across the country. Powered by Dometic, mobile living made easy. The Real Adventures app, get hooked. Now in the App Store and Google Play. Get ready to own the city with the Kia Picanto GT Hatch. Turn heads with the razor sharp sports body kit and 16 inch alloy wheels. Inspire your inner enthusiast and tackle the toughest of corners with ride and handling fine tuned for Australian roads. Feel the excitement from the punchy turbocharged engine and immerse yourself in the sports inspired cockpit. Book a test drive for your chance to own the city in a Kia Picanto GT Hatch. For more details or warranty terms, go to kia.com.au. Classic Hits 2 CH When you want to listen to the likes of Fleetwood Mac The Beatles What about Bill Joel And Whitney Houston Simply tune your digital radio to Classic Hits 2 CH Classic Hits 2 CH on DAV Plus, the SEN app and 2CH.com.au. Look, we all love a holiday. And being honest, we've tested our own fair share of hotel spas. But nothing comes closer to that permanent holiday feeling during lockdown than a backyard spa from Splashes. They've got a massive range of spas, swim spas and plunge pools. The knowledge to back that range up, lifetime support and bubbling litres of great value and loads of stock. Splashes, part of your backyard since 1990. Book an online consultation now at splashes.com.au. SEN's night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Tyre Power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. I thought it was a great time to get our resident tennis expert, BP, up for B Solar, where you will never have to pay another expensive electricity bill. Learn more about Better Solar at B.Solar, uh, and we'll get BP up to just give us an update. There's uh, three tennis matches going on, or have been going on, throughout the course uh, of the evening. Uh, and, of course, uh, earlier on today, John Millman. So there's a lot to get through, and BP's been good enough to jump on the phone. Hello, mate. Sam, nice to talk to you. It might, uh, even though she's bad out of the singles, it might still all be in the hands of uh, Ash Barty to see if we can win a, a tennis medal because, unfortunately, we've lost uh, all three singles players uh, today. Max Purcell, the most recent. And then uh, you mentioned Johnny Millman and Isla Tomlanovich all out and uh, Barty and Sanders, of course, playing under the floodlights on a Monday night in Tokyo. have taken the opening set in their doubles match and um, Sam Stozer and Ellen Perez in a very tight match uh, is the other match going on in the doubles. So, yeah, it's coming down to um, the dubs, unfortunately, for our Aussies. So what just just before we get to that, what's been the, the, the response in the tennis world to Ash Barty's first round exit? Well, I think, you know, just talking to a lot of people and watching that myself, Sam, it's probably, you know, you think back, you know, she's played a lot of tennis matches across her career. It, it's probably the worst match I've seen her play. And that's taking nothing away from her opponent, Cerebus Tormo. When I saw the draw and I looked and I thought, gee, that's going to be a tricky first round uh, because the Spaniards had a great year. She's a bit unorthodox, a great scrapper and fighter, gets a lot of balls back into play, and she would worry Ash. And they played that, what, at 11am Tokyo time yesterday, and it was already sweltering by then, so it was pretty hot. 
Uh, but for Ash to make 55 unforced errors, that is very uncharacteristic. I mean, when you play an offensive sort of brand of tennis, as she does, you're going to make some errors. But 55 is just astronomical um, in a tennis match. So she didn't help her cause, but uh, Cerebus Tormo also played a great match, and she's backed that up with another win uh, today through to the uh, third round. But it just goes to show, I mean, look, she's been up all year. It's interesting with the tennis players because they're just right in the middle of their year. I mean, it's not like they're peaking here for the Tokyo Olympics. Just, uh, this is another you know, another destination on the tour. It means more to some tennis players than others. And, you know, certainly Ash's age, there will be another Olympic Games, hopefully another two Olympic Games that she can, you know, compete in uh, to win a, a singles goal. But, yeah, a big chance to maybe medal, certainly in the doubles. And John Millman fought, as we come to expect from John Millman, but yep. just couldn't... Every time he draw a level, he just there wasn't any. He just yeah. didn't seem to have that next gear to go up to to try and to to get ahead. He, he just hung in. Like I mean, it was just another typical Milman match. I, I could write the script for him before it starts. But John, you know, there's such a pattern <laughs> with his matches. You know what's going to happen. Uh, you know that he's never down until you absolutely beat him at that final point. I mean, he almost uh, lost in straight sets. He was what a set and five three down. A you know, great effort to you know, take the tiebreaker against a young guy who's been running hot this year, Davidovich Fokina, the young Spaniard who's inside the top 50, great run at the French Open. He's a real energizer bunny head on court, got the single-handed backhand, and uh, he was pretty frustrated because that's what John does to you. He just wears you down. Uh, he just, you know, he frustrates the hell out of you, but he doesn't always have to kill a shot, Millman, to put you away totally. Um, but, yeah, went to three. He gave everything. He uh, loves representing the Greed and Goal, whether it's Davis Cup, the Olympics, and yeah, at least he can at least he can walk away from his career, Sam, with the ability that he's got, John Millman, and always tell you know his kids maybe or his grandkids or whoever else that when I went out and competed, I gave it absolutely everything, and that's all you ask of any athlete. And John Millman absolutely gets the best out of himself, but unfortunately, it didn't get him any further than the uh, the second round. Yeah, you get the feeling that he's going to make a great coach one day because yep. he, the, what he'll be able to do for someone who has natural talent is be able to show the other side of the coin and that's the work, work ethic required, how to get yourself fit, how to be a professional. I, it, he's always struck me as a guy, a bit like, remember, uh, from uh, Mighty Ducks, you know, the, the, yes. the, the, the kid in Mighty Ducks who always used to say uh, to Emilio Estevez, I'd be a better coach than a player. He played Pacey in yes. Dawson's Creek, but that's I always think of him when I think of John Millman, that he might end up well, being a, a better a coach and a player. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, if you're probably to try and use a footy analogy, as I mean, as we know, a lot of the great back pockets have made you know, great coaches. Yeah, and not been the, the fancy midfielders and uh, the high flying players of the competition who just had you know got uh, a career out of just pure hard work and getting the best out of themselves. So, yeah, John's of that uh, sort of ilk. Not to say he hasn't got any skill or he's not uh, a talented tennis player. He, he, he's He's certainly added and added. Every year, I think he always tries to be a better version of himself, and that's testament just to his commitment uh, to the game. But, yeah, he'll stay in tennis, no doubt coaching, mentoring. Uh, he'd be a perfect guy for the next you know, generation of Aussies, take him away on a camp and just teach him the, the hard work that you've got to do. I'd love him to put a documentary together because he has been to every part of the planet uh, to play a tennis match um, and some pretty... You know, graveyard spots around the world where there's, uh, there's no one watching. <laughs> Good news, though, for Sam Stozer and Alan Perez. Of course, Sam yep. uh, went out in her first round match. Uh, is she four or five time Olympian now? Five. This is five a time. Yeah, yep. this is her fifth Olympic. So they're still alive and, and looked pretty good. I mean, it was a hard fought game, but they, they got the yeah. win against Alaru and Nicolescu. Yeah, nicely done. Uh, playing with Alan Perez has had a really good year in doubles. Alan's uh, you know, lifted her ranking significantly, uh, so it was not a good lefty-righty combination. Uh, and you'd love to see Stoza just have a, a little bit of success. I mean, she is right at the tail end of her career now. This is um, you know, the last sort of stretch. I'm not sure how long it's sort of going to go on for. She still looks uh, you know, physically the same as she did probably 10 or 15 years ago. But you know, the big hitters now... And it's a little bit too good, certainly in singles. But, you know, she's a former world number one doubles player. She's still got that touch and that craft at the net and, you know, can still play a pretty good doubles game. So, yeah, it'd be nice to see her, you know, maybe sneak in for a medal. Uh, you, know, probably, you know, you'd have to say her, her last Olympic Games. Uh, and in other news, um, Novak Djokovic and Daniel Medvedev, uh, the big names, got through in their singles matches on the men's side of the draw and uh, on the women's side of the draw. Pliskova uh, got through in three sets um, and looks 
pretty good in doing so. Who are you liking in the men's and the women's singles? Yeah, look, Novak, uh, he, he was good. He got through yeah, another another match. I mean, he's got to be the red-hot favourite. Medvedev is certainly going to be uh, right up there. Uh, no doubt. Spirov's the other one. We had a really good win uh, today. He's had a couple of good wins, Sasha. So, yeah, without team, without Federer, without Nadal and a couple of others, I think, you know, there's, there's 15 of the top 20 uh, men that are playing, so it's a pretty good field. Uh, Zverev, I think, is probably the biggest challenger for mine, and, and Medvedev to Djokovic. You know, Medvedev's a, a great hardcore player. Uh, that's where he's won all his uh, titles, so he looks to be right in the frame. And, yeah, the women's, um, yeah, today, no surprise. I mean, Svitolina got past Isla Tomjanovic. It was a tough match. Isla, once again, showed she could compete against, you know, one of the best players in the world. Uh, Svitolina's been top 10 for some time, but funny, all the players have been informed this year. So, Krejcikova winning a French, Pavla Chinkova making the final... Uh, Muguruza, two-time Grand Slam champion, all got through, and Naomi Osaka has uh, has looked pretty good so far, and she's got to fancy her chances um, with no Barty. But once again, having not played a lot of tennis uh, for the last couple of months, hard to hard to know how Naomi's going to go for an entire week in Tokyo. But maybe just no crowds there takes away a bit of the pressure on her as the the local hope, and she seems to be in a good frame of mind. Her tennis has been pretty solid, but. Yeah, the women's is open. I mean, who would have thought Monica Poy could win a, a gold medal from Puerto Rico uh, four years ago or five years ago now in Rio? So who knows? Someone might emerge from the clouds uh, through this week. BP, great to chat to you. We've got to go. We've got to get an ad break away and come back with the swimming heats. But, mate, always uh, brilliant to chat to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sam. Uh, BP, all there for Yonex. Celebrate 75 years of performance product crafted in Japan. Check out their latest range at yonex.com.au. The night sessions on SEN's coverage of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics for tyre power. Your trusted tyre experts will check in with Rob Woodhouse, if time permits, just before the first heats of tonight's swimming. Uh, as we mentioned before, that will be... Um, Matty Wilson in the 200 metres freestyle. That's coming up after this. Get ready to own the city with the Kia Picanto GT Hatch. Turn heads with a razor sharp sports body kit and 16 inch alloy wheels. Inspire your inner enthusiast and tackle the toughest of corners with ride and handling fine tuned for Australian roads. Feel the excitement from the punchy turbocharged engine and immerse yourself in the sports inspired cockpit. Book a test drive for your chance to own the city in a Kia Picanto GT Hatch. For more details or warranty terms, go to kia.com.au. Attention! Lloyd's Auctions are holding a massive classic car online auction this weekend, including Australian, American and European classics, featuring Glenn Seaton's championship winning Ford Falcon EL, Russell Ingalls Castrol V8 Supercar, Low Kilometer HSV GDSR and more, all starting at $1 at Australia's greatest auction house. Bid now, also on offer, Ford Mustang Mach 1, Valiant Pacer, Shelby Fairmont, XP Falcon X Police, VL Walkinshaw Group A, Monaro's Jaguars, Porsche and Ferraris. Bid now or call now to put your classic car into our next record-breaking auction. Need a guest speaker for your next major event? Bravo Talent Management connects your business with legendary past and current stars of the AFL. Gary Ablett Jr. Runs to 50 and pulls the trigger! And he's got it! Dermot Brereton, Dane Swan, Wayne Swass, Shane Crawford. That's what I'm talking about! Wayne Carey, Jordan Lewis, Jack Revolt, and more. For brand ambassadors, appearances, and keynote speaker engagements, inquire with Bravo Talent Management. Bravo Talent, MGMT.com. Everyone needs an injection of kindness. Kindness is simple and can change someone's day or life. Kindness is also contagious, so pass it on. If each one of us did just one act of kindness every day this kind July, that would be 775 million acts of kindness across Australia. The possibilities are endless, and together, what a great country we can be. Do something kind this kind July. Find out how you can get involved at staykind.org. Just a bloke in a bar. Made from the finest natural ingredients with no artificial flavours, Bloke in a Bar is a crisp lager with mild hops brewed to taste like real beer and enjoyed with best mates. 
You could even call it banter in a can. Get a taste of Bloke in a Bar. Visit blokeinabar.com, click on the store locator and enter your postcode to find your closest stockist. Brought to you by the Bloke in a Bar podcast. Enjoy responsibly. This radio station endorses the commercial radio codes of practice which have been registered by the Australian Broadcasting Authority. The codes relate to taste and decency, accuracy and fairness in news and current affairs, advertising, Australian music content and complaints handling. Copies of the codes are available by contacting this radio station or commercial radio Australia on 02-9281-6577. If you feel a code of practice has been breached and you wish to register a complaint, your complaint should be made in writing. See the complaint section at sen.com.au. SEN's night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for tyre panel. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. Australia locked in a ding-dong battle with the Netherlands in the pool. The Stingers are 9-all with a minute 41 left in the third. But the first of tonight's swimming heats is not too far away from getting started. Uh, heat two of the women's 200-metre freestyle. Maddie Wilson in action for Australia in this. As we mentioned earlier with Rob Woodhouse, she was part of the 4x100-metre relay qualification team but didn't get a spot in the gold medal winning team in the final but was presented a gold medal for her part in uh, creating uh, that third gold medal in a row uh, in Olympic uh, competition for the women's in the 4 by 100 metres. Rob Woodhouse is poolside, uh, of course, for tyre power, your trusted tyre experts. Rob, welcome back. Uh, talk us through this heat and uh, the main dangers and what you're expecting. Uh, not much happening in this, this heat. Not right now. It's been the first set. It's not one of the uh, seeded heats. So uh, Maddie Wilson is set up in the, in heat two. Uh, but um, she's up against Katie Ledecky, uh, who we've talked obviously a lot about already. And But that field that, that Maddie Wilson's in that heat, there's a couple of swimmers there, two or three swimmers that have been swimming a few events, including the 400 final. So you'd imagine someone like Ledecky, who's also got the 1500 heats tonight, isn't going to want to put too much out. So it's a good opportunity for Maddie Wilson maybe to win that heat. It's the first of the seeded heats. She won't have seen what the other swimmers have done. Uh, so I imagine Maddie Wilson will take this out pretty hard and try and establish a good time just to sort of get herself into one of the central lanes in the semifinals. Uh, so what, just talk to us, for those who might not know a little bit about Maddie, um, her journey through swimming, Rob, talk to us a little bit about her. Uh, you, you put me on the spot now, haven't you? <laughs> the, uh, well, I actually do know a fair bit about Maddie Wilson. She, she is a Queenslander, but she's been living in South Australia for quite a while now, training down with Peter Bishop's squad, who, uh, of course, the great uh, Kyle Chalmers also trains there. Um, Maddie first made the Australian team back in 2014 at the Commonwealth Games, and she was very young then. She was a backstroker originally. Uh, she's still quite a strong backstroker, but she switched to, to sprint freestyle is really her main focus and has been for the last four or five years. And as we said earlier, she's won quite a few uh, world titles and Commonwealth Games gold medals in the relays and, uh, and a few individual events as well uh, in the medals. But um, uh, this is a real opportunity for her. Emma McKeon was in this um, event originally and she pulled out, uh, which opened the door for Maddie, who got third at the trials, to, uh, to try and come through in this event. So really good opportunity for her. She's just stepping up onto the blocks now, actually, in this uh, second heat, the first of the seeded heats in the tournament freestyle, next to Katie Ledecky. Uh, let's do that now. And I love that, Rob Woodhouse said, you put me on the spot and then proceeds just to rattle off the live story. That's why he's one of the best in the business and we're wrapped to have him. Let's get to the pool now. So Katie Ledecky, who is the defending champion here at Olympic level in lane four and alongside her, Maddie Wilson, a 27-year-old now, living in Adelaide, originally from Roma in Queensland. Excellent start also by Penny Alexiak, gold in the 100 freestyle in Rio. She's in lane six. I'm with Ian Thorpe, who won this event himself, of course, the men's event. And, and the fascinating thing here, Thorpe, the last three Olympic champions are entered in this event at these Olympics. Olympic Games. Katie Ledecky here, who won five years ago. Alison Schmidt won in London. She's in heat four. And Frederica Pellegrini, she's in heat three. She won the gold medal in Beijing. No, it, is, it, is, it is incredible. And uh, you, you expect to see Penny Alexia go out fast here. Uh, more of a 100-metre swimmer, but she will be she'll be the one to take the lead. The recovery that Katie Ledecky's had to do to be able to come through. And then, of course, Maddie Rose in this, uh, Maddie Wilson, I should say, in, in this uh, 
heat, it should be a fast time. But three Olympic champions, all in the same event, um, you know, they're setting themselves up for what will be an incredible semi and also final. Just remarkable, isn't it? So the last three Olympic champions all in this event at these games. And one of them, the most recent, Katie Ledecky, is in this field. She's in second spot at the moment. Still Penny Alexiak and swimming really nicely as Maddie Wilson. Now remember too, Katie Ledecky, huge final against Ariane Titmus earlier today in this heat right here. And she's got a heat of the 1,500 metres still to come. Maddie Wilson making a move now. Alexiak, the leader, on the left of screen as we're looking at them from underwater. Wilson coming through the middle, up on Ledecky's shoulder almost, but Ledecky's kicked. Got in front of Alexiak, maybe. Not much between them. It's Ledecky in front, Alexiak second, Maddie Wilson storming home for third. What a great swim. Ledecky one, Alexiak two, Wilson three. Yeah. That's so there we go, uh, a third place finish for Maddie Wilson in that race. We'll go back to Rob Woodhouse for Tire Power Award, winning service, winning prices. Rob, uh, what did you make of the swim? She came home strong late, did Maddie Wilson, but it looked just looked like Katie Ledecky was just doing what was needed to be done. Did a little bit, but uh, certainly Ledecky went quite hard that last 30 metres. She wanted to win that race. She wasn't going to get uh, Penny Alexiak, the Olympic champion in the 100 defending champion in the 100 uh, to, to, to beat her. But for Maddie Wilson, good swim for her. Under 156 is a really good, solid swim, very close to her personal best. So she will be pleased with that. And um, I think that will give her a lot of confidence, actually, for tomorrow morning semifinals. She's in the semifinals. Don't you worry about that. She'll, she'll qualify well, probably top 10, I would say. So 155.68's her best. So really not very far off that at all. Um, she did, did, When you look at that swim for her, is there a fair bit more in the tank, you think? You would hope so. You would, you would think that uh, the swimmers try and improve through the round. So uh, often they'll need to go maybe a strong heat swim just to get through, uh, depending on the standard that they're at. But they'll uh, look to improve again in the semi and then again in the final. And I think Maddie Wilson certainly got enough endurance to do that. And uh, I'd expect to see her down hopefully around uh, 155 low in the semi finals, which should be enough to get into the final. Rob, we'll catch up with you again before heat four, which is where the golden girl, uh, Ariane Titmus, will be uh, getting her her campaign for this event off and running. Thank you, mate. Rob Woodhouse uh, joins us for Tire Power, award-winning uh, Can Star Blues first place getter, award winner for service again. So the Dolphins looking to continue their flying start in the pool. Uh, day two of finals, uh, day three of finals will be tomorrow. Uh, Ariane Titmus hit the water in the 200 metre freestyle. Uh, will hit the water in the 200 metre freestyle. Uh, heats today, and that will be the next heat after the one currently running. Tokyo 2020 live and free and in HD on 7 and 7 plus, the only place to see it all. So uh, this heat not too far from finishing. We're going to take a break and come back and head back to Rob uh, in just a moment and get uh, poolside again for Ariane Titmus's heat in the 200 metre freestyle. Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. SEN's night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Tyre Power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. 6.46 left to go uh, between Australia and the Netherlands. 
Uh, and Australia have just levelled up at 11 all. So that will go down to the wire, that game, and we'll drop in on that uh, as soon as we can. But Ariane Titmus, of course, who captured the hearts and minds uh, of the nation and, and really the swimming world. I mean, America was so invested in this head-to-head battle with the legend that is Katie Ledecky. They sent a film crew over uh, just to document Ariane's build-up to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. So this was a race that the the world was anticipating well before uh, these Olympics got going and they were treated to uh, a race that will echo on through history. So Heat 4 not too far from getting going. Uh, Rob Woodhouse is here with us for Thai Power, winning service, winning prices. Um, Rob, how tough is it uh, to be able to... And one of the things that's impressed us all about Ariane is that everybody else has been flapped but she is the unflappable. We're all flapped. She doesn't seem to be. Taking it in a stride is an understatement. But how do you then go back up the excitement and the adrenaline of today, history made, to then refocus on the next event and the heat that is tonight? It's a really good question, Sam. It's one of the things that uh, really impressed me with her this morning after that final is she was so, obviously she's celebrated, yes, she was happy and, and, and fist pumping a little bit and all that sort of stuff, but um, her, her, her interviews afterwards that we heard and then uh, looking across at her coach in the grandstand crying and, uh, and uh, um, I think she saw some vision of her, her dad crying on TV and things like that and and, uh, and she said she gets all of her mental toughness from her mum who's super competitive, but uh, uh, she's she's clearly on a, on a mission not just to win one event, she wants to have a, a great win every time she gets in the water. So I think she just refocused straight away and, and here she goes. Uh, we'll see how she goes in this heat, but, um, you yeah, know, she looks already the start. She looks like she's uh, she means business. Lane one, Lee of China. Lane two, Alison Schmidt, the gold medalist from London. Lane three, Ariane Titmus back in the water. Slowish start, but not far off the pace for our Olympic champion in four. Yang of China in five. Summer McIntosh fourth this morning in the 400 free final. The 14-year-old in lane six, Ruin of Germany in seven, and Matos of Cuba, lane eight. Yang of China takes them around first, Ruin second, Schmidt third, and Ariane Titmus in fourth spot, but looking reasonably comfortable. Yes, what Ariane needs to do at this stage is, is just stay with them. Um, she needs to be able to be pulled through. She's got two good swimmers on either side of her in Alison Schmidt, or Schmitty as we know her. Um, and, and also uh, Zhen Zhuan of China. Um, it is across the board, and Ariane will come through in the latter part of this race. So she moved up into third spot. Schmidt out in front of the United States, graduated with a psychology degree from the University of Georgia. She's doing a master's in social work at Arizona State University. She's spoken very publicly and bravely of her battle with depression. She's a spokesperson for mental health issues, coached by Bob Bowman, Michael Phelps' career coach, and a great friend of Michael Phelps, as Arnie makes her move. Uh, Arnie does make a move as she turns first guy into this last 50 metres. Um, we can talk about Schmidt, and Schmidt as well. Um, really good friends with uh, Michael Phelps but you know Ariane's going to go through and she'll she actually looks she looks as though she's going to go through as the fastest qualifier from this heat. Well we know she loves to win massive win this morning became an Olympic champion in the 400 freestyle she's in the final heat here racing for times and top 16 places to be into the semi-final Summer McIntosh the 14 year old right with her Titmus wins it. McIntosh second the Canadian and Yang from China in third spot. There's Arnie hardly blowing out a candle. 155.88. So there we go, 155.88 as we rejoin Rob Woodhouse. Your first impressions of the swim. It was a a slow start, Rob, as we heard in the commentary, but uh, certainly made up that territory really quickly and, and a strong finish home as we've come to expect. Yeah, really good, really good swim there by uh, Arnie. Um, she did what she had to do. Uh, the, the big surprise out of those heats was Federica Pellegrini, the Italian. I was pumping her up big time, wasn't I, before the race? And I think she's qualified, but she's about 15th or 16th position. She was way back in the field in that second last um, of the heats. But Wilson's qualified third and Tipness fourth. So a good result there for the Australians and they're comfortably through into the middle lanes of the semifinals. So just with that, my understanding is, is, is Federica still the world record holder in this event? 
She is, yeah. She broke that world record, uh, must be about 12, 13 years ago now. And I think she won her first world title around 2005. So been around a long, long time. She also won the world title in 2019. So she's still got it. She's still an absolute champion, but she has scraped in one in 15th place, but uh, you wouldn't write her off. But uh, that probably makes it even uh, even tastier for, for Ariane Titness. And the, I think the odds are going to get less and less for her. Ledecky did look really good. It's, it's, you can't tell much from the heats, particularly when they've got other events. But uh, Ledecky won't be laying down. If she, if she goes all the way through to the final, if she doesn't withdraw to save herself the 1,500, she's still going to be tough to beat. So she qualified fastest and, and just saw there the results come up. Federica Pellegrini just scraped in. So 15th out of 16. Um Oh, oh, is is there a is there a Perkins moment awaiting for us with her? Well, if you're a betting man, I think the odds would be pretty good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Wouldn't they be after these seats? But um, yeah, there's so many times Federica Pellegrini has been written off in a swimming career, and every single time it's been like 12, 13 years. She just comes back and does it again and again. As I said, five world titles. The last one was uh, the most recent one two years ago. And a little so, look at uh, history. Uh, yeah, I would write her off. But, uh, look, it's uh, Ariane. Summer McIntosh, they were talking about Summer in the, in the commentary. She's only 14 years of age, 14. as much as there's a new breed with Arnie Titmus coming through over Ledecky in the 400. Right behind us straight away, there's Summer McIntosh. She got fourth in that 400 this morning, and she's right up there in this 200 as well. Uh, that was a sensational heat and a lot of stories to come out of it. Can't wait for the semifinals tomorrow. Rob, we're going to catch up with you again uh, just before 8.30 when the men's 200-metre butterfly heat four kicks off with David Morgan uh, in lane two. So we'll chat to you then. Thank you, mate. Right. Thank you. Rob Woodhouse with us, and what a pleasure it is to have him, one of the best in the business for Tire Power, Ken Star Blues, first place getter, award winner for service again. There is a massive story unfolding uh, in the water polo. The Stingers at the moment, the third-ranked Netherlands, Australia leading them 13-11 with two and a half to play. Let's take in some of this because this is a massive upset brewing. Top of the defender. So here's a chance at Canada as well. How long will she drive? We get a switch. And he just put a hand on her as she was trying to get across. Gophers, unlucky there. Looking for the backhand, well saved. It's an excellent save, excellent pressure save from Gabby Palm to settling the girls down now. I think that's a good look too. Yeah. But the, the, the little, the little wave of hey, hey, Palm, Palm. Let's use all of this clock. Yeah, they're very important. It's, sometimes you can just let your wheel spin and throw that ball up too quickly. That's an excellent get. Yeah, so Kasia Gophers has drawn the exclusion. Van der Sloot is out. The Australians will call the timeout with 1.51 to go. They're up by two. 1.51 in actual time for play. Remember, every time the whistle goes, the clock stops, it's a long time. And if anyone knows how long it is, it's a woman sitting next to me who won an Olympic gold medal with one second left on the clock. Yeah, it does sometimes feel like it just has an eternity, but there is plenty of time left on the clock. Australia need to, and good to see Zoe Arancini. Going back in, Bronte, Halligan going in as well. Lots of experience there. Tilly Kearns there as well. So it's youth and experience, isn't it? Yeah, important that they use all their time here and would be a massive bonus if they get to have a, another possession from a touch or obviously a goal is even better. That repossession would be great. Just use all your time. But this, you say would seal it, but gee, it would make it very difficult for them, wouldn't it? So be careful if they do miss that the Dutch don't take off in counter-attack up the other end. Oh, great pass and yeah. Bonnie Halligan away to Tilly Kearns. She's put it in the back of the net and they're out by three. Yeah, that is excellent, Tilly Kearns. What a great goal to score. Beautiful pass. It's, you know, a little bit risky if it misses, but that was just so open. Had to give that pass, and it's a terrific finish from Tilly Kern. She's a powerhouse. So the Australians lead the Dutch by three inside the last 90 seconds of the match. Dutch need to score here. They've got the next replayer.
So with an extra player, the Dutch down by three. It's been a, a tremendous final quarter from the Australians, but they've got themselves back to two. The left-hander, she's had a terrific game, Van der Kruts. Yeah, beautiful shooting. There's plenty of time left on the clock. Australia need to just play calm. They can't stop attacking. They have to use all of their time up off the clock. Remember, they were down by four at one stage. They had a 5-2 third quarter. They've gone on with it here in the, in, in the fourth quarter. And now they lead by two with a minute to go. But a minute is a long time in water polo. We need to definitely chew that ball up. You can see we're sitting back here. Little Bronnie Knox hasn't gone over halfway yet. Very defensive. But you have to keep moving because if you don't move and the ball doesn't um, head up to, you know, like if you're not still being positive in your attack, you're just sort of giving the Dutch opportunities to steal the ball. And we definitely don't want to give them back possession. But Bronnie Knox will try the long and she's got it. Bronnie Knox on about five metres has spun at centre four. She's logged a straight in lead 15 12 against one of the world's powerhouses. They're right in these Olympics, the Stingers. Yeah, excellent work there from Australia. Had a good look at where the goalkeeper was. She was sitting a long way out, protecting her near corner. Beautiful judgment from Bronnie Knox. Well, she's in a fourth Olympic game. She scored a mighty goal there. And with the captain in a third, they've scored a couple of absolutely vital goals in this last quarter. And now, with possession and 20 seconds left on the clock, 30 seconds of possession, all they need to do is keep the ball and they're home. Out by three. What a win this is. Yeah, remarkable second half of the game from the Australians. They just kept on going. Great guts and determination. Be yeah. fantastic for their confidence. And they've taken it out 15 12 Australia over the Netherlands. That's their second win they're through to the quarterfinals. There's little doubt about that. Where they'll finish, time will tell. Ah, so that's sensational. You heard it in the commentary. The Netherlands, a powerhouse of women's water polo, and the Stingers have taken them down and are now 2-0 and o in Group A, which can, uh, includes Spain, Canada, South Africa, uh, and the Netherlands as well. So that is fantastic news tonight and a massive win uh, for Australia there in the water polo. Let's take a break and come back, and we'll get back to the pool, um, and we'll go back to the Tokyo Aquatic Centre and speak to Rob Woodhouse before David Morgan gets underway in his heat of the men's 200 metre butterfly. You are listening to the uh, Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, the night session brought to you by Tyre Power, your trusted tyre experts. A start. That's all it takes. It doesn't matter when, or where, or how. Just start. With the biggest range and the best brands, sporting dreams start at Rebel. Sport is calling. Powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game-changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility while the high back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro Today. Doing a bit of painting? Monarch Rollers make your job easier by pairing the nap length with your project. Walls and ceilings, exterior doors and trims, anything. Monarch Painting Tools at Bunnings and Leading Paint Specialists, monarchpainting.com.au. Purchase any 4 and 20 you know, product from anywhere. 4 and 20 is sold of for an opportunity to win 4 PS5. One for you and your three best mates. Miles. Together you'll go head-to-head head in a game of Fortnite with your AFL Dream Team. Plus a 4 and 20 brand of training footy to be won daily. Miss the winners. This is more than today. AFL Gaming.com.au. It's 31, 8, 21. Retain receipts or wrappers. It's WTP slash 0, 8, 9, 6, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, all in the studio. Brett Kamali here for Gallagher Insurance Brokers. And check Proud out the partner of the Gallagher the Kangaroos. If you name so one of my 13 on Gallagher SCN Kangaroos must-have players of the round before the higher station, ground each Sunday on 11.70 SEN, you could win an NRL double pass thanks to Gallagher and go into the draw for the major prize. A corporate box experience for you and nine mates. To win, simply head to iCanWin.com.au and tell me your Gallagher Kangaroos must-have player. Yeah. 
Men's Night Session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Tyre Power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. Uh, just repeating a great story before we went to that break. Uh, the Aussie Stingers, our women's water polo team, the upset win over the Netherlands, highly fancied, a powerhouse in the world of water polo, and that is a huge win and a massive boost to their chances. They're now 2 and 0 uh, in this campaign and nicely placed to progress. Uh, Ash Barty and Storm Sanders have wrapped up their round two game against the. Uh, Zhang and Zhu, uh, Yang and Zhu combination from China. So 6-4, six, 6-4 four, six, four for Barty and Storm Sanders. And a little earlier on uh, today, uh, Sam Stoza uh, and her partner, uh, Ellen Perez, got through beating the Romanian team of Olaru and Nicolescu. So we're not having much luck in the singles. Uh, but we are doing well in the doubles. So, uh, unfortunately, Isla Tomjanovic was knocked out today. So, too, was John Millman. Uh, and then, sadly, Max Purcell went down in straight sets uh, to the German uh, Kepfer. Uh, a back injury looked like it really hampered him. So, uh, we should be getting the heat of the men's 200-metre butterfly going in just a minute. Uh, the broadcaster hasn't gone down to the pool deck yet, but we will. Uh, Rob Woodhouse is there for us, and we'll have a little bit of a chat uh, about the 27-year-old David Morgan. Uh, bronze, if I'm not mistaken, at Rio. Uh, Rob, what more can you tell us about this young man? Uh, yeah, he's, he's actually, we're lucky to have him, actually. He's born in Wales, and uh, his mum actually swam for GB back in 1976 Olympics, and uh, yeah, he didn't get amongst the medals in Rio, but he was very, very close. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was his first games experience. But uh, 155.26 is his best time, I think it is. And um, uh, if we're watching these first few heats go through now. They're all about the 155 mark. It's go, he's going to have to go pretty close to his best time just to get through to the semifinals. But if he can do that, it's going to be really tight and, and hopefully a spot in the final beckons, as it does for Matt Temple as well late, um, in, the, in the following uh heat, but uh, that's the first of the seeded heats out of the way, and 155.05 at the moment is the fastest qualifier, but it goes all the way down to uh, the fifth place was 155.85, so that gives you an idea how close uh, this first seeded heat was, and I expect these next few will be the same, and Sam, um, unusual not to have Michael Phelps in this event as well, He's, he won this event in 2004, 2008, yep. got second behind a South African Chad Leclerc in 2012, then he came back and won it again in 2016, so He's actually sitting not far uh, ahead of me, uh, commentating for NBC. I saw him yesterday, but uh, uh, I wonder what he'll be thinking as, uh, as these heats go through the water. So is this the event that, uh, is this the leg that uh, that David swum in the medley, the 4 by 100 where we got bronze in 2016? Butterfly leg in the medley relay, yes. That was a, that was a bronze medal, yeah. And he's got the he's got this the, is the this is the two hundred butterfly. Yeah, and he's got the one hundred uh, as well, which you were mentioning earlier. You fancy him, uh, his chances a bit more in there. So uh, let's head down to the pool, and we'll come back to Rob on the other side of it. But uh, David Morgan about to take to the pool uh, in heat four of the men's two hundred meter butterfly. And he starts here in lane two. There's Sato of Japan. Fifth in this event at Rio, silver medalist of the World Championships. So, Dea Seto always very strong. And he's in the middle lane here, Thorpe. David Morgan of Australia in lane two. Yeah, Dea Seto was a surprise that he actually missed out on the final individual medley final, uh, which he was expected. And um, assumed that he'd win, he, 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 he actually missed qualification um, for that final. But we'll be looking at a little bit of redemption here in this 200 freestylers. But this but is... Um, of uh, Italy goes through fastest. David Morgan um, can put together a, 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 a very good 200 metres uh, butterfly. Um, originally from Wales, has emigrated to Australia and has represented our team very well at the international level, whether it be the Commonwealth Games, World Championships, Pacific Championships and also the Olympic Games. Yeah, quite right. He's a great spirit within this Australian team. Born in Cardiff, Wales, arrived in Australia as a 10-year-old could hardly swim and he's really taken it up and taken it places at his second Olympic Games here and just ever so slightly starting to move up. He's on the uh, second lane from the right now towards the top of screen with no swimming cap. He's the only Australian who swims at these games without 
the traditional gold or yellow cap. Now out in front, it is Federico Berdiso of Italy, the 19-year-old. They have set her just off the pace ever so slightly. Wang of China in lane three, also going pretty well. So Berdiso, Wang and Seto and David Morgan's going to have to bring it home here. through the Americans, so we've got Zach Harding coming through at, at the latter stage of this part, and then we have the swimmer from Chinese Taipei uh, that's also up there, so in front of the two middle lanes, and then on the outside we've also got the Russian that oh, just missed the touch. But it was a good finish by Wang, wasn't it? So Wang of Chinese Taipei, the 19-year-old lane three, he got it, Harding of the United States. And uh, David Morgan was a fair way back. He, he his race, never really got into any rhythm, and he's finished eighth in that fourth heat of the men's 200 fly, the Aussies. So no love uh, and no joy for us there, Rob Woodhouse. It just wasn't, that never really got going, that race for, for David Morgan. He was up against some uh, pretty top-notch company. No, he looked pretty distressed at the end. Uh, there may be an issue with him, I'm not sure, an illness or something. I haven't, haven't heard anything pre-race, but uh, your tuna fly is one of the tough, toughest events on the program, and he's oh, a yeah. tough competitor uh, all these years. He's swum for Australia. Uh, uh, there's, there's definitely something amiss. Uh, he'd be disappointed to, uh, well, I'm assuming he's not well, but he'd be dis disappointed to uh, not, not be at his best for this uh, for this heat swim. As you said earlier, he's got the 100 metres later in the week, and um, he's just got to regroup and focus on that. But we've got Matt Temple going in this last of the uh, last of the heats now up against the world record holder Christoph Milak from Hungary. Yeah, so he was five seconds uh, outside his best there, Dave Morgan, so you, you might be onto something. Uh, but what about Matty Temple uh, in, in this event? Uh, are we expecting uh, much more from him? It'd be interesting to see how he goes. The hundred's definitely his preferred event. He's got the speed, and we saw him uh, leading off that freestyle relay to the bronze medal this morning in the uh, 4 by 100 freestyle uh, relay. But... Um, We'll see how he goes. He, he has done a 155 before, so he's capable of getting to the semis. But whether he goes flat out or whether this is a good, good another hit out for him ahead of the 100 remains to be seen. All right, he's in lane two. Let's get back uh, to the Tokyo Aquatic Centre. And the world record holder alongside him, Christoph Milak, the 21-year-old from Hungary. He's the world champion, world record holder, and it is a commanding lead that he has times-wise. The 21-year-old almost three seconds ahead of any other swimmer this year and just about the most unbackable favourite for gold at these games in the pool. Men's 200 fly, Milak in four, Chad Leclerc, the South African, the 29-year-old who's been around for a while at a high level, and Matthew Temple, lane two, going OK. So if you want to know about Chad Leclerc, he's probably most famous for his swim in the 2004 London Olympic Games against Michael Phelps, where he beat him to the wall, even though he had a sneaky few looks at him. It's one of his motivating factors when it comes to the final part of this race. He'll take a look and get himself into a position where he can win. So Milan, the world record holder out in front, De Deuce in second spot, the Brazilian, also been around uh, Olympic competition for a little while. He's back in second, and Matthew Temple in fifth, on the right. Yeah, yeah fifth, he's fifth position going through. So we'll watch Matthew here, already had an uh, uh, Olympic final. Poe was the FINA male swimmer of the year in 2018. First South African in any sport to win four Olympic medals. He's been a power in this sport, the men's swimming and particularly the 200 fly. So Temple, he was in eighth spot on that last turn, just lost a little bit of ground. Let's see what he can bring home. Big relay swim from him. Milak, we're seeing all of his class at the moment. Deduce the Brazilian lane seven, the right cap going the best of the rest but as Milak just eases down a little it's going to be a comfortable win for him. It was a good finish by Temple. He did make up a little bit of ground on the rest of the field. He's going to finish out of the places though and Tamuru of Japan got third. No doubt about the winner though. 153.58 so around about three seconds outside his PB which is the world record. Very comfortable swim for our winner. So Rob, uh, is that going to be good enough for Matty to, to get through or is he going to finish outside uh, the contention there? 
No, no, he's out, I believe. They're, they're just bring the results somewhere up now, but uh, I'd, I'd say he's probably around about 18th, 20th position, so he won't be in the semifinals. I'm not too concerned about that. It's, uh, look, the 100, uh, him not not doing the semi tomorrow just gives him another, another day's rest before the uh, the heats of the 100 towards the end of the week, and that's really – give him a good chance of a medal, actually, Matt Temple in the 100 butterfly. So um, a good head out for him and, and uh, not a bad race after his um, heroics this morning winning bronze in that freestyle relay. So uh, who then, yeah, and that was absolutely fantastic and, and that, uh, I haven't asked you about that, but the the final leg of Kyle Chalmers going from sixth or seventh to third, um, <laughs> you heard we heard from you earlier that he was trying to conserve himself in one of his earlier heats, but he knows no other way. I mean, that's one of the swims... That is one of the great swims. Yeah, it was a great swim by Kyle. And look, he's he's such a he's a leader. He's a team man as well. And obviously, he's a great individual swimmer. We saw him win that uh, Olympic title in the hundred freestyle in Rio. He's defending here. There's not going to be too many people get to defend their their titles here. It's so tough after five years. But he's one with a big chance. Um, just just as an example, I mean, he had to go flat out in the heats of that relay. Normally, the top swimmer might get a chance to rest, but the Australians were a bit worried about qualifying. He had to go really flat out. So he put himself up there right for the team, and he did it again in that final this morning, and what a tremendous swim. All was really well for him against Caleb Dressel, the world champion American, in that 100 freestyle final later in the week. Who are you expecting to swim the butterfly leg for Australia in the, uh, in the medley? I do expect Mac Temple. It'll be they, they normally select. It's not not um, hard and fast rule, but they normally select whoever is the better. So you would expect on um, on previous best times that Matt Temple should be shooing for that spot. All right, our, uh, our Zoom link's getting a little shaky. Uh, Rob, we're going to not push our luck, and I'll catch up with you again after 9.30 for the women's 1,500 metre freestyle heats. Matty Goff uh, in action for Australia, along with Kia Melvin, and I'll speak to you then. Thank you. Uh, Rob Woodhouse with us, and it's an absolute pleasure to have him. Uh, he joins us for Tyre Power, winning service, winning prices, and the night sessions are brought to you by Tyre Power as well. Tyre Power, your trusted tyre experts. We do it for mate communications and for zero as well. We'd love to hear more from you, one 736 736 This is interactive. You're the co-host of our night sessions uh, every night during the 2020 Olympics, with S- which SEN is incredibly proud to be bringing you as a broadcast partner of. So I'd love to hear from you. 0406 947 181. Wherever you're listening to us right around Australia, we're going nationally with this. So put your name, uh, put your suburb and state. Um, who are you? Who is the athlete that you are most looking forward to seeing at these Olympics? I reckon there's a few hearts and minds performances every single Olympics. We've already had one, Ariane Titmus, which is going to be the next one for you. 1300 736 736 0433 98 11 16. You might know one of our Olympians. They might live around the corner from you. It could be a cousin, brother, butchers, bakers, candlestick makers. It doesn't matter. Let me know um, if you've got a connection to any of our athletes. Uh, I'd love to hear from you as well. one three hundred seven three six seven three six and 433 98 So uh, our two women's doubles combinations got through their second-round opponents today in the tennis. Unfortunately, John Millman out. Uh, unfortunately, Ola Tomjanovic is out too. Uh, and unfortunately, Max Purcell out in the singles. So we're all done and dusted in the singles, but we're still alive in the doubles. And just re- repeating earlier, big news of tonight is uh, our women's water polo team, the Stingers, have won their second game. Uh, they backed up the, the win that they uh, had uh, in their first up game uh, in these Olympics with a huge upset win over the Netherlands, which is just massive in the context of water polo. Of course, our women won the gold in 2000 at the Sydney Olympics, and Geez, if they can play like that in every game, then uh, they could go again. Uh, so we will come back on the other side of this. Love to hear from you, one three hundred seven three six seven three six or zero four double three ninety eight eleven sixteen. Our Aussie softballers, our Aussie spirit, a must win game against Mexico to get up into that bronze medal match. That's after nine o'clock. And when we come back, I'll just take you through some of the big results uh, of the day. We've had all up; it'll be twenty one uh, sports that have had Australians in them today. So I'll take you through each and every one of those on the other side of this. 
Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. Hello. At National Tiles, we continue to permanently reduce our prices on Australia's most popular wall and floor tiles, like Stone Code, which we've crunched down to just $19.95 per metre every day of the year. You heard right. These ever-popular large-format stone floor tiles down to $19.95 every day of the year. So rush into National Tiles now in Alexandria or go to nationaltiles.com.au now and save. Need a guest speaker for your next major event? Get Bravo Talent Management and what connects your business with legendary right parts here on SEN and current and stars in the AFL. Gary Ablett Jr. Join Mindsurf History on SEN Track for the winners. And does what Gary Ablett does best. Dermot Ferguson, Jack Rebolt, George Lewis, Darcy Moore, Isaac Smith, Jacob Wienery, Josh Dunkley and more. Grand Ambassadors, Appearances and Keynote Speaker Engagements. Inquire with Bravo Talent, Talent Management. Adi Bravo G, Talent, no MG, 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 Campbell Brown, all in the studio. That's all Plus it takes. It doesn't matter when, check it out. or where, or how. Just start with the biggest range and the best brands. Sporting brands, dreams, and dreams. Dreams. start or at Rebel. Live, sporting is anywhere, calling. Call 1300. On the Houston incredible three night stay in Queenstown for two sound. Try out Kia's Speed Survivor. And you could win. Sign up the key is Queen Survivor before August 19 at sensurvivor.com.au. Our great game of rugby league continues to deliver and the battle for supremacy is taking shape. Download the SEN app and listen live wherever you are. Join our NRL Nation commentary team for all the big plays and every memorable moment. Can you believe it? Little goes all the way. Rugby League Season 2021. Hear it all on the SEN app. Download it now. Well, guess what, Fletch? The snoring was back last night. You know why? Because the youngest, he stole my Spine Lee's pillow. Yeah. Did you know that they're Australian made too? Australian, I did, though. They're Spinal Ease pillows, Australian made. I have one. I love it because as soon as I put my lemon spread down, I'm asleep. Yeah, absolutely. It might just change your life, you know, because I notice a huge difference when I'm using the Spinal Ease or not using the Spinal Ease. So order your Spinal Ease pillow with free delivery. Go to SpinalEase.com.au. That's SpinalEase.com.au. And Powered you can Powered by over 100 years of innovation, you know, Toro's all new battery run on mobile is a game changer. Get maximum Trek. performance and go the distance with up to two hours run time on a single charge of a 72 volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility while the high back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer today. Hello. National tiles of European made Timberlock laminate drawers for under $19 per square metre. Wherever yes. you are in your local National SEN Tracks station, exclusive or European Oak Look Flooring for under $19 per metre. Watch this in a studio. That's less than $190 for an average 10 square metre of bedroom flooring. Get your choice of Timberlock laminate drawers today. Call 131 
ESPN's night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Tyre Power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. Uh, wonderful to have your company with us. SEN's broadcast of the 2020 Olympic Games and we are proud broadcast partners and don't forget you can stream every Olympic sport on 7 Plus and get to know our Aussie athletes on their road to Tokyo. Download the 7 Plus app to your smart TV, your mobile or tablet to watch Tokyo 2020. Um, we're going to go through some of the highlights today in just a moment but we've got uh, athletes in action and have had uh, overall today it'll be 21 Aussies in action so I thought I'd take you through from the start of the day uh, to today uh, to right now as to how they've gone and what happens next for them. Uh, so just bear with me as we work through this. And uh, again, there's a couple of texts saying that there's two lots of ads playing at the same time. I apologise. Uh, well, I'm trying to get it fixed. I'm not sure why it's happening, uh, but just bear with us. Um, thank you for your patience with that. Uh, so the triathlon that started this morning, uh, Jacob Burt with some Matthew Hauser and Aaron Royal uh, were... Uh, our competitors in that event. They finished 16th, 24th and 26th respectively. Uh, Norway's Christian Blumenfeldt uh, was the eventual winner in the end and this was a moment that uh, caused a little bit of mirth for a few people but probably not the athletes involved. Have a look at, at who went first here as they said. That's incredible. They almost went as one on the outside and Mario Moller I think on the very inside. What did they hear? Uh, the boat was still in front of half the competitors in that race. Uh the surfing, uh, so this morning, unfortunately, Steph Gilmore was eliminated uh, by Bianca Butendag from uh, South Africa uh, in round three, the first heat. Uh, so, unfortunately, Steph Gilmore doesn't progress, uh, but there's better news from surfing, and I'll get to that uh, in just a moment. She said straight away that her aim now is to support her teammates and find out, a, <laughs> make sure she can get back uh, to surfing at the next Olympics in France. Uh, so in the shooting, the women's skate qualification, Laura Coles uh, did not qualify, unfortunately. In the skateboarding, our first ever woman to compete in skateboarding, which has been a wonderful addition to the Olympics. Hayley Wilson uh, finished 16th in the end and did not qualify to go through to the final. In shooting in our men's skate, uh, Paul Adams finished 21st and didn't get through to the next round. Um, this is a great story. Jian Fang Lei is a six-time Olympian now, uh, and in the women's singles of the table tennis, she won her second round uh, of matches and and now goes through to round three. Uh, she beat uh, Kian Lee from Poland uh, and now goes through to round three. It's a fantastic story in her sixth Olympics. In the rugby sevens, our Aussie men's first game was against Argentina. They went down 19 to 29. They were, I think they were 19 nil or 29 nil down at the half. Um, so that wasn't a great start to them, but they did fight back hard in the second half. And then uh, Emma McKeon got our first medal of the day um, in the women's 100 metre butterfly. In the 200 metre men's freestyle semi-final, Thomas Neal didn't qualify after finishing fourth. In the archery, the men's team, Barnes, Tyak and Worth uh, went down to Chinese Taipei and have been eliminated. They've all got the singles still to come. In Taekwondo, Jack Martin uh, lost his um, round 16 match and uh, has been eliminated from competition. Chelsea Hodges was in the women's 100 metre breaststroke, uh, finished fifth and unfortunately didn't qualify. Uh, in the table tennis men's singles, David Powell was eliminated by Yang Wang uh, from Slovakia. Uh, in the surfing, Sally Fitzgibbons did make it through to the quarterfinals, beating uh, Pauline Addo from France. So uh, that was a fantastic result for Australia in the surfing there. Uh, the women's 400 metre freestyle, it was the moment of the day and maybe it will be the moment of the Olympics. Ariane Titmus taking down maybe the greatest to ever do it uh, of female swimmers and maybe of all swimmers uh, she'll be right up there in the conversation as well. Uh, Katie Ledecky uh, from the US, a legend uh, and rightly so. Ariane Titmus fought back hard in the final 150 and was uh, ahead when it mattered to get uh, our second gold of these Olympics. Um, Mitch Larkin then qualified. Uh, he finished second in his heat and qualified uh, for the final in the men's 100-metre backstroke. Unfortunately, Isaac Cooper wasn't as lucky, finishing seventh in his heat. Uh, in the women's 100-metre backstroke semi-final, Kaylee McEwen and Emily Seabom uh, finished second and third and did qualify for the final uh, tomorrow. Uh, in the sailing, the men's dinghy, the laser, uh, Matt Wern uh, finished 27th overall um, 
sorry, in race two of ten, finished 28th and is now 27th overall. Uh, in the swimming, the men's 4 by 100 metre relay, Matt Temple, Zach Inserti, Alex Graham and Kyle Chalmers turned in seventh, finished in third, a bronze medal for us there. Uh, in the women's hockey, uh, our Pool B game against China, uh, our hockey ruse won 6-0. So we're about halfway through the events to keep you up to date on from today, but we'll get a couple of ads away. Hopefully these play off as they're supposed to. Um, we are working on that as we speak, as we are broadcasting all around the nation on the SEN network at the moment. Uh, fingers crossed this goes all right as we continue uh, to go around the grounds uh, in the night session brought to you by Tire Power. Around the grounds we go for Beaumont Tiles. Shop Beaumont Tiles, tile.com.au. Beaumont Tiles are keeping your Renault dreams alive. Shop online at tile.com.au. I just really want customer support from someone close by. True Blue award-winning Aussie support. You betcha. Mate has got your back. Mate serves up award-winning internet and mobile. Get unlimited talk and text, plus great data inclusions with data banking of unused data up to 100 gigabytes for only $20 a month. Plus, you get a Tidal Music subscription included free with selected plans. Mate, how good's that? What are you waiting for, mate? Choose a provider you can trust, like Mate. Visit letsbemates.com.au. Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. Being at the greatest events on the sporting calendar is what makes sport fans tick. And to witness the biggest sporting moments in Australia, Ballpark Entertainment can get you there. AFL, NRL, horse racing, soccer, basketball, cricket, boutique events and more. Ticketing, corporate suites and money can't buy experiences get the best access to the best sporting events with Ballpark Entertainment. Making memories. Ballparkentertainment.com.au Today is a confusing time to be young. We see kids enjoying the party and laughing with their friends. They seem like they haven't got a care in the world. Or do they? Every day we become more dependent on technology. But for kids looking for a real conversation, it can be tricky. The problem is no one's talking about it. At the Harris and Riedel Foundation, we believe that the right conversation at the right time can stop small things from becoming big problems. Help us help our kids by donating today at hrf.org.au. Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. Powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game-changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility, while the high-back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer today. From tennis to the running track, sporting dreams start at Rebel. Shop the biggest range with the best brands in store or at rebelsport.com today and kickstart your sporting dreams. Rebel, sport is calling. We 
Winter is coming. Don't run out of hot water. Head to Thrifty Plumbing Supplies Campsy. Install a Ream Continuous Flow or Australian-made storage hot water system in stock for same-day delivery. Thrifty Campsy, the Ream experts. Corner of Canterbury Road and Beamish Street. Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. Powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game-changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility, while the high-back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer today. SEN's night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Tyre Power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. So our Aussie spirit about to take the field for their must-win clash against Mexico in the softball. They win and they're into the bronze medal playoff against Canada. We America and Japan uh, in the gold medal game for that. Just working you through some of the great performances of the day uh, when uh, that's uh, a Wolf, these are Wolf Blast great performances. Wolf Blast, uh, IWC Red Winemaker of the Year. Uh, so I left you, when we went to the ad break, we had just gone through um, the... Uh, men's con- uh, sorry the uh, in the sailing uh, and the women's four by one hundred meter the men's four by one hundred meter re- uh, f- freestyle relay um, in the tennis today John Millman uh, went down to Alejandro Davidovic for Kina from Spain uh, he was eliminated from the competition in the canoe slalom in the semifinals uh, Daniel Watkins finished second uh, and then went through to the final uh, and I'll get to that result in just a moment in the badminton in the mixed doubles uh, Simon Wing Hung Luang and Gronje Somerville um, were, went down to Denmark and have been eliminated from the competition. Uh, in the sailing, uh, Matt Wern uh, in race three out of the ten, uh, he finished second in that, which jumped him up to 12th overall. In the women's dinghy, in the laser uh, radial, um, Mara Stransky finished 13th in race three out of ten. Um, Ola Tomjanovic lost her second round match uh, to Alina Svitolina. Uh, Svitolina. Uh, and has been eliminated uh, in the beach volleyball. And Chris McHugh and Damien Schumann, after going so close to the team from Montenegro, taking a set off them, they went down uh, in straight sets to the Russian team and are now 0-2. Uh, in the cycling, in the mountain bike section, Daniel McConnell, uh, whose wife, Beck McConnell, actually competes in the same event on the women's side of the draw. Uh, he was looking really good for a lot of this race, uh, but finished in 30th. Uh, the winner, in the end, was uh, Tom Pidcock from uh, Great Britain who won gold in that event. Julian Wilson was then knocked out in round three, heat four, by two-time world champion Gabrielle Medina. And in the canoe slalom, uh, Daniel Watkins in the final ended up finishing ninth. Benjamin uh, Sabsek from Slovenia uh, was the gold medalist in that event. In the sailing, the women's dinghy race four, Mara Stransky finished 10th and is now 16th overall. Uh, Sam Stozer and Alan Perez won their women's doubles clash against uh, Monikoa Nicolescu and Raluca Olaru. Uh, the Romanian team. So they are through to the quarterfinals. In the boxing, the men's flyweight, Alex Winwood, uh, unfortunately lost uh, in the flyweight division to Zambia's Patrick uh, Chinyemba. In the surfing, Owen Wright did get through to the quarterfinal, beating uh, Jeremy Flores, the world number 25. Uh, in the tennis, Max Purcell was clearly injury hampered and went down to German uh, Dominic Kepfer. In the Rugby Sevens, our men's team won its second Pool A game against South Korea, 42-5, to and are now 1-1. One and one. Uh, Ash Barty and Storm Sanders beat the Chinese team of Zhu and Yang, uh, and are now through to the quarterfinals. In the water polo, this is huge. Uh, Netherlands are an absolute powerhouse in the water polo, and Australia ended up beating them 15-12. Uh, so that is 
absolutely sensational and, and certainly worthy to be considered a personal best for them. Uh, for Pilot, your online men's health navigator, real doctors, real treatments, discreet shipping, pilot.com.au. Uh, and in the pool tonight, the results so far, Maddie Wilson has qualified for the semifinals. Uh, she finished third in her 200-metre freestyle heat. Ariane Titmus uh, finished first in her heat and has qualified uh fourth fastest, I believe, uh, and he's through to the semi-final tomorrow. David Morgan didn't qualify, and neither did Matty Temple um, for the next stage of the men's 200-metre butterfly. So just keeping an eye on the boxing at the moment, uh, Australia in action as we speak. Um, our Australian boxer uh, in the ring at the minute is Sky Nicholson. She's taking on A.G. Kim from Korea. And it's in the early stages uh, of the first round there. So uh, we'll get your result from that uh, as uh, we know a little bit more. Not the easiest sport to bring to life on radio is the boxing. (laughs) Uh, They don't really say right hand, left hand uh, as much as we'd like them to, to be able to paint the picture for you correctly. But I will keep you up to speed uh, on that. Uh, And uh, when if uh, a win happens there, we'll bring you the replay for Lloyd's uh, Lloyd Auctions. Lloyd's Auctions replay. Lloyd's Auctions, Australia's greatest auction house. Bid now at lloydsauctions.com.au. So the other events that you and I will be working our way through this evening. Uh, the women, our Aussie spirit are underway. It's the top of the first and uh, Mexico uh, at bat. Uh, the count is two and two and uh, fly ball to centre field is uh, easily collected. So we'll come back and bring you some of that action in just a moment. Uh, there's badminton tonight that we'll update you on. Um, in the women's doubles, and then we'll be back to the Tokyo Aquatic Centre for the women's 1500 metre freestyle, uh, that's, uh, which will be uh, heat four. We've got Maddie Goff swimming in that, and then the next heat, uh, Kia Melverton, uh, will be in action as well. So we'll take a break and come back with the uh, women's softball on SEN's coverage of the 2020 uh, Olympic Games. From rugby to running, sporting dreams start at Rebel. Shop the biggest range with the best brands in store or at rebelsport.com today and bring your sporting dreams to life. Rebel, sport is calling. Purchase any 4 and 20 product from anywhere 4 and 20 is sold for an opportunity to win four PS5s. One for you and your three best mates. Together you'll go head to head in a game of Fortnite with your AFL dream team. Plus a 4 and 20 branded Sharon footy to be won daily. TNC supply. See fntaflgameon.com.au. It's 31 8, 21. Retain receipts or wrappers. NSWTP slash 00896. ACT TP 21 slash 00450. SAT 21 slash 420. Bred on a Kimberley cattle station to withstand the Aussie life, Ringer's Western clothing looks great in the city while toughing it out on the land. From tees and jackets to boots and denim, Ringer's Western. Shop now at ringerswestern.com. SEN's night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for tyre power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. So one out in the women's softball. We're going to take you there. Uh, Mexico at bat, top of the first. Uh, Australia, this is a must-win clash for them to get into the bronze medal game. Just a beautiful action acknowledges the good call from Katja Belinda White. These two really do have a wonderful chemistry. And that one called for a ball. Anissa Ertez, as you said, Fiona, also seeing them very well. Three hits for two home runs against Italy. A .625 slugging percentage for the tournament. And that one's just in the zone, the drop ball for a strike. And there's the great Dallas Escobedo really coming into form now. So this could well be a pitcher's game. Certainly most of the Australian games. And that one a little too low for another ball. And when we talk about batting percentage and slugging percentage, batting is the the total number of hits divided by the number of bats, whereas the slugging average represents the total number of bases a player records per at-bat. Gets that one away, but too tight into foul territory pretty quickly. Two and two now. Oh, 
Cortez currently fourth in RBIs for the tournament. And that one's very much inside for another ball, so the count is full. Three and two pitch, two out. The great Stacey Porter there at third base with war paint on the arm tonight. And she grounds that one again for a foul. So pressure building on Mexico here to try and get something out of this first inning. But so far, Kaya Parnaby's been very compact. And misses that for a strike. So a very clean start for Australia. Three out for Mexico. Bottom of the first, Australia at bat, nil all. Dallas Escobedo now comes out to pitch. Sashel Palacios, the catcher, as they warm up. They didn't give anything away in their win last night. They've had a great defensive tournament, the Mexicans, particularly their, their pivots in Anissa Ortez and Chelsea Gonzalez have been playing remarkably well. Talking about playing remarkably well, we see here Lee Godfrey who's been the lead-off hitter for the Aussie spirit for each game, having a tremendous tournament, coming into the game with a batting average of 3-6-4 at an Olympic tournament that's pretty impressive. One hit and one strikeout against the United States. Four hits from 11 at-bats, which is a team high. Can Lang Harrow bring up a tactical feat here to get Australia into that bronze medal game and another chance at Canada tomorrow. Mexico in their first Olympic Games thinking exactly the same thing. And that one just outside the zone for a ball. Escobedo threw 106 pitches in four innings against Canada. A lot of fouls there, it seemed to go forever. 103 pitches in the entire game against Italy last night. Rested against the United States. She only pitched two innings there. Great discipline here from Lee Godfrey. Lee said that this will be her last international tournament, so she's going to want to go as long into the tournament as she possibly can. And a cold strike for that pitch. Okay, so Escobedo and Sashel Palacios having a little conversation here. One of the greatest athletes from Arizona State. Now the graduate manager there, Dallas Escobedo. Some terrific numbers in a time there. Married to Chris McGee, the brother of former ASU linebacker Brandon McGee. And that one flies off for a foul from Lee Godfrey's bat. And that's two strikes. And it's such an interesting story. She said that you know, she wanted to play for the USA, but it's quoted as saying that the US softball just stopped calling. She got tired of waiting, so she made the most of her Mexican heritage and that, and here she is at the Olympics. And Godfrey swing and a miss, struck out by Dallas Escobedo. So after those two balls to start the inning, Escobedo finds her rhythm and range. Lee will be disappointed with swinging at that. You can see on her face there. Just fell for that inside drop ball. And that's a cold strike. Just high and inside the zone. Good pitch from Escobedo. Stacey Port has been walked quite a lot intentionally in this series. And 
that one a little outside for a ball. So she likes to help the umpire out, saying no to that, just in case the umpire wasn't aware. Dallas has found something here on the mound. Someone left their credit card behind. And Stacey's really started to come into form. She probably didn't, hadn't really hit her straps in the first couple of games, but has got some really solid pieces on the ball when the pitchers have actually thrown to her. Gets onto that one, through the outfield, hits the fence, over the fence. That is the first time we've seen the great Stacey Porter doing what she can do. And that is vintage Stacey Porter. Just line drives that ball. One bounce over the fence, a ground rule double. Brilliant, you can just see the determination on her face just to muscle that ball out. Just so much power. Perfect opportunity here for the Aussie Spirit in the bottom of the first. One out with a runner in scoring position. Taylor Titsakronis has been batting very well. Walked once with two strikeouts against the United States, but she's ranked five for batting averages in this series and eight for slugging. Three hits. And that did struck the back of Taylor's leg there, so she gets a walk for that. I thought for a moment there it might have missed and hit Palacios, but and she's taking a little time out, I think, here, because that would have stung just a little bit. She's grinning and bearing it. She, she certainly is at 105 k's an hour. That's got a sting. But tough as nails, as we can see here, the pitch coming in on the inside. Oh, oh gets Taylor the knee. right on that knee. For a moment, I thought it hit the trailing leg, but that, that is, well, it's dangerous as well as painful. I hope she's okay. Chelsea Falcon at bat now with two runners on base. And that's the rise ball, but just a little too high for a ball. Chelsea had a lovely hit, her first hit of the Olympic Games yesterday to right field against the USA. And again, we talked about the importance of consolidating with runners on base. Critical here. Just in the bottom corner of the zone there. Well played Escobedo for a one-on-one -on -one pitch now. And Falker just looks back at the dugout. The PE teacher from Redcliffe stayed high. Gets onto that one, but it's a foul. Two strikes. 32 years of age. Player number... 242 for the Aussie Spirit. And that one goes down the line. It's high. It should be caught. And it is. But Porter manages to steal the third. That's superb base running from Stacey Porter. Knowing that that ball was going deep down the left field line, tagged up and just exploded there, doing a beautiful head first dive into third base. So, still an opportunity here for Australia. Two out, but we have a runner on third. And Jade Wall at bat. And a strike. Not happy with that one. Escobedo. Not tempted by that rise ball again. Chisipronis, of course, got to second as well, so very important to get that advance in that play with two out now. And she grounds that one. Fielded by third base. She's out at first, so nice and tidy by Mexico there. Got out of trouble after that great hit from Stacey Porter. They did not concede a run. Australia nil, Mexico nil at the top of the second.
So top of the second, nil all at the moment. Must win clash for our Aussie spirit. Uh, they need to win this game against Mexico to get themselves into the bronze medal clash against Canada. Uh, they're currently sitting in fourth. Uh, they have to win to lock that in. Love to hear from you. one 736 736 What's captured your imagination uh, so far in the Olympics? What's engaging you? What are you loving? Uh, what have you found that you never really knew much about, but now you can't stop watching? And, of course, I want to know from you what you think will be the next stop the nation moment. What do you think will be the weight of a nation moment? We've had Ariane Titmus today in the uh, 400 metre freestyle gold medal. We're going to relive that a little later on this evening. We'll hear from her dad, Steve, who spoke to Jared. We'll hear from Dean Boxall, the man that's on every meme uh, getting around social media at the moment, who did go bunter after she won. Uh, he sort of looked like he was a wrestler walking out to have a match. He was sort of shaking the barricade and he really, he did did really lose it. He went full Chris Scott, didn't he? Uh, after the Gary Rowan, after the siren goal. And it was wonderful to see. That's just raw emotion. Um, five years in the making and longer, but uh, all that built up and the release when the moments realised, it was <laughs> incredible to see. Uh, still heaps of results to be able to work your way through tonight. I just want to have a little, um, get an update in just a moment. So, uh, the boxing match that we were keeping an eye on uh, between Sky Nicholson and IG Kim has completed, and I'll just check in uh, during this ad break on the result of it, and I'll come straight back to you on the other side of this. Hello. At National Tiles, we continue to permanently reduce our prices on Australia's most popular wall and floor tiles, like Stone Code, which we've crunched down to just $19.95 per metre every day of the year. You heard right. These ever popular large format stone floor tiles down to 19.95 every day of the year. So rush into National Tiles now in Alexandria or go to nationaltiles.com.au now and save. Sportscrafter, the official formal uniform supply for the Australian Olympic team in Tokyo as they go for gold. For your own podium finish style, discover the latest Sportscraft collection of men's clothing, including relaxed shirting, classic jackets, warm coats and chinos. All perfectly curated to bring quality, style and versatility to your wardrobe. Sportscraft, we are team. Team Australia. Discover the latest menswear collection online at sportscraft.com.au. A start. That's all it takes. It doesn't matter when, or where, or how. Just start. With the biggest range and the best brands, sporting dreams start at Rebel. Sport is calling. Powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game-changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility, while the high-back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer today. Matty Johns here. If you're after accountants that specialise in the construction industry, talk to Silver Peacock. Whether you're a sparky, plumber or builder, whatever trade you're in, Silver Peacock are your tax specialist. From bookkeeping to taxation and everything in between. Visit silverpeacock.com.au. Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806.
SEN's night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for tyre power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. Uh, good news for Australia, and there was a couple of people that were texting through about this a little earlier. I think Michael was one of them uh, who was really excited to see... Uh, Sky Nicholson make her Olympic debut. She was fighting IGM uh, of Korea. It was 29 years after her late brother Jamie fought at the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. So there's a lot of meaning in this uh, for her. And the good news is that she's won via split decision. Uh, and this is how it went down. The winner on points by split decision. So, so, split decision, Yuri. In blue, Sky. Sky Nicholson does indeed advance to the quarterfinals. So that's a Wolf Blast great performance. Wolf Blast, the IWC red wine maker of the year. Sky Nicholson is through, and that's brought to you by Wolf Blast, the International Wine Challenge red wine maker of the year. So congratulations to her. She's through to the quarterfinals as well. Now, Mexico have got the first run uh, at the top of the second uh, against Australia and the, the Aussie spirit at the moment. So a 1-0 down, uh, no outs yet in the count 2-2. Uh, we will head back there now. Good encouragement from Fitzaconis and indeed the dugout. She gets ready for the 2-2 pitch. Slices that one down the line, but not a regulation hit. And that's exactly what Victoria Vidal is, is looking to do, is really just lean on that outside pitch, drive it to the right side of the field to allow enough time for Brookshire on third to, to get home or put the ball deep into the outfield for a sacrifice fly. As we can see here, the battery coach, Andrew Kirkpatrick, coming out to talk to Kyra and Bell White just to discuss what's working, what's not, and the strategy to, uh, to prevent this scoreline from opening up even more. I mentioned a lot of the Mexican team play for US colleges or have played for US colleges. Certainly Kai Parnaby was a target of those. Chose the University of Hawaii, as did her sister. A couple of Australian players have played there over the years. Sexy. Four seasons. Yeah, Rachel Lack. Outside and low with that one. So three balls, two strikes. The pressure all back on Australia here. Adalas hits it down the line, gets through the infield. She's safely on first and another runner home. So well played. That was just the right play from Tori Vidalas. Again. You can see just how excited she is. That's textbook hitting when there's a runner on third base, not overpowering, just drilling that ball in between Parry and Titsacronis. Nothing that the infielders could do about that. Just brilliant hitting. So no outs in the second inning here. And two runs on the board. She grounds that one to left field. They're trying to catch the runner, stealing to second. And Porter tried her best there to stay in the field of play as she fielded that ball. Unfortunately, it just took her outside that foul ball line. Chelsea Gonzalez. Went for the sacrifice punt, unable to be caught there by Belinda White. Two strikes, though. Chelsea's grandparents came from Guadalajara. She's been with the Mexican team for four years now. Lives in California. That one rises into the mitt of Belinda White for a ball. Tony stepped up, encouraging her team. That's got to be counted as a swing. Ooh. Late umpire Goudreau, unsure, 
Mother Gonzalez went for that ball shot to first base umpire Mariana Prince, who said no, she didn't. So Gabby. count remains two and two. Helen Roberts there and Gabby Plain warming up in the next cage behind her. So two and two pitch now. And that is a swing and a strikeout. So nice comeback there from Kai Parnaby. Coming off three hits in succession. Lovely change of pace there. So the Aussies will be looking to get a, a nice infield ground ball here. Turn the double play through second. And get out of this with no further damage. The sacrifice part here is we get... No, they get the lead runner out. So Palacios there trying to advance that runner to second, but... It didn't come off. They've got Palacios though on first. Only one out. That's a great play by Belinda White. To be able to get out of her catching stance in all that gear, collect the ball and fire it over to Claire Warwick at shortstop. Just shows how athletic she is. Amanda Sanchez at bat. One of the Uni of Missouri's most consistent hitters. Over four years there, set single season career highs in 2018. So not long out of university. She transferred to play for the LSU Tigers in 2019 after the Missouri softball program was sanctioned for rule breaches over a player being ineligible. That doesn't happen in college sport much. <laughs> that one a little outside the zone. Collision with another player back in 2017 had Tommy John surgery on her non-throwing arm. It was fought away back into this team. Gets onto that one. Flies to the outfield. Is it deep? Is it deep? No, it's not. Lee Godfrey manages to get under it. Very important catch for Australia. But Mexico still leads 2-0. So Mexico is still leading 2 nothing. It's been a really tough tournament, hasn't it, for our Aussie spirit. Uh, they've only been able to score on a couple of occasions. Uh, they went down 8-1 uh, to Japan. They were able to get a, a close win uh, against Italy, and they uh, went down to Canada 7-1, and uh, then they went down in extra innings to the US as well. So they've got a runner on first uh, as we go to the bottom of the second. Uh, we'll take a break and come back uh, with more action from Yokohama. Yokohama Baseball Stadium. Attention! Lloyd's Auctions are holding a massive classic car online auction this weekend, including Australian, American and European classics, featuring Glenn Seaton's championship winning Ford Falcon EL, Russell Ingalls Castrol V8 Supercar, low kilometre HSV GDSR and more, all starting at $1 at Australia's greatest auction house. Bid now, also on offer, Ford Mustang Mach 1, Valiant Pacer, Shelby Fairmont, XP Falcon X Police, VL Walkinshaw Group A, Monaro's Jaguars, Porsche and Ferraris. Bid now on call now to put your classic car into our next record-breaking auction. How Powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game-changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility, while the high-back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer today. Purchase any 4 and 20 product from anywhere 4 and 20 is sold for an opportunity to win four PS5s. One for you and your three best mates. Together you'll go head to head in a game of Fortnite with your AFL Dream Team. Plus a 4 and 20 branded Sharon footy to be won daily. TNC supplies the FNT AFL game on.com.au. It's 318821. Retain receipts or wrappers. NSWT P slash 08986 ACT TP 21 slash 00450 SAT 21 slash 420. Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. Yen's nice. 
night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Tyre Power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. Uh, before 10 o'clock, we'll be going back to the pool for an aquatics update for city venue management. Rackley Swimming, your swim family. Uh, from first place to first medal, we are your swim family. Rackleyswimming.com.au. We'll catch up with again with Rob Woodhouse before history is made as the women's 1500 metre is run uh, for the first time. There's heats going at the moment, but it's heats four and five that we're interested in. Uh, our very own Maddie Goff and Kia Melverton in action there. So Rob Woodhouse will set the scene for us. Uh, pool side, um, and we'll join him momentarily. Um, Australia uh, currently at bat at the bottom of the second. Uh, one out, the count is three and two. Let's get back to Yokohama Baseball Stadium. Just slaps that one away. Fantastic battle here. Leah first played for Australia back in 2003. Plenty of experience brought to this arena. Escobedo being a bit fussy, as pitchers can be. Just making sure it's the, got the right seams. She knows how important this next pitch is to Leah Parry. And Parry with a swing and a miss. Safe on first. As Belinda White was just having a think about that one. So two out for Australia. There's Belinda White in the foreground there. Just having a look at second, but Palacios was well on top of that. And I do like that about how the Mexicans play their softball. You know, they're not afraid to throw the ball around. They're not afraid to peg runners off on, on bases if they, are, if they are leading off a bit too far. We see Leah Parry replacing Bill White as the runner on first base. We're getting close to the end of the inning, and Belinda, of course, is the catcher. So substitute runner there and Claire Warwick at bat. Just the one hit. But if they're going to get something out of this tournament... Australia needs to get these runners on base home. Another pause in play here. See Leah Parry. Be interested to see if Coach Lang Harrow puts a steal on, just looking to manufacture something here in the bottom of the second innings. He's certainly got some speed on the base. See the corners are right back in line with their bases. Not really a bunting opportunity here. Mr. Bito has been pitching in Japan since last year. COVID permitting, of course, says it really has improved the game. She's still only 28. Swing and a miss for Claire Warwick. That's a clear ball outside the zone. Warwick taking a long look at the dugout as she gets set for the one-two pitch with two out. Here yeah, Parry was going on that pitch. We saw Palacios standing up in her catching stance. someone will be dropping their ice cream to catch that but not this year, not here Escobedo strikes out Claire Warwick and Australia still trails 2-0 here at Yokohama Stadium Officeworks never get enough fluff about sales gimmicks because every single product uh, so 
We will come back uh, in just a moment and go back. Apologies, we were just a bit late coming uh, back through, just sorting out some stuff on the back end. Uh, you are listening to SEN's coverage of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics right around the country on the SEN network. So uh, we're going to head back to the pool very shortly, and I'll give you a, a score check in just a moment uh, of that must-win game between the Aussie spirit uh, up against Mexico. As we've spoken about a few times, it's a must-win for them if they're going to get into that bronze medal game uh, against Canada, and that stream is courtesy of Channel 7. You can stream every Olympic sport on 7 Plus and get to know our Aussie athletes on their road to Tokyo. Download the 7 Plus app to your smart TV, your mobile, or tablet to watch Tokyo 2020. So, we've spoken a couple of times about uh, history being made tonight. For the first time ever, the women's 1500 metres has been included in the Olympics. Uh, there's a few people that are eyeing off this, including the legend that is Katie Ledecky, um, who would be ever so keen to get that little piece uh, of history. And uh, Rob Woodhouse has been good enough to jump back on with us as the, uh, I think the, it'd be about heat two or three that's going around at the moment. Rob, hello again to you. Yeah, hello, Sam. It's, uh, you're right, it is heat three, actually. Uh, the 1500s, just like the 800s and the 400s, that's only the last two heats of the, uh, what we call a seeded heat. So the top 16 athletes are in the last two heats. So that's heats four and five. Uh, so where, where are we now? We're about it's almost 400 metres into heat three. So quite a way to go here. We don't expect uh, to see terribly much here. There's no sort of names here that we had slower entry times or anything like that. So all the action will be in heat four and heat five. And, of course, we've got Matty Goff, representing Australia in Heat 4, and Kia Melverton representing Australia in Heat 5. And uh, Matty Goss' main opposition is uh, an Italian called Simona Quad Quadarella, who is the world champion in this event. She's probably, uh, well, it's been unfair to say she's world champion because Ledecky missed that race, but Ledecky was quite ill towards the end of the world championships in 2019. So Quadrella did win that and is the current and reigning world champion. She's also the European champion. So Matty Goff's got a work cut out there against her and the American Erica Sullivan. And then we'll see, of course, uh, Katie Ledecky go for the second time tonight up against Kia Melverton in that final heat, heat five of the 1500. So who are we uh, out of the two that are, that are going to be swimming? Um, and I know we don't have a heap of form line uh, around this. So out of Kia and Maddie, who are you, uh, who have you, who would you, um, I suppose, who would you go in on? Well, it'd be great to see them both in the final. Uh, it's going to be quite tough. I mean, some of the, some of these ladies, they'll be, uh, they'll be going flat out today. Uh, the likes of uh, Ledecky and Quadrilla won't. They'll be doing all basically just what they need to do to qualify. But uh, Goff, uh, she held, she's a national record holder around 1546. Um, uh, to give you an idea of how dominant Kayla Ledecky is in this event, she uh, holds the world record at 1520. So that's a, a good 26 Ooh. seconds ahead of uh, Matty Goff, who's going in fifth in the world in this event. So, um, uh, it, But uh, Matty... Uh, she probably wanted to go flat out to make the final, but she'll still need a good solid swim. Uh, Melverton, her best time's around 15.56, about 10 seconds slower. As I said, she got, uh, she got seventh at the World Championships in 2019 in this event. Uh, she's also world champion herself in the 4 by 200 relay from 2019 as well. So she's got some good experience. But look, it's, it's the first time in the pool this week for these, for these women. And, um, they're going to, well, we've said this before, uh, in, in a couple of other sessions, they're going to have to go pretty hard, but also they haven't raced internationally for a long time. So, um, they have to be careful just to make sure that they finish top four in their respective heats. So, Rob, is this – obviously, this is the first time it's been uh, swum at the Olympics of 1,500 metres, but uh, has it been an event at, at World Championships? It has. It was a bit of a strange decision, to be honest, that uh, it, it got into the Olympics. Uh, they, they added this event uh, and the men's 800, um, and uh, traditionally it's always been the men's 1,500 and the women's 800. So those events, of course, are still in as well. So they've uh, added a few more distance events. I think that uh, one of the reasons being that um, uh, it seems to be a, uh, a trend among swimmers around the world to, to get towards more of the sprint events. The sprint 50s in each stroke, butterfly, backstroke and breaststroke, have been at world championship level for many, many years, for decades, in fact, um, uh, whereas they're not in the Olympics. It's only the 50-metre freestyle that's in the Olympics. And uh, I think the majority of the swimming uh, world really wanted those, those stroke 50s in the Olympics. 
Olympics instead of the distance events. But I think FINA, the governing body, thought, well, we need to encourage more people to, to do distance swimming. Uh, we have the 10-kilometre open water swim, and so we uh, we need to sort of have that sort of gap in between the two. And uh, so they brought these events in. It's certainly a um, a great opportunity for Ledecky, who is the dominant distance swimmer at the moment, of course, perhaps the greatest of all time, but in the men's events, particularly this men's 800 is a new event, uh, it's a wide open field as to um, as to who we see uh, will take that gold medal, really open actually. Jack McLaughlin who won the silver medal in um, in the 400 yesterday for Australia, he's a big chance in the 800 um, as is the, um, uh, the the winner of the 400 uh, Hawafui, so um, it's really open race, the men's 800 but I think the women's, this 1500 is probably geared towards uh, Ledecky and no one else. So I'm um, just looking at the, the the rankings leading in, and I think you mentioned that Maddie was ranked third, or her time ranks her third uh, in this event. You mentioned Katie Ledecky, and then uh, China's uh, Wang Jianxie. Am I am I close? That sounds good to me. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> absolutely correct. And she's only 19, actually. And look, she's only uh, Maddie Goff's only about um, a second behind Wang, so it's going to be quite a tight race there. Uh, Quadarella, I mentioned, she's the European champion and the reigning world champion. Her best time is 15:40. So, uh, if Maddie Goff, I, I give her a big. Ch- chance of getting amongst the medals. Uh, Kia Melton's going to have to improve a bit. As I said, I, I would it'd be fantastic to see both both these women into the final. Maddie Goff's to the age. Uh, she trains up the yards. Uh, Kia Melton's a 24 years old. It's a big experience with Kia as well. Both are great chance to make an Olympic final here tonight. So, Matty, uh, by the looks of it, was uh, fifth at her first World Championships in this event, um, the, the World Championships in South Korea, but her and Kia trained together. So, uh, I mean, it must be, I mean, we know the, the gruelling nature uh, of, of this, but it... You, you would you would speak to a lot of swimmers, and, and what do they say is the? I would imagine that it, the, the the physical side of this is one thing, but the mental side would be something quite different. Yeah, it's it's. I was never a big fan of swimming fifteen hundreds myself, to be honest. But the uh, <laughs> it's I found them a bit boring, but uh, a bit not mind numbing. But the um, look, they, these these women and, and the men in the distance events, uh, this is what they focus on. They do a lot of mileage in training and so forth. So it's grueling, yes, there's no doubt about that, but a sprint is uh, is grueling in a different way um, or an individual medley can be different in a, in a different way and a, and a tournament meter butterfly, for example, is uh, I think that's probably the most grueling event of all. But um, the, the, these athletes have the stamina, of course. Uh, they've also got some speed, but, um, you know, it's, it's uh, we're just watching this third heat now and we're about 1,000 uh, metres into the 1500 metres and it's well spread out pretty much uh, swimmers right across the whole pool now but it's really grueling event that um, yeah, they're, they're mentally attuned, they're, they're ready to go and they know exactly what they want to, they need to do, it's not just a slog every lap it's it's pacing, it's it's doing different paces throughout the race and picking up things and easing off and so on, so that's what they're doing now in these heats So Rob, when when it comes to, I'm always fascinated by the, those who swim the medley it's uh and and the training load that you would need to put in it always struck me as that if you're gonna if you're gonna go into a race that you've got to swim four different disciplines of then do you, are you doing four times the training in, in because of each of those events and you were bronze in eighty four um, at the L A games is is that true to, a, to in a sense. Not really. It's, um, you know, I guess you could argue you're doing, uh, what, a quarter of the training per stroke. But uh, look, the, the, the individual medley swimmers don't swim any more in terms of mileage, I don't think. And, and times have changed, of course, from the 80s. There, uh, there's a lot less mileage done across all the all the disciplines, really. It's more, they're more attuned to sports science and, uh, and, and rest and, and things like that. Uh, whereas we just have to slog out unfortunately. But um, uh, individual medley, I, I saw it as a benefit to, to being an individual medley swimmer because you had so much more variety in your training. You weren't just swimming up and down doing breaststroke, for example, or, or, or butterfly. It was a whole uh, whole variety of different strokes, a whole variety of different pacing, different drills you could do because uh, stroke technique is so important. So you, you know, the variety in the training was the, um, uh, I, I guess, the uh, uh, what, what, what drew me to the individual medley. And maybe the fact that I wasn't good at any one particular stroke. <laughs> is that the uh, jack of all trades, master of none scenario? Is <laughs> Pretty it? much. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. The utility player, that's it. 
And uh, for those that do, uh, may not be aware, and, and we're obviously waiting uh, for the uh, for the swimmers, uh, including Matty Goff, to, to get out and uh, get on the blocks for, for this heat uh, four of the women's 1,500 metres. Our uh, aquatics update for city venue management, Rackley Swimming, your swim family, uh, for the first splash to first medal. You, we are your swim family, Rackley, rackleyswimming.com.au. Um, those who might not know, uh, your family connection to Emma McKeon uh, as an uncle, do you get sought out for advice? Although your sister Susie was an AIS holder as well, so uh, is very uh, accomplished to be able to uh, manage any questions that needed to be asked. But do you have much of any involvement with Emma? No, not at all, other than family support like the like yep. the rest of her family. It's, um, uh, I do know she's quite pleased to have me here. Uh, obviously, none of the athletes have their families here, so yep. um, she, she does have at least one family member here. I'm sure she'd prefer that to be her mum and dad and a sister and a brother, but <laughs> um, uh, it, look, it's, it is a really tight-knit family, and the support's there. Her, her dad, Ron, uh, and mum, Susie, obviously, were brilliant swimmers themselves, and Ron's a, a, a well-established coach, so uh, there's all of that, but look, I think that um, all the swimming side and the and the, the tips and the advice and all that sort of stuff um, is well is well left with um, her own support team, her coaches, her um, uh, trainers and physios and and, and, and teammates, um, and and that's where she's learned most of her um, her swimming. I'd, I'd be very surprised if uh, there was much swimming talk that went on in the, around the family breakfast table. Um, um, during the formative teenage years between Emma and David and their mum and dad. Have you had a chance to catch up? Obviously, gold in the 4 by 100 metre women's um, yesterday and then today a bronze in the in the 100 metres butterfly. Have you guys had a chance to have a fist bump? No, no fist bumps. Um, <laughs> I, I could probably go down to the mix zone and uh, and, and, and see her, but um, look, she's she's uh, like, like Ariane. Emma's got a, a huge program and it's all about... Uh, recovery between the events so you know um standing around for five minutes talking to her uncle's probably not high on the list of priorities to be <laughs> honest but uh, we, we swapped a couple of messages but that's about it and um she knows i'm here she's waved a couple of times uh, when she's marched out or after the two medal ceremonies and so on so that's been lovely uh it's, it's fantastic to be here to support them and and um you know i really do feel for uh, for all the families that, you know, that can't be here uh it's fantastic to see isn't it the the, the, the footage and, and listen to uh, for example uh Barney's parents um, on radio and, and listen to the, the, the pure joy that they're getting from watching their daughter win gold and, and these other athletes perform. They can't be here. They're here in spirit and they're, uh, they're celebrating long and hard uh, wherever they are around Australia, that's for sure. How is energy being created in the Aquatic Centre, Rob? I mean, we're so used to... Because swimming is one of the marquee events at every Olympics. How is energy and atmosphere being created when there's no crowds allowed? Yeah, it's a great question, and uh, I was listening to some of Adam Peaty's interviews. Adam um, has not lost a race in the 100 breaststroke in eight years now and defended his Olympic title this morning in the 100 breaststroke and in dominant fashion, and, and, and listening to him after his race, he said it was really, really difficult to create that atmosphere and feel he doesn't feel like it's an Olympics. Uh, he said the last 30 metres of his race, all he was channelling was uh, everything he'd sacrificed over these last five years, but particularly the last 12 months um, in terms of time away from his family. He's got a young boy now and things like that. So he used that and uh, used, used uh, channeled some anger out of all of that, and uh, that's how he created his own atmosphere. The, the, the teams are in the stands. They're, they're cheering, but you know, we're talking about a few hundred people, not, uh, not the... the, the 10, 12,000 that were expected in a packed stadium. Um, and I guess just today, as a segue to that, you've really got to feel sorry for the, for the Japanese team members and the, and the gold medal from Yui Hashi on the first night in the yep. 400 individual medley was, was very, very special to, because all of these athletes were expecting to compete in front of their home crowd. And, uh, and, and, and until 18 months ago, that was, was going to happen. And that, that dream was, was taken away from them. Um, so not only did they have to wait like the rest of the world, but they've come back to an empty Stadium, their families are. There's a state of emergency here. They they probably all had tickets, I'm sure, yep. and uh, they're all sitting at home. They may as well be somewhere else in the world because they can't go out and celebrate. They can't do anything. So it's been really tough for the Japanese team members. That's for sure. You, you mentioned uh, British champion Adam Peaty. Is this the interview that we're not allowed to play uh, on here because of the uh, expletive-ridden <laughs> nature of it? He dropped the magic about what was it four or five times? I think. 
I think there was a couple of times on BBC, <laughs> and BBC loved that sort of stuff, as yep. we know. But uh, it's funny, you know. I've uh, I've actually seen an edited version now, and they've um, they've managed to edit out uh, a, a couple of seconds. Um, I actually spoke to Adam this afternoon. He called me. Um, I, I work with Adam, so that's that's the link. But um, yes. I spoke to him, and 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 I did ask him about that. He said he said, yeah, I felt a little bit bad. But he said I was just so emotional, um, and uh, it just came out. So um, you know, I, I guess when he's when he's uh, the first British man ever to defend an Olympic swimming title uh, yeah. it's, it's pretty special so I, I think BBC sort of uh, weren't too angry they, they they got pretty good viewing figures by the sound of it even at three o'clock in the morning 100 meter breaststroke uh, it was a it was a phenomenal swim um, and he's a little bit rough around the edges even you know he's, he's, he's got the tattoos he's got the shape I, I was actually surprised when he took his swimming cap off and he's got a shaved head underneath as a man that uh, is suitably uh, as and and in sympathy with him for the follically challenged nature of his bonds I thought do you need to have the cap on <laughs> well I think he's so used he's swum with a cap his whole life, his whole career. So uh, I think that's the natural thing to do. You, you, in fact, you, you very rarely see even a bald swimmer swimming without a cap these days. But yeah, um, I don't think he's follically challenged, but he's just had a very, very close uh, crew cut for quite a while Ooh, now. Yeah. He, he had the tash all the way through to, uh, and a pretty poor one at that, all the way through <laughs> to the semi final. But he got rid of that one yesterday. We've got Matty Goff just uh, stepping up onto the blocks now, about to start this heat four. So uh, this is the first chance to see Matty Goff in the Olympic arena. And I think the nerves will be flowing as she's. Um, as She's crouching down for the start here. We'll come and check in with you after the uh, after the heat, and we'll see how this pans out. We'll join uh, Channel Seven now, Rob. Thank you, mate. All right, Matty Goff uh, in lane five, and they're about to go. Thank you, Mark. Matty Goff in lane five here. She's the second fastest this year behind Katie Ledecky. Ledecky's best time of the year, 15.40.5. Matty Goff with a 15.46.13, so just a little under six seconds behind the best performer this year, Katie Ledecky. And, of course, Ledecky is the best performed of all time. She's the world record holder. In 15.20.64. So it's, it's, it is a, at the moment, it is a 20-something second difference um, between herself and, and Matty Goff. But, mind you, it's also a 20-second difference between her and the rest of the world. First time that this event has been competed in at Olympic level for the women. It's been a men's event for some time, obviously, and on the men's program there's been no 800, but that's been added here. So the numbers evening out for Katie Ledecky, certainly. There was a temptation, I guess, to drop this from the program as she focused on the 200s for a period there, but then she knows that this is money in the bank, an Olympic gold in the bank for her. She really is in a class of her own. She is. In these, in these distance events, it, it's difficult to see who will be able to come through as we, we cheer on Maddie Goff in this race. Um, you know, who, who's going to be able to take it to her in the longer events? Um, we know that she'll come up against Ariane Sittens in the 800 freestyle. Um, Ariane not swimming the 1500, and I think wisely um, will focus more on the 200. But I, I feel as though uh, that Katie Ledecky's strength is in the longer events and will go through them and, and win them. Um, it will be toughest um, for Arnie to come up in that 800 against uh, Katie Ledecky at any competition. Um, I think she's got these ones covered. The reason these were introduced was to really clearly define what is a sprint program, what is a middle distance program, and what is a long distance program within the swimming schedule. Get pitch Nikova, the Russian Olympic Committee athlete, as they come into the 200 with just a slight lead. Lane four is Simona Quadrella. She's the world champion. She's got some good results at this level, obviously, world champion. And first time at the Olympic Games, uh, just back in third spot. And Erica Sullivan of the United States in lane three. Well, Basil, we've got a little sneak peek here on our screen. Unfortunately, not on the screens at home, but just seeing um, Katie Ledecky in the call room. Really focused, almost staring off into space. So whether she's just composing herself for her upcoming swim, maybe just trying to get in some quick recovery before a big race. So Potterella in lane four was probably the favourite coming in, world champion. She's got the third fastest time this year, 13 48 81. And Maddie Goff is going OK. She's probably in sixth spot at the moment. Plenty of time, early stages that just swum through 250. It'll be the 300-metre mark when they touch the wall at the end they're heading to. 
First in the 1500 free at selection trials. The family moved to the Gold Coast in 2017 when she was 16 to help her swimming career. It's a story that's very familiar to us, isn't it? What a huge sacrifice it is by all of the family when there's a swimmer capable of competing at this level. It really has to be a family decision often. Are we all in? Are we all in for our uh, offspring? And, and it's a big sacrifice to make, especially for parents if they are following a talented child and, and wanting the best for them. It is all in. And it is such a big commitment and it's so good of them to do that. I also think, you know, when we've spoken about pressure on an individual and what there is, there's, there's a certain element of pressure that comes with that. Um, is that with the sacrifices that other people are prepared to make for your career, or your chance, or your possibility of being able to fulfil your uh, your dream, your goals, and and that's what happens as well. So I think the Titmus family have managed this. Um, extremely well uh, and you know they've all been behind her her best supporters um, and given that her mum's quite competitive maybe she should be swimming as well <laughs> <laughs> would she like to do the 1500 freestyle probably not perhaps not <laughs> she could do it i think she could do a pretty good 200 though yeah especially if she's competitive so 400 down there, coming down to the 450 metre mark. And Maddie Goff just off the pace. You can see her in lane five. It did just a moment ago, the yellow cap. Not right out of it, and there's plenty of time in this one. But in front now, the Italian, Quattarella, the world champion. Katie Ledecky, the Pan Pax champion. Quattarella won the FINA World Championship in Guangzhou 2019. And this year, she's the European champion. Quattarella is probably one of the very few tough opponents for Ledecky in this event. She has a very carefree nature. She's very free-spirited, and the coach calls her spontaneous and full of life. And so she never really has a race plan when she comes up against someone like Katie Ledecky. She's pretty free-form. She doesn't have anything set in stone. She just adjusts her pace to whatever is in front of her. And it's really interesting that just a very different technique for something like this, whereas Katie Ledeck is very focused, she usually has a plan in place and she really plays her cards and really paces it out but Simona Quattarella is just really pretty free form. And she's going okay out in front at the moment. Kipich Nova of Russia in uh, a battle for the lead as well and Erica Sullivan from the United States. They're our one, two and three as they go through the 550 metres and the Australian Maddie Goff in lane five, sitting in sixth spot at the moment. So 5.50 gone. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. Women's 1500 freestyle, fourth heat. Katie Ledecky and Australia's Kia Melvinson up in the fifth and final heat very soon. So not even halfway through yet, and uh, we will rejoin that uh, particular swim after the broadcast Channel 7 get back from their break. So let's just check in now. Australia 4-0 down at Yokohama Baseball Stadium. It's not looking good uh, against Mexico at the minute. There's still plenty of softball to play, uh, but let's drop in on that action. Yeah, that one's outside for a ball. Still only one out for Mexico. Runner on first. That one down the line. Foul ball. Lovely call there by the, you could see from the third base umpire. Steptoe warming up. Coach Lang Harrow, Harrow realising he might need to go deep into his bullpen here tonight, really, just to change things up in case this scoreline blows out any further. That's a ball. Two and two now. Stacey Porter rallying the troops to try and stop the rot here. But they must score when they get their turn. The Australians have got a big lead to overhaul here. That one just sliced away through the infield.
And again, Mexico managing to get runners on base. Well, they're just on fire with their bats here tonight. They've already had six hits so far in this game. In that change of pace, Palacios not looking to do too much. Just punching it through the infield. So there it is, runners on first and second for Mexico. Only one out, and Amanda Sanchez at bat. One of the University of Missouri's most consistent hitters over four years, set single season career highs in 2018. As I said, the NCAA form of these Mexican players in recent years has been very strong. They're not a very old team, relatively young. You're exactly right, and there's still a chance for 2028 um, if they keep that unit together. And, and look, and they do acknowledge that, you know, they, they do get a bit of flack. Um, you know, often they're referred to as Team USA's alternate team, Team B USA. But they're all incredibly proud of their Mexican heritage. They acknowledge that their parents and their grandparents made a big decision to move from Mexico to the United States to give them a better life. Uh, so very proud to be wearing the, uh, the Mexican uniform here at the Olympic Games. And Sanchez, the first Olympian from LSU's softball program. So they'd be pretty happy about that. They've had a lot of support from their collegiate fans. So Gabby will be looking to get a nice ground ball to her middle infielders to turn that double to second base and then over to one to get out of the Sanchez leaves for a ball. Another ball from Gabby Plain. Great stop there behind the plate by Belinda White. If that ball had have got past her or even a little bit further out of her reach, those runners would have moved to second and third. And that one again, just outside the zone. So three balls here. Could be loaded bases if she doesn't Tighten things up here, Gabby Plain. Only one strike. And that's in the zone. Two strikes. Big pitch here for Gabby Plain. Full count, two runners on. And ground ball, missed by Plane, missed as well in the field by Parry. And it wasn't in shot there, but it looks like we've got loaded bases again. A great diving play there by Leah Parry on her backhand. So loaded bases uh, at the top of the fourth uh, at the moment. Things going from bad to worse uh, for our Aussie spirit. 4-0 at the moment. Mexico over Australia. Still plenty of softball to go, but there's just one out and bases are loaded. We're getting to the final stages of this heat four of the women's 1,500 metres. Maddie Goff sitting uh, probably about uh, a third of a pool length back from the leader in fourth. Let's rejoin the action. Uh so what is the plan for Mexico? 400 metres to go. Um, she, she does want to move up. She wants to have a good time to give herself that shot to be able to make it into what will be the top eight for the final of this event. And the final would usually be the next day, and so tomorrow morning, but it isn't in the 1500. It is actually on Wednesday morning uh, for this particular final. It's interesting watching Quadarella. She's really going around the lane instead of going up and down the black line. And this is where they slip into their normality of training. This is how they train all the time, and it's just something that they're used to. It can waste a little bit of time if you add up just a fraction of a second each lap that you're going around and not up and down. It can really add up over 1,500 metres, and it's hard to get out of that practice that you practice every single day, round and round the lane to go up and down the middle. So 
it's those fraction of a second here and there that can make a huge difference. So less than 300 metres to swim now for the leaders. And Maddie Goff's done a, a good job. She's kept pace with them. Still about 20 metres behind our leaders, but clearly in fourth position. Lane one, Tuncel of Turkey is probably back in fifth. So let's see where she can stay. Can she make any ground? The Russian athlete is in third spot at the moment. And the American, Erica Sullivan, 20 years of age from the United States. She lives in Las Vegas. It's her hometown in Nevada. She grew up idolizing Katie Ledecky herself and certainly has been a big inspiration to her journey. 200 meters to swim. And she's got a body length and a half now on the world champion, Simona Potterella. on from Goff now. Kerr Kichnikova in lane six. She's also starting to make a little bit of ground on Potterella and Sullivan. So we might still get an interesting finish here. 13.50 done. 150 to go. What a great view. We're riding with them just above their head. One of the great benefits of the technology that we've got here in Tokyo to be able to bring you these amazing pictures and underneath the water as well. Yeah, on, on particular images, I've been asked by a few people, if you, you look at the, the other end of the pool, what we call the 50 metre end of the pool, um, it's, there's uh, screens across each of each of the lanes, and um, you know people have got their cameras or whatever else. They're actually a digital lap counter for each of the athletes, so they know how much further they have to go. Uh, so that will be in place for the 800 and the 1500s at these Olympics. So we should get a look at them now, actually, in the overhead shot. And you'll be able to see the American Erica Sullivan get a look at, there they are now. So Sullivan, there they are from under the water. So that's very handy, isn't it? In the old days, the officials would lean over with a lap counter. Yeah, it was it was a physical lap <laughs> counter that they used to put into the water that they would show how many laps you have. But of course, it's the bell that you want to hear in this race. It means that there's 100 metres to go or two laps to go. And if you've got anything left to spare, this is where you, you put it in to be able to get the performance. And now less than 50 metres to go. So Erica Sullivan, it's been a very good job by the American. We'll see another very prominent American in the next one. Sullivan's going to win this one. Potterella kept her honest all the way. And Kerpichnikova, the Russian in third spot. Matty Goff on her. Olympic debut comes in and touches fourth. Fourth in the fourth heat of the women's 1500 freestyle. 16.02.26 was the time which won the previous heat, so this one quite a bit faster. And at the moment, Matty Goff is going to be sitting in an OK position, but of course, remembering we've got another one still to come. So, uh, Matty Goff coming in in fourth position. We'll go back to Rob Woodhouse and just find out his views on that. Uh, ranked third coming in uh, to this Olympics in this event was Matty Goff. And what did you make of it, Rob? But she gave up a lot of ground early, made some back late, but has she done enough? I'm not sure she has, actually. I, um, she's going to have a nervous wait now. She's, she's fourth fastest overall for those first four heats because the first three weren't seated, but checking the times, no one was faster than uh, Maddie's time there finishing fourth. So she's sitting fourth as we sit, but uh, it could be a race between uh, Melbourton and Goff for that eighth position um, if, if it goes on seedings. And um, Maddie Goff's time, 15.56, was around about the mark of uh, Melbourton's best time. So uh, Melbourton will know what she needs to do. She's got to get uh, top four. Uh, and um, or top five and get under under Matty Goff's time. So that's that's sort of going to be her goal, I imagine. Uh, but for the ones out front, Ledecky, Kohler and, and Wang, it's probably going to be an easier time for them. But Melbourne's got some work to do, and uh, Matty Goff's got a pretty nervous wait, I think. All right, well, let's uh, – we'll take the start of uh, this la this heat five of the 1500. We'll have a chat to you and the culmination of that, Rob. Okay. 
So we'll head back to the pool in just a moment as we continue to go around the grounds for Beaumont Tiles. Shop Beaumont Tiles, tile.com.au. Beaumont Tiles are keeping your Renault dreams alive. Shop online at tile.com.au. SEN's coverage of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, thanks to Mate, award-winning Aussie service mobile plans for $20 and for zero online accounting to help you do business but better. Uh, as we jump around on the night session, beautiful save, a fantastic save with bases loaded. They needed two outs Australia. Bases were loaded for Mexico uh, at the top of the fourth uh, and they were able to get them away and get them out. So a big opportunity went begging there for Mexico. Uh, Australia at the moment at the, uh, at the bottom of the fourth uh, have their first out. So we will rejoin that action in just a moment as well. The night sessions on SEN brought to you by Tyre Power. Tyre Power, your trusted Tyre experts. Love to hear from you, 0433 98 11 16. Any thoughts you've got on tonight's proceedings? And I've been asking the question too, the event that you think will be the next Hearts and Minds moments. We had one today with Ariane Titmus. I'll replay that full race for you before we finish up at midnight uh, and play the chat that uh, Jared had with her father, Shane. And if we've got time, another Shane, Shane, uh, sorry, Steve, her father, Steve. And if we've got time, Shane Gould, the conversation I had with her, she was the last woman to win the 400 metre freestyle at an Olympics back in 1972. But let's join the early stage of this heat five uh, in the women's 1500 metres. Nothing away. As we it's just watch Kia Melbourne in this race and Katie Ledecky obviously leading this from the, the get go, is for her to keep up with Delfina P- um, Pinion and Taylor. And it's just for her to have a shot at being able to get through to this final. And it's going off a swimmer that slightly faster than what you are and then being able to deliver a little bit more when it comes into those closing stages of the race. I imagine it would be very challenging for someone like Ledecky in a longer event, particularly if you are so good, to not be tempted to drop back into the speed of the heat that it is because you could be trapped in maybe a heat that's going a little bit slower. So it really is Katie Ledecky out there racing herself, although she is being challenged by lane five, Wayne Jianji. It, it, it is challenging to get the pacing right. Um, if you're just ever so slightly off it, you just say each 100 you're a second off, off what you think you're doing, and it's because of how other people are performing in the race. You know, we're, we're talking about 15 seconds of difference in this 1500, which can be all the difference in whether or not you're going to make the final. Um, and it can impact on other athletes as well, not just the Ledecky. It can impact on the athletes that are just trying to qualify comfortably. Now, someone like Ledecky has so much experience in the distance events that it shouldn't be a problem. She knows that she's in front. She'll know about where she's at um, because of her experience but some of the other athletes where they may be a little bit younger they haven't swum this race all that often they may not know what pace they're going at and accidentally swim a little bit too comfortably even though they think they're going at the right pace it's so important just to be racing your own race with how you feel and really not get caught up in what everyone else in that race is doing and it's just so evident for me, as you just said then, just in a longer race like this, you really can't get caught up. And it only has to be a fraction of a second and it adds up over 1,500 metres can be the difference between sitting in the stands tomorrow morning watching this in the final or being part of it. Heading for the 350 metre mark and Kim Elverton in fifth spot at the moment. It's Ledecky first, Wang of China second, Kohler of Germany third and Melbourne back in fifth spot. So what about this then? We know how fast the swimmer she is, how much stamina she has. This, I assume, is all about perfect balance of the head. Well, I guess she's perfectly balanced as well as you'd say, Baz. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do different tricks like this um, in swimming. There's one that I, 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 I have done this one. There's one that you have to do in backstroke as well. And you told... Um, that you have to imagine that it's acid that's in the cup as well. Oh, which you're, is pretty horrible. Your coach was mean. My, well, I have had some mean coaches <laughs> and some mean good coaches, mean bad coaches too. But um, once they actually they tricked us <laughs> and instead of having water in it, they actually put lemonade. So, oh. you, so just to jump in, the 
vision that they were showing on Channel 7 is Katie Ledecky swimming 50 metres with a cup of milk on her head and not spilling a drop, which is absolutely extraordinary. Uh, so about four and a half minutes in at the moment, and Ledecky uh, has the lead by about half a body length. And uh, uh, our Kia Melvin is uh, in a, back in about fifth spot, uh, about a third of a pool length behind. So uh, I want to keep going uh, around the grounds uh, in uh, as we work through because the uh, softball is a, uh, is a dire situation sort of unfolding at the moment. Two outs in the count, 2-2. Two, two. They desperately need runs Australia and runs have been hard to come by uh, for them throughout the whole tournament. So we might drop back in on that and then rejoin uh, the swimming and we'll speak to Rob Woodhouse at the culmination of uh, this heat uh, and we'll wrap up the night with him for Thai Power. Winning service, winning price. Uh, Can Star Blues first place getter, award winner for service again. Uh, that's Thai Power. We'll go through the medal tally as well for Rebel Sports. Sports stream start at Rebel. Rebelsports.com.au uh, uh, But I just want to get back to the Yokohama Baseball Stadium and uh, get the latest action there. Fleet caught in the mesh but she's okay. And she can't afford to have a smile because they are in a commanding position, Mexico and Australia running out of opportunities to get back into it. Escobedo strikes out McManus, three out, she's done it again. And Australia with no result in their fourth inning, so we'll go to the top of the fifth with Mexico still leading 4-0. Yeah, not going well for Australia there, as we've spoken about. And this is a really interesting situation for them too. Stacey Porter, the captain, is the only player in the Aussie spirit to has been to an Olympics. This is her third Olympics. And, of course, softball won't be uh, at the 2024 Olympics uh, in France. So this is really the last chance, maybe ever, uh, depending on if it's ever brought back, for Australia to medal. So it's a huge game, this, with uh, massive, um, ramifications. So four nil down at the moment as we go to the top of the fifth, top of the fifth. There, um, I want to just update you on the medal tally, um, which I'll do in just a moment. But just some of the results uh, today, and a couple of other things that are making news um, in the basketball. NBA star Luka Doncic, Doncic plays for the Dallas Mavericks. Um, he got Slovenia. Um, he got um, – sorry, I'm just uh, – he got Slovenia into the Olympic Games and they've never actually been a basketballing powerhouse. Um, the most points ever scored in an Olympic Games was in 1988 in a basketball game by uh, Oscar Schmidt from Brazil. He scored 55 points uh, in a game against Tokyo. Um Luka Doncic managed to uh, put 48 points on the board uh, this evening in uh, that game, sorry, um, that game against Argentina. So Luka Doncic, the second highest points ever scored in a basketball game in Olympic history tonight. Uh, and the stat I love, this from having a look at Fox Sports at the moment, was he scored more points in his Olympic debut than the entire Team USA lineup put together last night. That's the starting lineup. So the starting five for Team USA last night who lost their game against France, Luka Doncic scored more points than them combined. Uh, and the second highest ever points scored in an Olympics. Uh, the other story doing the rounds at the moment, um, and there's a few little bits of controversy that come through, and this is part of, uh, I suppose, every Olympic Games, but the the knockout of um, the knockout of Julian Wilson in the surfing um, hasn't gone down particularly well. Um, given that um, there was actually a protest lobbed, uh, lodged by Julian Wilson, which was dismissed by the surfing uh, officials after he was knocked out um, in round three of the heats by uh, Gabriel Medina, who's currently leading uh, the rankings in the World Surfing League. Um, the Aussie camp launched a protest saying that they had footage of Medina going out of bounds during one of his scoring waves, but they shot that down saying that the interpretation of the rule was to say that you risked not having the wave scored if you ventured out. If the judges couldn't see it properly, then you wouldn't get scored on it if you'd gone outside the bounds, but the judges could see it. Um, that very much frustrated 
Julian Wilson. Um, he had said earlier too that he felt his last wave of the heat, he had an aerial with 30 seconds to go. He thought that was worth more than the 6.83 that the judges gave it. Um, in his words, he said it was a set wave, doubled up, a critical section, me watching Medina and Natalo getting massive scores for those all year, I thought it was significantly better than anything else I did, but it only turned out marginally better. So I don't know how that worked. Um, it was an m- incredible heat given it, it could have ended up being a final given the calibre uh, of the surfers in it. Two of the world's surfing, two of world surfing's premier aerialists and they put on a real show. Um, Medina going to the air really early and he went there a lot. He scored 7.5 with his first wave of the heat before repeatedly failing on his next attempts and only really got up late uh, in that. But this was Julian Wilson uh, after the heat, after bowing out uh, of Olympic contention. You announced recently that you're stepping back from surfing. What's next for you? Yeah, time with my family. Um, I won't be travelling outside of Australia for a while. Um, just be there for my wife and my kids and um, surf back home in Australia and um, continue to do what I love. But, yeah, I need to take a break. It's it's not um, the easiest time to spend to be uh, separated from the family. and. Not sure when I'll be able to travel with the family again, so I'll just wait and see where the dust settles and maybe one day I'll come back when the family's able to travel with me. So not the ideal way for um, one of our greats to to go out from a surfing point of view. He's he's much loved Julian Wilson. I mean, we all remember um, when Mick Fanning was attacked by the shark... um, that uh, in South Africa that he turned around and went back to try and help him. Um, it was the ultimate display of mateship and it was every bit uh, as an Australian, every bit as Australian as you could get. Um, he was happy to put himself at risk to try and help out his mate and he's an incredibly good surfer as well. He's won three titles uh, in, in at various events around the world in surfing. So um, hopefully it's not the last we see of, of Julian Wilson. Uh, we're going to drop back in on Heat 5, the women's 1,500 metres. Katie Ledecky's got about a four body length lead uh, at the moment and there's probably about five minutes left to swim. Uh, so let's take that in. Is ranked lower than Aussie Maddie Goff, who does hold the national record. She is in a faster heat, so she does have that luxury that hopefully the speed and the pace of this set of this final heat can lift her as well. So Kia Melverton can really be inspired in this final heat by someone like Katie Ledecky, who will be lifting the pace and making this a nice quick heat. 1150 metres swum so when she hits the wall Katie Ledecky she'll have 300 metres to go and well that that's got to be a good feeling now with all of the work that she's done today and still got to come big final in the 200 freestyle tomorrow up against Darian tip us a quick word on that one Thorpe as you as you think forward and project forward so it's semi-final tomorrow morning um, up against Ariane Titmus uh, and it, it look Ariana, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, she looked emotionally a little bit drained today, which is understandable, becoming the first time Olympic champion. Katie Ledecky will be up against her again tomorrow, uh, and then we'll look for that final the following day. But she also, Katie Ledecky is going to have the final of this particular race in 1500 as well. I think over the shorter distance, uh, Ariane Titmus has Katie Ledecky covered. Um, her 200 fastest in the world this year. The 400 was fastest in the world this year. And I think that that can continue, but the competition for Ariane may come from different places and it may not be just Katie Ledecky. And there's certainly more rivals in the 200, that's for sure. So the 400, we knew it was between Ledecky and Titmus, but it's a lot more wide open, the 200. That's still ahead, semi-finals tomorrow. You'll see them live around the country on seven. Katie Ledecky now with just 200 metres, in fact, less than 200 metres to swim. Wang of China has stayed in that second position for the majority of this race. Sarah Kohler of Germany, lane three is in third. Anya Kessely, the 19-year-old from Hungary, lane two in fourth spot. And Kia Melberton, after swimming up on the shoulder of Kessely, albeit a few lanes apart, 
has just seen that uh, advantage drop away. She was ever so slightly in the lead there for a moment a couple of laps ago, but it's, it's got away from her again. With Kia Milverton, she might be lucky enough that this heat is fast, fast enough, even though she's sitting in fifth position, that it might be faster than the heat before that she has enough positions to move into. So Erica Sullivan of the USA in the heat before, 15.46.67 was her winning time. Third place is sitting at 15.50.22. So so long as she can get in within those times, she might be in with a chance for the final. I heard the bell. I love, love hearing the bell. Best town in the 1500 for all of these competitors. Uh, they know that they've only got two laps to go, 100 metres. Last 100. So still Katie Ledecky, the great American. Wang of China in second spot. Third is Cola Flame, three for her. Fourth is Anya Kessely. And fifth still Kia Melbourton. Let's see if she can make any ground. Last turn for Ledecky. What a huge day it's been. Still a lot of work to come on this Olympic program. Legs just kicking in a little bit. Nothing spectacular. Just a little bit. There's a. a it's just a, a two-bit keep, keeping stroke balance. Breathing to one size. Traditional for Katie Ledecky. She comes through with 25 metres to go. The time's going to be around 15.35, 15.36. Uh, faster. Yep, she's from faster than what anyone else in the world ever been able to do. 15.35.35. And that makes it the eighth fastest time of all time. And it happens to be an Olympic record because this is a new event. Exactly. Um, so a worthy a worthy recipient of having the Olympic record. Great finish here Melbourne from Melbourne. In, she yep. will pick up that All spot. the way, didn't she? So she was never dead on that one. Kept it alive. And then the sprint came down the last 50 metres and gets into fourth spot. So let's hope that that is going to be enough. Obviously significantly faster this last heat. Kia Melvinson's time, 15.58.96. Uh, 15.56.81, I think it was. So there we go. Uh, let's get back to Rob Woodhouse, who's been brilliant for us uh, all day and uh, all night. Uh, Rob, um, what do we, how do we, I suppose, surmise and assess those two swims? Um, we had Maddie Goff before, who uh, was fourth fastest going in. Where does that sit her now? I'm sure you're just rolling through the calculations in your head. Did did and did Kia do enough? Yes, they both did enough. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, they qualified seventh and eighth, so Maddie Goff will be in lane one of the final on Wednesday morning, and Kia Melverton, well done to her. Just off her personal best time as well, 15.58, she'll be in lane eight. So uh, we've already seen one gold medal from lane eight. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to see another one in this 1500 <laughs> with, with Ledecky there. Just a word on Ledecky, um, her 800 split. I, I thought she would just cruise this, but maybe she doesn't know the, know the term cruising, but her 800-metre split would have won the silver medal at the 800 in the Rio Olympics. That's how fast it was. She was absolutely motoring. Maybe slow for her, but um, uh, as Thorpey said in that commentary, no one's ever done faster than what she's just done tonight. She, you know, she's won it by six seconds. So she's the red hot favourite. But fantastic to see Kia Melverton and Maddie Goff into that final. Yeah, absolutely. So as we wrap up tonight, we work our way through the heats uh, that we've seen. Um, Maddie Wilson uh, is through to the final uh, or through to the semi uh, of the uh, women's 200 metre freestyle. Yes, good swim by Maddie and uh, obviously Arnie Titmus, Timmis as well. But the uh, uh, great to see them both in the semis and, and that'll, that'll, give, that'll be a good confidence booster for Maddie to get uh, a good solid time, 155 high into the semi finals. And Ariane Titmus, as well as you mentioned, is through. Unfortunately, it wasn't a, a great night for our. Um, our men's butterflies in the 200 metre uh, butterfly, David Morgan, who apparently did an interview not long after that and just said he felt like he dropped dead. And uh, I think he was in a fair bit of distress. And you picked that from the moment that the race finished. Uh, so he wasn't in a great way when uh, that race ended. No, there's got to be something up because he was sensational at the uh, trials of only five weeks. So to come here and swim 2 double O, there's, there's certainly something amiss there. And he, he is a a really tough competitor, so uh, uh, he wouldn't um, he wouldn't uh, swim that badly for without reason. Uh, and Matty Temple, um, he, unfortunately, not through for him either. 
Yeah, probably not a big surprise. Um, we spoke about it earlier, the hundreds more for Matt Temple and, and the relay. So uh, uh, he's got the speed. We saw that from the relay this morning, and um, he'll be uh, he'll be right up there for the in, in middle contention for the 100 butterfly later in the week. Uh, and then that was uh, what we, where we finished up with the 1,500 metres for the women. So uh, Maddie Goff, as you mentioned, will be in lane one for the final on Wednesday and Kia Melverton will be in lane eight. So uh, you've got to be in it to win it, uh, as the old cliche goes, and uh, they certainly are. And um, I reckon, we, are you, given Maddie was ranked third coming into this, she's in now. Um, is there something big maybe uh, around the corner for her? Well, you never know. It's just, she certainly didn't look too comfortable at first 800. The field, uh, the first three got away from her really easily, the first 800 metres. But um, if that was the blowout she needed, the first swim, and then maybe the nerves got to her, something I don't know. But look, it wasn't a bad swim. She's into an Olympic final, which is incredible. Uh, but she's going to want to, she's certainly going to want to um, improve a lot. She's going to probably have to improve about one second per 100 metres to get into medal contention. What are you looking forward to tomorrow before we let you go, Rob? Um, we've got the women's 100-metre backstroke final, the men's 100-metre backstroke uh, final as well. The, um, and we're, we're in with a chance uh, with uh, swimmers in, in both of those. Um, what do you, where do you think that medals can come from for us tomorrow? Well, it's uh, yeah, Kaylee McEwen's uh, obviously the, I wouldn't say red hot favourite. There's there's three three women, Kaylee being one of them. She is the world record holder, but Reagan Smith was the world record holder, and as Kylie Mass was the world record holder before that. So all three of them. That's actually one of the races of the games. There hasn't been a lot talked about that, but that's going to be a great race. Mitch Larkin going in the hundred backstroke final as well. It's going to be tough for him to get into the medals. He's qualified fourth, but that'll be good. Well, there's no Australian in it. Tommy Neal just missed the final, but that is going to be an absolute cracker and the winner could come from any one of the eight lanes. So lots to look forward to tomorrow for Australia and also some swimming in those finals. The Australians aren't in as well. Hey, Rob, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on for Tire Power, winning service, winning prices. Uh, we'll speak to you again uh, tomorrow night uh, when the heats get started there. Terrific. Good night, everyone. Uh, it's a, just an absolute pleasure to have that man, a bronze medalist in 1984 in the individual medley, and uh, he's been sensational. Uh, just uh, an encyclopedic knowledge of, of the sport, which is just uh, a great asset to be able to check in on and, and to be able to paint the scene poolside from the Tokyo Aquatic Centre um, is just a, an absolute blessing uh, for us every night uh, on the evening session, uh, which is proudly brought to you by Tire Power. Tire Power, your trusted tyre experts uh, and SEN's coverage of the 2020 Olympics is all thanks to Mate Communications, award-winning Aussie service mobile plans from $20 and for zero, zero online accounting to help you do business but better. Where are we at? Top of the sixth. Mexico still 4-0 up over Australia. So time the enemy now. Um, as well as Mexico for Australia. We'll take a break, which we haven't been able to do, and uh, come back and we'll go around the grounds again for Beaumont Tiles. You can shop Beaumont Tiles, tile.com.au. Beaumont Tiles are keeping your dr Renault dreams alive. Shop online at tile.com.au. And uh, we will wrap up uh, what's been a big day of competition, 21 sports with Australians in it. Uh, we will bring you up to speed on how each and every single one of them went after this. A start. That's all it takes. It doesn't matter when or where or how. Just start. With the biggest range and the best brands, sporting dreams start at Rebel. Sport is calling. Powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game-changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility, while the high-back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer today. Get on side with the winning team this season. Head into Thrifty Plumbing Supplies Camps here and install a Ream continuous flow or storage hot water system in stock and ready for same-day delivery. Thrifty Campsy, the Ream experts on the corner of Canterbury Road and Beamish Street. Watch this time, the king's the 
I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. SEN's coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Mate Communications. Award-winning Aussie service and a bonus title music subscription included on selected mobile plans. Uh, it's a pleasure to have your company. You can get involved, one 736 736 as we're drawing to a close on events uh, for official day three of competition, one uh, 736 736 uh, It's been a big day. Uh, three medals for Australia. We'll work our way through those in uh, just a moment and uh, we will replay the best of them as well uh, on the Lloyd's Auctions replay. Lloyd's Auctions, Australia's greatest auction house. Bid now at Lloyd's Auctions. Com, uh, dot au. Just off the temper text, temper a mattress like no other. Uh, Craig from Reservoir, just wanted to say really enjoying the coverage from SEN. Had an issue with the app on the weekend and received a reply promptly and the issue was fixed. Thanks, guys. Uh, you're welcome, Craig. Uh, sometimes these things can happen. Um, Brent says, just jumped on the train to Pakenham from Richmond after a long day at work. Love listening to this, Sammy. Kathy Freeman, for me, the pressure on her leading up to the event is unrivaled. Uh, I asked the question earlier, was there, there's always uh, an event at an Olympics, there's always a moment at an Olympics that, that drags you in, that reels you in uh, and captures you for life. And I was asking what yours was. I Mine was 1988, Duncan Armstrong's gold medal. Um, in the 400 metre freestyle and that to me was, uh, that just for some reason just just wrote me in uh, and, and had me a, an Olympic devotee for life. So if you've got that moment in history, it could be in an obscure sport, it could be in anything. I, I still remember and, and back in 1996 when in the closing ceremony, the closing ceremony of that, they put on an exhibition of BMX skateboarding and inline skating. Um, and of those three now, uh, two of them are actually Olympic events and they were demonstration sports, I remember, um, to close out Atlanta back in 1996. And at that, at that time, rollerblading was actually a bigger sport than all three of those, but it's since dropped off in a major way. And uh, now um, BMX... Uh, and BMX Park will be a part of this year's uh, Olympics as well, not just the BMX racing uh, and skateboarding in for the first time as well in the park and the street. So the park's still to come. The street um, ha has culminated. Um, Shane O'Neill was our first ever athlete to compete in skateboarding as the men went yesterday. And unfortunately, uh, things didn't pan out very well for him and nor did it for Hayley Wilson today, um, who finished 16th and didn't qualify to get through to the finals. Um, but we're extremely proud of them. Uh, nonetheless. So I'll, I'll work you through the events uh, of the day very shortly, but Australia uh, are still in action uh, in at the Yokohama Baseball Stadium, but they need to pull something. They, there's a rabbit out of a hat situation that needs to unfold, uh, and at the moment they're 4-0 down um, at the bottom of the sixth. Let's rejoin. Here, 26-year-old, made a debut for the Aussie Spirit all the way back in 2014. Let's that one go for a ball. She spent a bit of time working for the family's Riverwood factory, which makes medals and trophies, would you believe? Great shot of the dugout there. That one, just on the inside for a ball. This is a good hitting count here for Rach. That one flies out for a foul. Well out. 
What a great cut on that ball. As a spirit player number 268. So she's inspired by Stacey Porter. Two and two pitch from Escobedo, who's pitched the whole game so far. And Lack fouls that one. Nice smile there from Rachel. These Aussie girls have got nothing to lose here. Only one more inning to bat after this, and she's hit. So I think it may have hit, just hit the bat as well, unfortunately, for Rachel. So whilst it hit her hand, we'll see here on this replay. Pitch right on the inside. Hand and the bat. So unfortunately, that one is classed as a, a foul ball. Lang Harrow was questioning the call, saying that no, it just hit her on the wrist. Now comes Kathy Mitchell, who is the Aussie Spirit team physio. An ex-Aussie Spirit player herself. Wonderful to see her helping the girls out. That's got a sting. Didn't see the magic spray there. There's usually a, the magic spray comes out for those. I see here the umpires consulting as to whether or not. I'm not sure that did hit the bat, but look, I'm you know might have the green and gold glasses on, but I'll hedge my bets. I, it, it... Unfortunately, she's too tough, Rachel. She should have gone down in a heap. <laughs> Having a good chat with the coach, though as the umpires confer one of the Critical most time. laid back players you'll come you'll come across in Rachel as we see here oh it did hit the base of the bat <laughs> still got to hurt it did get quite a lot of that wrist bone so if that's the case Rachel just needs to grit her teeth and get back in here and find a way to get on base with this Aussie Spirit team here in the bottom of the sixth. So Rachel shapes up again. Two and two pitch. And yet another foul. We've seen quite a few of those tonight. And you can see Rachel just before Escobedo throws the ball. She creeps slightly in towards home plate, looking to make sure she covers that outside curveball. Plenty of encouragement there, Tani stepped over, very vocal. And that one is well wide for a ball, so. This is a great at bat by Rachel. We're full here, the three and two pitch coming up and Australia just needs to get something out of this inning to get back in the game. Oh, she grounds that one, little hesitation there and has comfortably run out at first. So first out for Australia, the pressure builds. Yeah, Rachel just unable to get a full swing on that ball. Cover the outside corner really well. Brings to the plate, Jay Wall. You can see Team Mexico looking to stay with their ace. In Escobedo. She did a great job last night, pitched the whole innings. And that one also outside for a ball. Cheerio to the Harvey Bay Cheetahs, where Jade started playing at the age of nine. Won a scholarship with the Queensland Academy of Sport. And it was all uphill up from there. That's a cold strike. Mexico in a commanding position here. If they can keep Australia scoreless, it's going to be a mountain to climb in the final inning and a swing and a miss. Lovely cut there by Jay, just unable to get bat on ball there. But a good sign that these girls are swinging nice and hard. And 
that just jams her up inside the zone. And we're three and two. Gets onto that one, flies out to centre field and over the boundary. Hallelujah. Home run for Jade Wall. Australia back in this game. And look at them bring her in. That is fantastic. You could see as soon as it came off the bat, Jade's eyes lit up. She knew off the bat it was going over the fence. And that's exactly what this Aussie spirit needed. They just needed a spark. We can see games turn with a swing of a bat. Pitch just not high enough in the zone. And Jade gave that ball what it deserves. And you can just see how happy the Aussie Spirit girls are. They are not out of this yet. Michelle Cox now at bat. And there's a lot to be said for confidence. And Jade Wall just gave a massive injection of that to the Aussie spirit called strike. Escobedo hit away there to the infield and out at first. Good fielding there from Mexico. Thought it might just squeeze under Gonzalez there for a moment, but they've been very tight throughout this series. They absolutely have a really solid hit. As you can see, the replay here from Jade Wall. Send it sailing, no doubt about it. And you can see the smile on Jado's face. I think there she's a federal police officer by trade, so I think there'd be some very happy colleagues cheering her on, bringing to the plate. Belinda White. And that one just drifting outside for a ball. One strike, two out. Might be a change here. Daniel O'Toole, formerly a very effective pitcher for the United States. Switching to Mexico here. That's a called strike as well. So two strikes and two out. Can Australia add to their total? You'd think they'd have to, with Mexico still to bat. Ball. From South Australia, Bell White. It's for Sturt Falcons Softball Club. I know everybody in South Australia will be cheering for Bell right about now. And gets that one away. But not finding the gap. Mexico clean up again, Australia all out, but they have added one run to their total, 4-1. So, Australia back in it, 4-1 is the score um, in the sixth inning, so not out of it just yet. So, uh, we will come back and rejoin that uh, as soon as uh, play resumes. 0433 uh, to get involved. Uh, give us your thoughts on the events of the day. 1300 736 736. We're going to start to recap uh, exactly what went down from an Australian point of view today and I'll take you through the, the medal tally uh, as well. In fact, why don't we uh, have a look at the medal tally? Why don't we have a look at the medal tally now? A medal tally update. Sporting dreams start at Rebel. Shop the biggest range with the best brands in store or at rebelsport.com. So United States uh, on top of the medal tally, 14 medals for them, seven gold, three silver and four bronze. Japan, the host nation, doing really well. Seven gold, one silver and three bronze. China in third place, six gold, three silver, six bronze. Great Britain with six medals, three gold, two silver and a bronze. 
South Korea, three gold medals and four bronze. Uh, the Russian Olympic Committee, so the Russian athletes, uh, two gold, five silver and three bronze. Australia sitting seventh, courtesy of our two golds, the women's 4 by 100 metre relay yesterday and Ariane Titmus today in the women's 400 metre freestyle. Our silver medal, Jack McLaughlin, uh, and then our three bronze medals uh, in the pool as well. All our model, all our medals coming in the pool uh, so far, but we're hoping uh, that will change as uh, the uh, Olympics continue on. So uh, our medal update for Rebel Sports, sporting dreams start at rebel, rebelsport.com.au. Shop the biggest range with the best brands in store uh, or at rebelsport.com.au. So we're back underway. It's 4-1. We're at the top of the seventh. Uh, The count is 1-1. There are no outs. And a called strike. So we see Rachel Lack staying in the field, replacing Chelsea Falcon. Gets onto that one. And nicely fielded there at second base and out. So Australia now trying to keep a lid on this. Stacey McManus there. They'll still have to score at least three runs in their final at bat, Australia. Bringing the inform hitter from last night, Sydney Romero. Yes, we're back at the top of the order here, and she gets a ball with the first Ellen Roberts pitch. It's three consecutive fly balls in all her turns at bat this evening. That one's outside for a ball. Cold strike for that one. Lovely comeback pitch from Roberts there, making sure she doesn't leave too much of the ball over the plate. She knows how dangerous Romero can be. That's going high and caught. Nervous moment there, but Taylor Zitzacronis takes the catch. Two out. So Australia fighting back here. They've been very solid defensively. In the last couple of innings, Mexico hasn't scored since the fourth. I wonder if Dallas Escobedo will finish this game as pitcher or whether they'll bring in Daniel O'Toole. We'll find out soon enough. big out here for the Aussie spirit, Nicole Renhill. Oh, driving that straight into Ellen Roberts. Not much she could do about that one. Renhill gets safe to first and is Ellen okay? That would have hurt. That came off the bat flying straight back to her shin. Her and Dallas Escobedo can prepare, can, can uh, compare lumps tomorrow on their shins, both copping solid balls back off the bat. And Ellen just unable to get, yeah, it looked like it hit her knee and it was her landing knee as well, so unable to get out of the way. All her weight was on that leg. for Ellen Roberts. And safely through over the infield. And nicely placed there to get two runners on. Identical to her last at bat, Ortez. Getting a hit to, to centre field. Now, you might notice Nicole Ranhell has Mendes on the back of her 
shirt. She is Ranhel Mendez. Uh, Ranhel's her mum's maiden name, and she's been listed under that name for this event, but she's had Mendez on the back of her shirt, just in case there was any confusion there. Now, Roberts just needs to focus on Belinda White here. Ignore the runners behind her. Just focus on getting this hitter out. Tatiana Forbes. Forbes is a dangerous hitter. She can send the ball deep into the outfield but can also do running slap hits. So defense will need to be on their toes. Yet another foul. Put a bit on that pitch, Ellen Roberts. Two strikes, two out. Two runners on base. And that one called ball. A lot of tension here. Mexico can feel how close they are to their bronze medal game tomorrow. Australia desperately trying to climb out of this. And she again fouls. Not showing any signs of that knee giving her any trouble. Really, really tough competitor is Ellen Roberts. Another foul. Pressure building with every pitch. Both teams have left five runners on base so far. Of course, Mexico, if Australia does their job, we'll have two more runners left on base. Two out, two and two pitch coming up for Ellen Roberts. Rounds that one neatly and out. So Australia again digging their way out defensively. It's still 4-1 Mexico. 4-1 Mexico. Uh, time is the enemy at the moment. They need something big. Uh, and they will be up to bat in just a moment. So why don't we do uh, an Aussie update uh, um, throughout from what we've uh, been through for the course of the day, and then I'll give you the uh, medals that have been awarded today. All for Rebel Sport, Sporting Dreams. Start at rebel, rebelsport.com.au. So... And then I'll uh, also update you too uh, on the events that we've got Aussies competing in tomorrow. But it started off today, uh, the men's individual triathlon, Jacob Burtwistle, Matty Hauser and Aaron Royal, um, 16th, 24th and 26th respectively. The goal went to Norway's Christian uh, Blumfeldt. In the surfing, uh, Steph Gilmore lost her heat, sadly, uh, to Bianca Buttendag, Um in the heat one of round three and will not progress. She spoke uh, after being knocked out. Steph, bad luck. What happened? Uh, yeah, I basically, you know, I have priority and the conditions are actually, they're okay right now. It, it swells up, but it's really windy and it's pretty tricky to choose the good ones. But, um, yeah, I let Bianca get a, a good wave when I have priority. And, yeah, she, I looked at the wave and I was like, oh, it doesn't look that good. And then she took off and she, uh, yeah, she turned it into the highest score of the heat. So, um, yeah, and then I had, you know, five, min five minutes or something to try and get a score back, but couldn't manage to make it happen. So... So disappointed, but, yeah, it's just was my day. So, Steph Gilmore there. Luckily, Sally Fitzgibbons did get through to the quarterfinals. So, too, did Owen Wright for the men. Julian Wilson controversially uh, knocked out by Gabrielle Medina. We'll talk about that in just a minute, but here we go. Top of the seventh. Uh, the count is 1-1. Australia at bat, and they need a miracle here. Three runs behind Mexico to get into the bronze medal match against Canada. Stacey just needs to get settled in the box here. And put a solid cut on this pitch. That's well outside. Good to see sticking with her routine.
gets onto that one, but it's a foul. Sounded good. And that's been the story of so many of these Aussie Spirit athletes. They've been putting such good cuts on the ball, either just going straight to fielders or down left field line, right field line. They need to bring it all together here in the bottom of the seventh. Gets onto that one, but straight to second base and out for Stacey McManus. Bringing to the plate, Claire Warwick. More pressure on the Australians here. ball back to Escobedo's shin, her last at bat. So he's obviously seeing the ball really well, had a good cut there. Well left. Claire's looking nice and settled here in the box. Again, the ball called. And everybody in this squad doing everything they can. You can just see the body language. There's the discomfort. That's a nice drive down the line, but caught. Again, just cannot find the gaps. They just can't buy a trick. That is such a beautiful piece of hitting there from Claire Warwick. And so Australia now. Two out, and Mexico are one out away from making history. First time at the Olympic Games, stopping Australia from winning a medal for the first time. Lee Godfrey can keep their Olympic hopes alive here in the bottom of the seventh. Cold strike. They've worked so hard to get here, these girls. It's been a difficult preparation, disrupted some of the teams for the Northern Hemisphere. The Canadians spoke about the disruption of their preparation. They've all been through it through COVID, the delays, the postponements, the cancellations, the lockdowns. But it has been very hard for this team, the Aussie spirit, to actually play as a team against solid opposition. I mentioned earlier, if you've just recently joined us, the Mexicans did get together and play a very competitive series against American collegiate teams this year and it's obviously paid off for them. Gets onto that one Godfrey but it's high to right field and that is it. Mexico has made history on their first Olympic Games as a softball nation. They are going to the bronze medal playoff against Canada. Ellen Roberts gave it everything she had as pitcher but Australia the tournament has ended. Uh, it certainly has uh, really sad scenes and emotional scenes there. They just could never really get it going offensively through the whole tournament, uh, could Australia. Um, their first game, they lost 8-1. They then won 1-0. Uh, they went down to America. Uh, I think that was 3-1, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then Canada got them... 7-1 as well. So it just never really clicked for them, unable to score runs um, at any kind of regularity. So uh, for Stacey Porter, three-time Olympian, uh, this campaign ends as captain probably a lot earlier than she would have been hoping. And the sad thing is for women's softball is that it's not going to be part of the 2024 Olympic Games. So um, commiserations to our Aussie spirit. Uh, they showed plenty of it. It just uh, wasn't their tournament uh, in the end. And just heard there from Bill Woods that they had barely played together since 2019. And that has to, that can't be discounted when other nations have been able to, to get good, strong competition in in the lead-up to an Olympics. It just wasn't uh, able to happen for the Aussie spirit. So their Olympic campaign is over. So got another hour to spend with you and uh, big fella off the uh, the text, the temper text, 0433981116. Loving the action while walking the dog. Late-night walk for you, big fella. Uh, keep up the great work. Thank you very much, mate. 0433981116. Uh, 
or one 736 736 Michael says, got to say, good coverage of the games. First time I've listened to it on radio, and it's great. Well done. Um, Thank you, Michael. Really appreciate it. But one 736 736 you can put anything of an Olympic nature on the agenda. Call us in wherever you're hearing us um, and wherever we're coming to you around Australia on the SEN network. We are going nationally tonight and will do for every one of the evening sessions. And the evening sessions are brought to you by Tyre Power. Tyre Power, your trusted tyre expert, SEN's coverage of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. For Mate Communications, award-winning Aussie service mobile plans from $20 and for zero online accounting to help you do business uh, but better. And I've got to say, it's very nice to be able to rock up uh, to do a job. We don't often dress up in radio, it, it, it must be said, but when you rock in and you are presented with your Olympic T-shirt uh, thanks to Sportscraft, the official supplier of both the Australian athletes and SEN's call team ceremony uniforms. You just feel that little bit better. Look good, feel good, they say. Now, given that I'm uh, substantially overweight, I'm a balding man, I actually just shaved off the beard recently, so you see that I've got no chin. Uh, I've got a very, very severe case of neck face. Um, you, you, anything can, any little thing helps, and certainly I would say that my appeal um, visually has increased uh, by uh, easily 50%. Thanks to Sportcraft, the official supplier of both the Australian athletes and SEN's call team ceremony uniforms. So we'll, wait, we'll make our way through an Aussie update for Red Energy in the events of today. So... All competition now, from an Australian point of view, has finished. 21 events had Aussies in it today. And I'm going to take you through one by one, and we'll weave through a little bit of audio uh, where we can. But you can give me a bell over the next hour, one 736 736 Mark's giving us a call in Sydney. Hello, mate. Hey, how you going, Sam? Yeah, good. How are you enjoying the Olympics? I'm really enjoying the Olympics. Of course, I'm uh, a bit disheartened that Australia just lost the softball. I was watching it on 7+, Plus, but I must say, the Mexican team really deserved that win because their pitcher, Dallas uh, Escuedo, I believe the name is, she was lights out. She pitched nearly the whole game. She only missed pitching out on two innings. The other, other two innings were relief pitches, but she pitched a real blinder of a the game there. Yeah, she did. I mean, the, the, when they got that run uh, at the bottom of the sixth, just a little bit of the candle just flickered ever so, and, and and the door was slightly ajar, whichever cliche we can throw up, Mark. Yep. But, um, yeah, they that's, you know, ice running through the veins to, to close it out, and you could just see how much it meant to the uh, to the Aussie spirit. But they, I, I don't know if you've been watching the games through the tournament, but they, they defensively, yeah, I mean, in every aspect of it. I mean, except for the game against the US where they took them to extra innings and... Um, and the U.S. hadn't conceded a run all tournament yet. Um, but they just, yeah, it just didn't flow. And, and you can't help but think that that's what happens when you haven't really been able to play much together for about 18 months, almost two that's years. That's right. That's right. It kind of feels like um, here in Sydney when I try to get together with my country music band. You know, you haven't been together for such a long time, but you've just got to, you know, make the best of it and uh, keep going and it'll happen. And um, that's exactly what I was thinking it was like, Mark. uh, That's the exact same analogy. (laughs) And I must say, yeah, I was very impressed with our Anna Titmus today. That was a great win for Australia, and not just her, but also our other female athletes. You know, like we had a golfer who won earlier in the day, and we had uh, Lee. Yep, won the uh, won the Evian, uh, the Avian, Evian. Uh, Yeah, that's one of the women's majors. So that's extraordinary. That's That's a phenomenal achievement. She's actually going to be heading over to the Olympics in about a day's time because uh, her and Hannah Green, uh, Cameron Smith, and Mark Leishman are our uh, our our golf team. So um, nice. That's that. We're very strongly represented there. Hannah Green um, uh, is an Aussie major winner, of course, and uh, and now Minji. Lee, so we're looking really good in the golf, I reckon. Yeah, she, and she'll certainly be clocking up the frequent flyer miles, because apparently her family's in America, so she's going to stop off and see them. That's true. Then fly over to Japan for the Olympics. And fun fact, it's funny, because um, I'm Sydney born and raised, but I used to live in New Zealand too. My mum's the Kiwi, lived over there for some years, and believe it or not, there's a journo in New Zealand called Mark Leishman, same name. Is that right? Is that right? That That's was, right, yeah. There was also a period of time where, I mean, New Zealand had a golfer, Michael Long. There was a footy player, Michael Long, and there was a another Michael Long in sport. And one of my best mates back home's name's Michael Long. But uh, Cameron yeah. Smith, of course, the rugby league great and also uh, star on the rise in the world of golf. Um, 
I don't mind those uh, the 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 repeated name or the doppelganger name. Uh, Mark, always yeah. great to chat to you, mate. Enjoy Thanks, the rest man. of the coverage. We'll speak to you during the week. Will do. Thanks, Sam. one three hundred seven three six seven three six. Off the text. Uh, loving the coverage. Where have you been last week? BP did a great job. That's from Mark in North Ball. And, uh, of course, he did a great job. He's the consummate professional uh, and does a, a, a ripping job every time he gets behind a mic, does BP. Um, Knowing the intensity of the schedule for the next couple of weeks, uh, I needed to take uh, a couple of weeks of annual leave. And for the third time this year, uh, our trip away got cancelled <laughs> due to lockdown. Uh, the beautiful Evie and I, um, we're not complaining, of course. There's people that have had to miss uh, a lot more important things and, uh, than a holiday. But interestingly enough, not many refunds are happening. More, it's you get a, a voucher and a credit. So... We've got a lot of money. We've got a substantial amount of coin out there, and I don't know when we're going to be able to use them. Uh, but, look, we don't complain because there's people that have experienced far, far worse than than that. But uh, thanks for the inquiry, uh, Mark, and it's great to be back. Uh, good night. Uh, oh, big fella, I'm a night owl. Uh, no, me too. One three hundred seven three six seven three six. So let's go through um, the events and the results of today. We've gone through the triathlon. Um, where were we up to? Uh, Steph Gilmore, who uh, went down in her heat, um, knocked out in round three of the women's short board. Uh, Laura Coles was knocked out in the women's skeet. Uh, Hayley Wilson was knocked out in the women's street uh, in the skateboarding. So unfortunately, um, no Aussie representation in the finals for the women's or men's street. But look out for the park. It was always going to be uh, the stronger um, metal hope for us uh, in the park. And I think that gets going possibly tomorrow, if not in the next couple of days uh, in the skateboard park. Paul Adams was knocked out of the uh, the men's skeet. Um, this is a great story too. Six-time Olympian, Jian Feng Lei. Uh, so her and uh, I think it's M- uh, Molly Hanna, the equestrian rider, are both at their sixth Olympics. Andrew Hoy, of course, is at his eighth. But she's now got through to round three, winning her round two matches. Uh, and it's a great story unfolding. 48 years of age, Jian Feng Lei. Uh, so goes through to round three. Uh, Matt's given us a call in Caulfield. G'day, Matty. Hey, how are you? Good, mate. So I'm a bit of an Olympic nuffy, I like to think. Great. Oh, that's what I've been labelled. Um, I just want to say how amazing it's been just watching all the different sports. Like, obviously, I watch a bit of tennis today, but I find the tennis a bit boring today because, you know, we just had Wimbledon and that's like the pinnacle of tennis. Mm. Um, and then, like, the Olympics was a bit of a letdown. But watching all the swimming, I watched some badminton, gymnastics. Just incredible how... You, how the Olympics unites like a whole nation. Like yes. I was on my Twitter feed today after Titmus one, and it was electric. Like I was standing, I was standing on my couch going nuts, like I was last night watching Essendon, but I was watching Titmus. Who would have thought like people would be on their couches going nuts for a swimmer? A lot of us, I mean, a lot of us who aren't swimming experts would have maybe heard about Titmus last week. And all of a sudden, with the coverage that Channel Seven's done, which is amazing. I'm not sure if you've been watching the coverage because you're busy with radio. Like, you know, they take you behind the scenes of the person growing up and they really make you feel a part of the journey. Uh, it is. It's, it's Seven are doing a wonderful job and we're wrapped to be broadcast yeah. partners with them because it's... Yes. Uh, you, I think you're right, Matt. Some, I think there'd be broadcasters around the world that would do a great job in bringing you the sport. But I think what we're really enjoying is learning about the people and and their stories. And, and it's always the, the thing to me that really does... Um, resonate and stand out for me because for, for the next four years and I won't and I'm not being disrespectful I won't have very I'll have very little if anything to do with 90 percent 95 percent of the sports that are that are on there and I, I call basketball footy cricket a bit of golf as well um but we don't we just don't get to engage with a lot of these sports any other time which is I think one of the beautiful things about the Olympics yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I saw an opinion yesterday which is saying perhaps the only sports that should be at the Olympics are those where getting a gold medal is the pinnacle of your sport. I'm curious yeah. to see what you think about that. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll sleep on it. I reckon I'll sleep on it. I, I do love that we're bringing new sports in. I, I think that any any – I think we've seen in any sport, uh, in any walk of life – if 
if you're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotting. So if you think that it's everything is just how it should be and to never change, then at some point you'll be left behind and you won't ever see it coming. So I think to make sure you engage with younger audiences, that you've got events that appeal to different demographics. So I love the fact that new sports have been brought in. And, I mean, that's a question for those sports, whether what's more important, an X Games gold medal or a, an Olympic gold medal. Um, it's interesting hearing Paddy Mills and Joe Ingalls speak when they, say, when they were asked, would you rather an NBA title or a gold medal? And they didn't hesitate to say gold medal. So, yeah, it, I mean, Olympics used to just be for all the amateurs, but now professionals obviously uh, are allowed in, and I think that's in, increased the standard of it. But do I think that only sports where it is the pinnacle um, should be in? Not necessarily, but I'll put some more thought into it Matt, and I do appreciate the call. one three hundred seven three six seven three six. 736 736 If you've got uh, an automatic view on that, I don't yet. I'm, I'm undecided. I want to put some more thought into it and go through a few of the sports. But if you've got a view on what Matt was talking about and you think that Olympics should only be for sports where it would be the pinnacle. So that's looking at things like golf. So is an Olympic medal uh, as, as held in the same esteem as a major for them? Um, for, for basketball, is an NBA championship worth more than an Olympic gold medal? Um, when you look through the, the, uh, the other sports, you know, golf's a good example of that. Is a golf major up there with an Olympic gold medal? You know, Adam Scott's ruled himself out of the last two Olympics, had no interest in it really. It's a good question to ask. one three hundred seven three six seven three six 736 736 or 0433 And if that was the case, then which sports, which sports would you think would not be included if under that sort of guideline because it wasn't the pinnacle of that particular sport? one three hundred seven three six seven three six. 736 736 Great question to ask, and we, we might uh, roll that through throughout the course of the next uh, couple of weeks. We're going to take a break, come back, and we will revisit and make sure you are up to speed on every single Australian's efforts and results throughout the course of today, uh, SEN's coverage of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Hello. National tiles of European-made Kimberlook laminate flooring for under $19 per square metre. Yes, National Tiles exclusive European oak look flooring for under $19 per metre. That's less than $190 for an average 10 square metre bedroom floor. So rush into National Tiles' all-new spectacular mega store at Alexandria or go to nationaltiles.com.au now and save. Sportscraft are the official formal uniform supply for the Australian Olympic team in Tokyo as they go for gold. For your own podium finish style, discover the latest Sportscraft collection of men's clothing, including relaxed shirting, classic jackets, warm coats and chinos. All perfectly curated to bring quality, style and versatility to your wardrobe. Sportscraft, we are Team Australia. Discover the latest menswear collection online at sportscraft.com.au. Sportscraft are the official formal uniform supply for the Australian Olympic team in Tokyo as they go for gold. For your own podium finish style, discover the latest Sportscraft collection of men's clothing, including relaxed shirting, classic jackets, warm coats and chinos. All perfectly curated to bring quality, style and versatility to your wardrobe. Sportscraft, we are Team Australia. Discover the latest menswear collection online at sportscraft.com.au. Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Tyre Power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. Got away well. 
Cole at the top of the screen, Emma McKeon, Sarah Showstrom also a good start alongside McKeon, the American Tory Husk, number one ranked this year, a very good start from her also. Marie Wattle really got up and racing nice and quick, Emma McKeon off the blocks of 0.73, which is a little bit slower than her technically quick start, Zhang Yufei is getting on the wall here, going out. 25-7-1, so a nice, sharp first 50. So the Aussie back in fourth spot at the 50. She'll need to bring it home. She's got Husk alongside her. Number one ranked this year, Zhang Yufei out in front. Marie Waddle, the French swimmer, lifting as well. So is Emma. She's in this race. She's in this finish. They're under world record pace. Showstrom can't win. What's Emma got? Pushing up into second spot. Going hard. She's in this finish. Lane three. Look for champion at 21 and a bronze medal for Emma McKeon. <laughs> Oh, what a terrific swim from Emma McKeon. Em, you've done a PB in an Australian record in an Olympic final. How pleased are you with that? Um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased. I mean, I'm going to be on the Olympic podium, so yeah. you can't really be more happy. So tight at the end. What were you feeling? Did you think you were going to get there? Um, well, really, I was just focusing on my race. Um, yeah. I could see the American girl on the other side of me, and I realised we were only 0.01 yeah. um, off third and fourth, so she got my hand on the wall before her. It's an individual medal at Olympic level. Uh, that's your sixth overall. Congratulations, and you've got plenty more to come. Well done. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, as we continue to go around the grounds uh, for Beaumont Tiles, tiles.com.au. Beaumont Tiles are keeping your Renault dreams alive. Shop online at tile.com.au. So how did every Australian go today? We're working through the list of them, and that was Emma McKeon winning bronze in the 100-metre butterfly. So as you heard there from Nathan Templeton, it's her sixth career medal. So she's got two gold medals in the 4 by 100 metres at Rio and Tokyo. She's got two silvers in the 4 by 200 metre freestyle in Rio and the 4 by 100 metre medley in Rio and now to bronze in the 200 metre freestyle at Rio and the 100 metre butterfly in Tokyo. She's a four-time world champion as well, Emma McKeon. She's got five more events on her schedule, now has six Olympic medals. She only needs three more to equal Liesl Jones and Ian Thorpe with nine Olympic medals. So there's history in the making there uh, for Emma McKeon, uh, the nephew uh, of Rob Woodhouse, uh, who's been fantastic um, in uh, every time we cross to him poolside. Uh, so that was our, our bronze medal that we got today. It was the first medal that we claimed. Um, Thomas Neal didn't qualify for the men's 200-metre freestyle. Uh, David Barnes, Ryan Tyak, Taylor Worth uh, unfortunately lost their um, Round 16 men's team event in the archery to Chinese Taipei. They will now all compete in the single events. In the Taekwondo, Jack Martin uh, was eliminated 11-1 by Steve Issa from uh, Egypt in the men's 80-kilogram taekwondo. Um, Chelsea Hodges didn't qualify for the finals in the women's 100-metre breaststroke semi-final. In the men's singles... Excuse me, I just sneezed. Oh, goodness me. Uh, in the <laughs> men's singles of the table tennis, David Powell uh, unfortunately lost to Yang Wang. Um, and in the surfing, Sally Fitzgibbons uh, is through to the quarterfinals after beating France's Pauline Addo. And if you haven't seen the celebration after that heat win, the Australian surf team have called themselves the Iracadne, um, which is uh, the very uh, potent jellyfish that they've named them after found in Australia. So Fitzgibbons turned and stung each of the Australian contingent, dropping them uh, onto the sands of uh, Surigasaki Beach before raising her hand to the sky in triumph. And then uh, that came after the uh, Aussie, 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 as she kept her metal hopes alive. So she's up again tomorrow at about 12 p.m. at about quarter past 12 tomorrow against the 15th seed um, Amaru, uh, Amuro Suzuki. Um, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, it was a very interesting celebration from Sally Fitzgibbon, uh, the poisonous jellyfish that they've uh, adopted as the moniker for the surfing team. And you've got to have a celebration. I love a good celebration. Um, 0433 98 11 16. I'm going to get to these texts. There's a fair few coming through about whether Olympic sports should only be um, for those sports who it would be the pinnacle 
of their sport. So that was the question that Matt asked uh, from Caulfield, and there's a few texts coming through. Surely Lawn Bowls representing uh, your country winning gold would be the ultimate or pinnacle in that field. It's a, it's just ridiculous that Lawn Bowls isn't an Olympic sport, given how widely it's played around the world. But they are, have put that wheel in motion, and hopefully it will be. Uh, I don't think hybrid sports such as 3x3 three three basketball should be in there, but I believe futsal should. Tennis, no, but with David Cup now bastardised, then should it maybe it should stay in the Olympics. So should it replace Davis Cup? That's interesting. There's no real right or wrong, but definitely too many sports in it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure about the 3x3 three three basketball either. Paddy Dangerfield was tweeting about that during the week, how that gets in but not netball, given how you know widely played around the world netball is. Uh, and off the text, you're comparing club v country, domestic v international, NBA is NBA. It's not country v country. You don't compare football in the Olympics to Premier League. You compare it to World Cup. It's a tough one to answer. That's from Tommy Nascop. Oh, good point of view there, Tommy, uh, as well. So is an Olympic medal worth more than a World Cup? In football, uh, obviously, it's a, a different format uh, for the soccer, um, given it's the under-23s and uh, and not the full complement available. But in basketball, what's worth more, an Olympic medal or a World Cup medal? Uh, keep those texts coming through, 0433 98 11 16. Um, this was the moment of the day, though, and I will play the race in full. Uh, Ariane Titmus, our second gold medal of these Olympics, and it came in the women's 400-metre freestyle, the first time we've had a woman win that event since Shane Gould in 1972. Hayley Lewis went close in 92. She got bronze. Uh, and we've got a rich history in this going back to 1956 where uh, Lorraine Crapp won gold ahead of Dawn Fraser in silver and uh, Karen Morass uh, won bronze in this event in Mexico in 1968. But this is the race. It is Katie Ledecky in four and Lee of China in lane five. A good starter and we saw that in the heats and she certainly started well here also. The 14-year-old Summer McIntosh in lane two has got a good start but right at the moment about five of them. Lane two across to lane six. Erica Fairweather of New Zealand also one to watch in lane six. So we just saw uh, Ariane Titmus take a sneaky look to see where she was at compared to Katie Ledecky. She's just behind McIntosh, the 14-year-old, by one one hundred for the second on that turn. Ledecky makes a move there. So on that turn after the first 50, just pushes up and swims into the lead. Ledecky right alongside her and McIntosh, who was the early leader, one one hundredth of a second in front of the chasing pack, now just drops back ever so slightly. So it is Ledecky in front for the first time at the 100 metre mark. Ledecky first, Titmus second, seven one hundredths of a second behind her, and McIntosh now back into third. What we're seeing from Ariane, what she's doing is she's accelerating into each of these turns so that she can get around quite quickly. We see her losing a little bit to uh, Katie Ledecky through the swimming part of the race, but she actually extends it into the turn so that she can be up with her. So trying to get away from the Aussie, Ariane Titmus, but Ledecky not getting it as easily as she might have liked and we've talked a lot pre-race that perhaps the strategy from Ledecky was to try and break her early. Hard to break Arnie, such a fierce competitor now we're seeing a bit of it again and Ledecky just puts the foot down Ledecky wants to have this lead because she knows how Arnie can come home and it was that last 100 metres that we saw at the World Championships where Ariane was really able to overswim Katie Ledecky and Ledecky is not used to that, she's not used to having people there, she likes clean water which means they met, there's no one around her. But Arnie's holding on well here. They're just outside world record pace on the deck he is here. 200 down, 200 to go, and this is a good position for Ariane Titmus to be in. She tried to make a bit of a move, Ledecky. Got to about three quarters of a body length in front of them. Arnie pegged her back, the world champion Ariane Titmus from Tasmania to Queensland to the Olympic final in Tokyo. It's about half a body length, and this looks good for the Australian. It does look good. She's made up some ground in this last 50, or at least it looks like a bit bad. Just outside world record pace. 0.66 of a second behind. So what does Ledecky do here? Does she go for it? Does she keep something in reserve for the sprint at the end? 250 down, 150 to go. Arnie's right there. Lane three for Titmus. And they're going at exactly the same pace. It's who picks up. Look, we now see that, uh, that Arnie's actually going slightly faster, only ever so slightly. Coming into this last 100 metres, it's getting tighter. 
This is what Arnie has to turn it on. And an excellent turn set from Pittman. She needs to set herself up for his last 50 metres, which means she needs to be going into work and extending her stroke, lengthening it out, putting in more speed so she can come off the wall quickly and deliver a great final last 50 metres. Here come on, Arnie. She goes. She's right up on the shoulder of the great American now. 20 gold medals at Olympic and World Championship level. Now nothing between them. 350 now. for the first time. 50 to go. This is going to be a sprint now. What can Arnie bring out here? This is what they've waited for. Here we go. The sprint to the end. Can she be beaten, Katie Ledecky, the defending champion, the world record holder, Ariane Titmus in front. Match race down to the end. Stroke for stroke. She's in front, Arnie Titmus. This is amazing. Look at this moment for Ariane. She has a slight fist pump here. Commonwealth record, Australian record, PB for Ariane's hitness, delivered when it counts at the Olympic Games against the best female swimmer that the world has ever seen. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. You know, this past year, I don't know whether it's gone fast or slow, but more than anything to get here was a relief. And then to come here and do the job, um, I'm over the moon. Katie just walked past. There was a lovely moment on the pool deck. What did she say to you at the end? I mean, I thanked her. Um, I wouldn't be here without her. You know, she set this incredible standard and um, all credit to her for the swimmer she is. And um, I've just been trying to chase her. And so it's really exciting now that we kind of have this battle going. Um, it's really fun to race. So, yeah, that's the, the best part about it. Um, in the race, I tried to stay as composed as I could. Tried to stick to my race plan, and I can't believe I actually pulled it off. You nailed it. Um, we just heard from mum and dad. We know that your sister and your grandparents are with them in Noosa. You have a look at the monitor there if you like. Oh, that's Dawn too. <laughs> Who's that? Dawn Fraser. Oh, Dawn is there. Um, they're listening to you. What do you want to say to them? Oh, I just want to thank them for everything. You know, none of this would have been possible without them. Moving to Brisbane to train, and it's not just my parents, it's my sister, my my boyfriend, my entire family, my cousins and their partners and my auntie and her partner are up at Noosa as well. So it's a big crew around me and I definitely couldn't do it without them. We saw some amazing vision of your coach Dean Boxall going absolutely bananas, which you would expect from Box. Um, what's he meant to you? just more of a have fun moment um i love you um have fun that type of thing so we practiced this for so long um i just knew what i had to do when i got out there all of australia is so proud of you well done everyone's been watching on the edge of their seats you've done us so proud thank you go and get your gold medal and we'll chat to you again well thank done, you she, she's dethroned you. She said she could do it. What do you think of her effort, Kate? It was amazing. I mean, I think we, we delivered a great race, and everyone expected that. And um, I can't be disappointed with that swim. I, I fought and swam my second fastest time, so I can't be disappointed with that. And it was a fabulous swim by Ariane. She just said she thanked you because she wouldn't be here without you. What does that mean to you to hear that from her? It means a lot, and I have so much respect for her, and I thanked her too because she's really provided me a great push, and I think we've, we've moved out of it forward together. You're a legend of the sport. You've just both provided us with an amazing moment, Katie. Thank you very much. And thanks, thanks so for much. Stopping. Thank you. So the moment, it's the moment for Australia at the moment uh, in this 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games, and it comes off the back of our women's 4x100 metre freestyle win, which was just extraordinary. The third gold medal in a row in that event, so dominant have they been. But this was a race that had been built up for the last five years, and, and could the world champion become an Olympic champion? And there was always a question mark around when Ariane Titmus beat Ledecky at the Worlds, when she was crook, and um, this really put paid to that. And all the talk that there was a 
rivalry and that there was a bit of animosity. Well, that sure that was clearly not the case when you when you watch them after the swim in the pool thank each other as we've just heard because they both believe that without the other then they may not have achieved some of the things that they have. So that's what a rivalry is. That's respect, and that was what the Olympic spirit is really all about. It was fantastic from Ariane Titmus. It was um, so noble in defeat from Katie Ledecky. Uh, it will live on this moment for all those reasons and a heap more. And off the text, it's really resonated as well. Uh, Chris in the USA, Titmus swam a great race. It looked like she was shot out of a cannon with 100 to go. Uh, that was the tactic. Um, Katie Ledecky, the, the, all the talk was she would try to break her early and stretch her and put her in a position that she didn't want to be in. But uh, Ariane Titmus just wouldn't be denied. And she hung tough and then knew that she had enough in the tank to, to have that burst home uh, with 100 to go and 50 to go when she got on level terms. You just sort of knew then that it was done. Um, for big fella. First time I've heard that today. No wonder my family were going off their head in the lounge room watching it live today. Cheers. Um, yeah, I, I mentioned before that I had tears in my eyes. I was, I was shedding them watching this, and I've never, ever met Ariane Titmus. I've never interviewed her. I've got no connection with her at all other than that that was just a moment that gets that, that got us and it, and it and it gripped us um and it lifted us there's a lot happening in the world at the moment where i think if we can't experience certain things ourselves and to live vicariously through someone doing something so incredible and uh, so amazing um it just it was a it was a spirit lifter wasn't it it, it yeah it was sunshine on a cloudy day it was a ray of hope and at a time when we don't get a heap of it. So um, it was extraordinary, and I, I loved every minute of it. Steve Titmus, her father, um, who had no voice after it, but we gave him a little bit of time before Jared got him on the phone uh, and asked him how he was feeling and when he thought that Ariane had the race won. I thought she had it with about, um, I reckon, 15 to go. We knew if she was within a body and a half with 50 to go at the turn, that she'd be able to mow her decky down because she's got so much back end speed. And and when she started to close with um with about thirty five to go, I knew she was gonna catch her. And then it was really gonna be a matter of what was the touch gonna be like. But fifteen to go when she actually went past the deck and then started to draw away. So there were really probably the fifteen minutes ago, Mark, that's when I thought, Oh no, it's gonna happen. At last it is actually going to happen and I was gonna become the Olympic champion. Uh, and so she did, a proud dad, a proud family. It was incredible scenes there. And in extraordinary scenes, get on Instagram, get on Twitter. The, the, any Australian that couldn't be there in the Olympic Village, they set up big TVs. You, you saw Paddy Mills mixing uh, and the basketballers with all the, the players from the other sports, all just in their green and gold, all jumping up and down. Uh, the water polo team cheering them on uh, as well. There's different videos of different reactions and emotions all around uh, the Olympic Village, all around around Australia and all around the world. And uh, this was what her dad said uh, he was going to say to her when he got to speak to her. Uh, good. Probably, obviously, just, you know, we're just enormously proud of what she's done. Um, I'd probably say something like, uh, you know, we have a bit of a saying because she goes out and races. Uh, you know, so we built the so-and-so out of it. And uh, so I'd probably say to her, you know, you built that out of it and look at that, look at the result at the end of the day. Have a look at that. If Have a look at I that. I think it would just be one, Jared, of, you know, you know, wow, wow, Bob, you've just done, you know, we're enormously proud of you and you've done your country proud. Uh, she certainly has and, and could do so on a couple more occasions. Uh, the 200-metre freestyle, uh, she's qualified for the, the, the final in that. Uh, and then there's the 800-metre freestyle as well that she'll compete in. And both of those will be going again up against Katie Ledecky. Spoke to Shane Gould earlier. She thinks that Ariane will get Katie in the 200, but uh, that Katie might get her in the eight. So we will um, just have to wait and see. But uh, it's wonderful that rivalry existing and there's a couple more chapters to play out in it. Uh, I'm going to come back and keep giving you and, and, and I'll keep recapping uh, the results of the Aussies today and then we'll look at to what tomorrow brings us uh, day four of official competition, fully scheduled competition on SEN's coverage of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. 
powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game-changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility, while the high-back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer today. Attention Sydney, Lloyd's Auctions are holding a massive classic car online auction in Sydney this weekend, including Australian, American and European classics, featuring Glenn Seaton's championship winning 4th Alcan EL, Russell Ingalls Castrol V8 Supercar, Low Kilometre HSV GDSR and more, all starting at $1 at Sydney's greatest auction house. Bid now. Also on offer, Ford Mustang Mach 1, Valiant Pacer, Shelby Fairmont, XP Falcon X Police, VL Walkinshaw Group A, Monaro's Jaguars, Porsche and Ferraris. Bid now or call now to put your classic car into our next record-breaking auction. Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. SEN's night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for Tyre Power. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. So recapping the results of Aussies today, uh, we just relived a lot of uh, Ariane Titmus's history-making um, gold in the 400 metre freestyle. Uh, I wanted to play the Dean Boxall, a coach interview in full, but I, I don't know whether the interview will do the image of him losing his mind after that win justice. I'll try and get to it in a bit, but there's still a lot of results I've got to recap for you and then look ahead to tomorrow as well. But if we get time, I'll play you uh, a little bit of that. Actually, I might get Julia just to give us, find the bit where they ask him about his reaction and we'll cut that up and we'll just get him to explain himself and how he looked like the ultimate warrior coming out for wrestling. Um, in the men's 100 metre backstroke, the, the semi final, Mitch Larkin has qualified um, for the final in that. Isaac Cooper, not as lucky. Uh, Kaylee McEwen and Emily Seabom have both qualified for the final of the women's 100 metre backstroke tomorrow. Uh, in the men's dinghy, race 2 out of 10 in the sailing, Matt Wern uh, finished 28th in that. Um, in the men's 4x100 metre freestyle relay, these were the final stages, and this is how we clinched a bronze medal. Out in front, the United States still. Look at Chalmers coming. Chalmers is getting them up into bronze medal position. Can he get to silver? United States first, Italy second. Kyle Chalmers, what a swim from this young man. A bronze medal for Australia. Kyle Chalmers, one of the great races. Uh, it certainly was, and if you're wondering why I'm jumping around from sport to sport, I'm just going through the events today in chronological order, not sport order. So we are going to just mix it up a little bit. Uh, so that was gold. Uh, that was bronze in the men's 4x100 metre freestyle. Matt Temple, Zach Inserti, uh, Alex Graham and Kyle Chalmers going from about 7th to 3rd. What a last leg that was, uh, and a bronze medal for us there. Uh, in the hockey women's pool B, the hockey roos were um, fantastic in their 6 0 win over China, which is a big statement win. China are no slouches in hockey. It was clever from Chalker, but it was read by the goalkeeper for China, Lee Dong Zhao. And Australia. Means business in Tokyo. What a start for the Hockey Roos. Coming off a 3-1 win over Spain. They have beaten China six goals to nil. And surely now the hype is building around the Hockey Roos. Uh, as it should be, they're looking really, really good. Uh, and, and in 
very good, Nick. They only the, the only medals that Australia have in women's hockey are golds. No other medals. Three gold medals in Olympic competition and never a silver and never a bronze. So hopefully that trend continues. That would be pretty darn good, wouldn't it? Uh, so that's the uh, the women's hockey. And I just lost my place on my sheet here. So let me just keep walking through. Uh, in the men's singles, John Millman unfortunately went down to Spain's Alejandro Davidovic for Kenya. Uh, so he is out of the singles competition there. In the men's canoe, Daniel Watkins uh, got through, uh, qualified second in the semifinals, went through to the final and uh, unfortunately uh, wasn't able to finish in the medals. But a dream come true for him. He was ecstatic. His, his one goal was just to make the finals and, and that's what he did in the C1 uh, and got through nicely in the semis too and, and performed admirably and did these country proud in the finals. Uh, in badminton, the mixed doubles, uh, eliminated was Simon Wing, Hung Liang and Gronya Somerville uh, in the sailing. Matt Wern after race three now sits 12th overall after coming second in race three in the men's dinghy. In the women's dinghy in the laser radial, uh, Mara Stransky came 13th in that. Uh, in tennis, Alia Tomjanovic was eliminated from the singles by Elenia Svitolina uh, from the Ukraine. In the beach volleyball, men's pool A, so Chris McHugh and Damien Schumann do need a win now. They've got uh, another group game to go. They went Went down uh, to Russia and they have to win their next one to be any chance uh, of progressing through. Uh, in the cycling, in the mountain biking, the men's cross country, Daniel McConnell, whose wife's going to compete in this same event tomorrow on the women's side of the draw, uh, came 30th in the end and had some mechanical issues that uh, did him a mischief and was looking well placed for a big portion of that race, but unfortunately uh, the bike let him down. Uh, in the surfing, we spoke about Julian Wilson, controversially knocked out by Gabrielle Medina. Um, had announced before the Olympics that he's going to be stepping down from regular competition. They lodged a protest believing that some of the scoring runs for uh, the two-time world champion Brazil's Gabriel Medina were outside of the competition zone, outside the boundary uh, and the officials said, no, no, no you, you only, the rule is that you run the risk of them not being scored if the judges can't see you when you go out of bounds. They could see, so they scored. Also, uh, Julian wasn't happy with the low score on some of his better runs, thinking that uh, if you look at the comparisons of those throughout the course of the World Surf League season, those tricks in that order, in that type of run, have scored a lot higher in other events. So really disappointing for him um, in being knocked out by pursuing Gabriel Medina. As I mentioned, Daniel Watson came ninth in the men's C1, uh, but was just wrapped to have made the final. Mara Stransky, after the fourth race of the 10 races in the women's dinghy in the laser radial, she's sitting 16th overall after 10th place in race four. In the tennis, Sam Stoza, Alan Perez got through, beating uh, Monic uh, Monicoa, Nicolescu, and Raluca Olaru uh, from Romania. And in the boxing, Alex Winwood unfortunately knocked out by Zambia. Not knocked out, but uh, eliminated by uh, Zambia's Patrick uh, Chinyemba in a split decision. Uh, Owen Wright got through his heat with Jeremy Flores from France uh, in really good nick. He got a big score early and was able to hold out the fast finishing Flores. So he goes through to the quarterfinals, which is just fantastic. So two out of our four surfers are through. We've got a, a Sally Fitzgibbon in the quarters for the women, Owen Wright in the quarters for the men. Max Purcell Clearly injury hampered in his men's singles round two match against Dominic Kupfer from Germany. Uh, he was uh, bundled out in straight sets. In the rugby sevens, our second match today, Australia were just phenomenal against South Korea, but so they should be. 42-5, to five, that win to be 1-1 one and one now. Uh, Ash Barty, Storm Sanders beat Yifan Zhu and Zhoujian Yang from China to progress to round three. In the water polo, this is a fantastic result. This is the final stages uh, of the Stingers, um, our women's water polo team, uh, getting through uh, against the very highly fancied number three ranked, a powerhouse in the world of water polo, the Netherlands. Such opportunities to steal the ball, and we definitely don't want to give them back possession. The Friday Knox will try the line, and she's got it! Knocks on about five metres has spun at centre four. She's lobbed Australian lead 15 12 against one of the world's powerhouses. They're right in these Olympics, the Stingers. Yeah, excellent work there from Australia. I had a good look at where the goalkeeper was. She was sitting a long way out. 
Uh, so they've won both their matches now. The Stingers in a really well placed uh, in Group A, which is a tough group, but uh, they have really given themselves a massive leg up with that win over the Netherlands. In the swimming heats tonight, Maddie Wilson has progressed uh, to the semi finals of the women's 200 metre freestyle. So too is Ariane Titmus, uh, came first in her heat, and they've qualified third and fourth. Fourth and fifth, respectively, um, for the semi finals there. In the men's 200 metre butterfly, unfortunately, David Morgan had a really tough night uh, and spoke after the race about feeling like he'd hit a wall and, and almost dropped dead, um, metaphorically, of course, not literally, but uh, he was really struggling and labouring at the end of that. Matt Temple wasn't able to progress either. Uh, Sky Nicholson's a great story. Um, on a split decision, 4 1, she beat Korea's, South Korea's IGM uh, and is now just one win away from being in medal contention. So that's a fantastic story. 29 years after her late brother um, competed at Barcelona. So that's a beautiful story coming out of today. Uh, Gronje Somerville and Satanya Mapasa, unfortunately in the women's badminton doubles, uh, lost their game to China. Uh, and in Australia, the Aussie spirit were knocked out of the softball by Mexico and won't make that bronze medal match. Uh, they were beaten 4-1 by Mexico in their first ever Olympics, and that's the last we'll see of softball for the foreseeable future. It won't be at France. Matty Goff and Kaya Melvin have both qualified 8th and 9th, 7th uh, and 8th, I should say, so they'll be in lane 1 and 8, respectively, for Wednesday's 1,500-metre women's freestyle as well. So that is you up to date on how every Australian went today. And when we come back, we'll have a look at what's in store for the Aussies tomorrow. Powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game-changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility, while the high-back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer today. Purchase any 4 and 20 product from anywhere 4 and 20 is sold for an opportunity to win four PS5s. One for you and your three best mates. Together you'll go head to head in a game of Fortnite with your AFL dream team. Plus a 4 and 20 branded Sharon footy to be won daily. TNC supply. See FNTAFLGameOn.com.au It's 31 8, 21. Retain receipts or wrappers. NSWTP slash 00896 ACT TP 21 slash 00450 SAT 21 slash 420. From badminton to basketball, all the way to backstroke. Sporting dreams start at Rebel. Shop the biggest range with the best brands in store or at rebelsport.com today. Rebel. Sport is calling. Hi, I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here, so our team really understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. For over 60 years, Bailey Ladders have been making work sites safer and their new range is no exception. The new Bailey 3-in-1 ladder easily changes from step to a leaning to a straight ladder. Bailey Ladders bringing safety and efficiency to the work site. baileyladders.com.au SEN's night session coverage of the Olympic Games 2020 for tyre panel. Get a grip on tyre safety. Book your five-minute tyre safety check at Tyre Power now. That moment of you uh, shaking the thing like the ultimate warrior on the on the ring ropes, is that what it was? Yes, he's my favourite. I used to follow him. My brother was, um, um, I can't remember who he was. I was uh, the ultimate warrior. I used to wrestle at home when I was around about 10. He was my favourite and he died. He passed away. I just loved him. I loved the ultimate warrior. That shot, that's gone crazy around the world. Like I oh, just, really? The New York Times has just said, uh, oh, really? can I please have what Dean Boxall's on? That's, that's their headline. <laughs> <laughs> it just came out. I, I just... Uh, you know, I built it up from trials. It was coming through. And then when I saw the, you know, the race unfolding, I just, I, I couldn't keep it in. Um, I need to apologise because I actually took my muscle by mistake and it ripped. And uh, I just lost it in the moment. 
Dean Boxall, that's his explanation of the wild <laughs> celebrations. I hadn't heard that when I made the Ultimate Warrior reference before, but that's exactly who he was channeling. So that makes sense now. Um, but uh, that has gone viral all around the world. New York Times, uh, that's extraordinary. Uh, I did say we'd bring you just a little bit of Dean Boxall, Ariane Titmus's coach, uh, and there it is. So what's in store for us tomorrow before we finish up? So this isn't chronologically, this is just by sport in alphabetically, which I could have done the, the rap in all seriousness, I probably could have done the rap by sport, but I did it in chronological order in case you'd miss it for the day. We might change that for tomorrow unless you like it like that. You just let me know. 0433 98 11 16 on the temper text. So sailing tomorrow continues. In the women's skiff, uh, the 49er FX, Tess Lloyd and Jamie Ryan have got their second and third races uh, in the shooting. So plenty on in the shooting. The mixed team's 10-metre air pistol, qualification stages, uh, Daniel Repicholi and Dina Aspandiarova uh, in that. Um, and the 10 metre air pistol in the women uh, in the mixed teams 10 metre air rifle qualification stages one and two Alex Hoberg and Elise Collier um, in the surfing men's quarter final action tomorrow morning um, before 10 o'clock Owen Wright goes up against uh, Lucas Messinas from Peru and Sally Fitzgibbons after midday against uh, Amuro Suzuki uh, from Japan so going up against the local uh, always tough uh in the swimming, we've got the final of the men's 100-metre backstroke. Mitch Larkin is in medal contention there. And also, Kaylee McEwen and Emily Seabom in the women's 100-metre backstroke. Both of those will happen before midday. Uh, also in the swimming tomorrow, we've got heats of the 100-metre freestyle. Kyle Chalmers gets uh, his campaign off and running to defend his gold medal from Rio. Cam McAvoy in the heats of that as well. In the men's 200 breaststroke, Zach Stubbledy cook and Matt Wilson in action. The men's 4x200-metre freestyle relay. Uh, the men's 800-metre freestyle silver medalist Jack McLaughlin will compete in that in the heats. The women's 200-metre butterfly, Brianna Throssell. Uh, and in the women's 200-metre freestyle, Ariane Titmus, the semi-final for her. And Maddie Wilson, her semi-final as well. In table tennis, round three, the six-time Olympian. I'm telling you, follow this story. Something big is building here. Jian Fang Lei will take on Ying Han from Germany. Uh, looking forward to that. And the women's taekwondo, Reba Stewart is in action in the 70, uh, 67 kilo division. Tennis schedule hasn't been finalised yet, but should be out tomorrow morning. Early, early tomorrow morning, around 7.30, the women's individual triathlon. Ashley Gentle. Jazz Hedgeland and Emma Jeffcoat in action there. So good luck to our girls. We've got strong representation there. Uh, in the water polo tomorrow, our men in need of a win. They take on Croatia. And weightlifting tomorrow, the women's 59-kilogram Group B final. Uh, Erica Yama Yamasaki. Uh, and in the women's 64-kilogram in the Group B final, uh, Kiana Elliott will uh, represent Australia there. So... I reckon we are pretty much all up to speed um, by what's happened today. Um, some audio that uh, you may not have heard throughout the course uh, of the evening, which I'll uh, bring you a little bit on now. Uh, it's a big day uh, tomorrow as well when we're looking at the canoe. I forgot to mention uh, straight off the top. Oh, I missed a couple here. Uh, so the women's canoe tomorrow, the semi-final, Jess Fox, who uh, qualified fastest in her heat, is through to the semi-finals. She spoke to Channel 7 just reflecting on her performance from day one. Yeah, good start to day one, and the goal was to make it into that top 24. So um, the course changes between now and, and the semis, but it's still good to get that feel and to and to build on each run. So I had a good first run, but I'm happy with that second run. It felt really nice and smooth and, and went a bit faster. Uh, so Jess Fox, so this is going to be... So silver in this at London in 2012, bronze in this event in Rio in 2016, this could just be the year in the K1. The C1 is actually her better event. Uh, she's won multiple world... Uh, m most of her world championships or more of her world championships have come in the C1 as opposed to the K1. She's a star in both, but this is the first time the Olympics have had the C1. So... Um, it, it could be double gold in offer, on offer for Jess Fox. And I've got, a, I've got a real feeling that it is going to be our female athletes, our women that are going to 
really carry the load when it comes to gold medals. I think the majority of our gold medals will be won uh, by the women at this year's Olympics, and, and Jess Fox is right in contention for that. And I, I just get the feeling that she might be another one of the moments like Ariane Titmus, uh, uh, the hopes of a nation moment. There's going to be different ones of those throughout the course um, throughout the course of um, throughout the course of the Olympics. And I think that she might end up being another one. Uh, James Duckworth, who is still alive in the singles, uh, he's our only singles rep still left. He takes on Karen Kachanov from Russia in round two of the singles action. So uh, that's that's good to see. Um, 0433981116, just off the text. Uh, hi, Michael from Sydney here. I admire the Olympic athletes, in particular those participating in individual sports, whereas athletes competing in regular or yearly competitions can fulfil their hopes and goals. So many Olympians train and dedicate themselves for four years to their preferred sport with no guarantee they will even gain Olympic selection. Uh, yeah, it is one of the great things, and it is something we should absolutely admire, especially from sports that don't get a heap of funding. Um you know, the, the, it is truly a passion project for many, many Olympians. This is not about financial reward, and certainly in Australia, because we we don't really um, reward uh, our individual athletes financially after winning gold. Some countries will give a million dollars to an athlete. I think Tokyo, I think Japan are giving a million dollars to anyone who uh, wins a gold medal. So, yeah, I think you, you, you bang on the money there about... Uh, I suppose, what it means and the essence of it all. And basketball uh, tomorrow, uh, the Opals are in action against Belgium. So that's uh, tomorrow night. So I'll be bringing you some of that action when I rejoin you. So heaps on the agenda. Don't forget to check your local guides wherever you're listening around Australia. Your local host uh, will be with you from uh, 9 or 10 o'clock tomorrow uh, to take you through the day schedule, and I'll be back for the night schedule as well. It's been wonderful to have your company. Have a great night. Stay safe. We do it all for Mate Communications Zero and for Thai Power. Powered by over 100 years of innovation, Toro's all-new battery ride-on mower is a game-changer. Get maximum performance and go the distance with up to two hours runtime on a single charge of the 72-volt battery. The tight turning circle, reverse mowing options and multiple cutting heights provide extra agility, while the high-back adjustable seat is built for comfort and support. With zero engine exhaust emissions, this quiet achiever is set to take the fuel by storm. Race into your nearest Toro dealer today. Day. Oh, we've been there for every game of four and twenty-five. When meat and pie were cooked in a green and save that dry. When Brownie takes one for the team and brand we skated by. This golden crusty pastry watched us tailor kick the sky. When Ben Simmons makes a three, we give a big high five. What future sport looks like just won't be right without a pie. Oh, what a lovely pie. Hi, this is Cameron Zerha, and you're listening to AFL Exchange with Riley, Cow, and Mitch. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome. AFL Exchange is back on your Monday night. Mitch Cleary and Riley Beveridge with you. You went early there on the hello and welcome. Let the drums roll. No, nah, just trying to get excited. I'm excited tonight because I want to reveal the two senior coaches that have been listening to this show and taking advice from this very platform. That's to come later in the show, as well as the most extraordinary piece of Adam Trelaw audio we've brought to the table. <laughs> This year. This has never been heard before. It's a sneak peek of what is to come in yes. a massive interview to drop later in the week on afl.com.au. That, well, that is what you need to stick around for. Mm. No Carl again today. I think he's just warming up for the live show in a couple of weeks, Riles, which has yes. been rescheduled. Take us through that. It has been, yeah. Obviously, COVID-19 impacting us all in a number of ways. The Melbourne Podcast Festival has had to postpone all of the tickets. If you've got a ticket, if you had a ticket for the show that was due to be this Saturday, hold on to your ticket because uh, you will be eligible to go to our rescheduled show, which will be on Sunday the 19th of September, the week before Grand Final Week. So on that Sunday, we will know who is in the Grand Final. We'll be talking about that. And more, you can get your tickets at the moment. They are live uh, at melbournepodcastfestival.com. So get your tickets to that show. If you've already got tickets, hold on to them. Uh, if you can't make it to the new date, um, 
you will be refunded. You can go to melbournepodcastfestival.com and you can find out all the details there. There's more info on our Instagram and Twitter as well, at AFL Exchange. The best part of this is that you're actually going to be there. So for those that got a little <laughs> sneak peek on the weekend on our Instagram, we posted the original post from mm. the Melbourne Podcast Festival. It had Mitch Clutery and Cal Toomey, and we were getting inundated with questions, has Riley been soft-dropped? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Well, I was actually... Um, late notice due to go to one of my best friend's Bucks weekends this weekend. Uh, so would, would have had to pull out had the podcast festival not been postponed. So all of our lucky listeners have got me covered now. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be seeing me live and in the flesh if they do go to a new rescheduled show. Is the Bucks party still going ahead this weekend? Uh, TBD, depending on mm. lockdown restrictions, it'll get announced tomorrow. Fingers crossed. All right, stick with us for the next bit. Heaps to get through. First up, though, <laughs> what did the weekend teach us about Carlton? I think it taught us a few things. Uh, I think, firstly, every legitimate criticism that you can make with the way Carlton plays and the deficiencies within Carlton's system were exposed to the fullest extent and in the most brutal fashion yet on Saturday. And I think part of that is because they were exposed because they were probably the, it's probably the worst Carlton's played all season. And part of it was because of the ease in which North Melbourne, a side that has won, I think we mentioned last week, three of its last 40-odd games yeah. and sits on the bottom of the ladder, were man- able to be the team that exposed them. So conceding points from their back half, uh, conceding points from turnover, the lack of pressure in the midfield, um, their inability to find a target forward of the ball with Harry Mackay out of the game, all of it was exposed. Um and I think the other thing that, that really it was really noticeable on the weekend was just how badly, and, and you can get to where they are in terms of their list position, but just how badly they need a midfielder and a solid, mm. proven, dependable midfielder at this year's trade period. And I want to ask you this, Micho. Harry Mackay goes out of the team. Patrick Cripps plays forward. So take Patrick Cripps out of the equation. Yep. Sam, Sam Walsh is the best midfielder on the ground out of the, the remaining midfielders on the weekend. Yep. Where is the next Carlton player ranked? Because I'd take Simpkin, I'd take Cunnington, I'd take yeah. Luke Davies Uniac, I'd take Taran Thomas, I'd take probably Trent DeMont. You'd almost consider taking Will Phillips probably ahead of the next. So who is the next Carlton midfielder behind Sam Walsh on Saturday? And where do they rank in terms yep. of the best midfielders on the ground? Well, Matt Kennedy just hung on at the end of last year. actually got delisted mm. and re rookied for a spot. And he's come good, I'm sure, in the last uh, four to six weeks. Boys fans would agree with that. But... He's been required to step up in there with Cripps spending a bit more time forward on the weekend. Then you've got Ed Kerno. Then it falls away. Will Setterfield's injured. Paddy Dow's good on the weekend in the moments that he got the ball. He's got some downfalls in his game, but he's, he's been improved. But North Melbourne's the bottom side on the ladder, and they yep. might very well, even despite winning on the weekend, finish bottom of the ladder. And their midfield, I think even if you had Cripps playing 100% midfield time, is and was a lot better and a lot deeper than Carlton's. Yeah, absolutely. It was extraordinary to think that North Melbourne was playing on the weekend to avoid the wooden spoon and they came out with more vigour than Carlton who were fighting for basically their season on the line. That was, they lose that, they're out of the finals race. I know it would have been an uphill battle mm. anyway, but they win that, put a bit of percentage on the ruse on the weekend and we're all of a sudden sitting here talking about with what else happened on the weekend as well, that Carlton could be a sniff to make the finals. Well, well do you know what, and this is the regrettable thing for Carlton, they're going to play St Kilda on Friday night. If they'd have beaten North, who are on the bottom of the ladder, the winner of that Carlton St Kilda game would have gone into the top eight. As of Friday night. Even momentarily. <laughs> yeah. but Carlton wins that North Melbourne game. They go in this weekend with a chance to finish the weekend in the eight. But they lose to the bottom play side on the ladder. Another regrettable performance. And they're nowhere near it. The other thing I learned as well on the weekend, there's no plan B in the coach's box, or it took too long to see it. So as you said, no Harry Mackay we learned all week, or they would have prepared all week to have no Harry Mackay with that toe injury. Cripp starts forward, they start bombing the ball on his head. It clearly wasn't working in the first five minutes. Um, it looked like they were going to swap Kennedy and Cripps. Mm. There was no other thought as to how they're going to move the ball inside 50. And then off the back of that, if you've got no forward prowess and you've got no presence in attack, why defend the way you did? Why not set up further behind the ball? They just leak too many goals, as you said, from the Roos back half. And the other thing the weekend taught me about the boys is that Zach Williams needs the preseason of his life. Yeah. Another soft tissue injury for him. He came in underdone at the start of the year. Um, two or three weeks, they're saying, tonight, touch and go with we see him again this year. He needs to be there the day after trade period, uh, you know, six weeks before he's even required at the club 
to yeah. train the house down and, and make sure he's a starting midfielder next year. If he wants to be a midfielder, that's correct. And, and Carlton still has well, plans he, for him to be. He's, he told them in the last year he wanted to be, so yeah. let's see it. And I don't think that's changed Carlton's mind either. I think they... I think Carlton believes he will be a midfielder long term okay. going forward. He's had this year, he went back to get a bit of confidence. The other thing I think you've got to take into account, the review that's going on at the moment, that'll make an unemotional decision about what's best for the football club going forward. I think there's been a lot of commentary in the last 24, 48 hours about what this means for David Teague. I don't think it changes what's happened with David Teague, what, what will happen with David Teague at the end of the year. That, that one solitary game. Okay, that one solitary game. What if it's. Three, four losses to finish the season. Yeah, then potentially. But yeah. you got to remember, last week they beat Collingwood and everyone was saying that they'd fix the defence, they'd, they were starting to play a more sustainable brand. 24 hours, that was on, that was on Friday. 24 hours later, their mm. fatigue's gone, there's no hope he stays next year. I, I don't think it'll come down to that at the end of the day. Yeah, I just don't know how. You get through that game on the weekend, preparing for everything you did with no Mackay, no big targets in attack, no Kerno, no Casbolt, all these guys... And you still leak 100 points against the, the bottom side. The eighth time this year, Carlton have done that. Yeah. To a lesser extent, I don't think you can. I don't think this is an excuse for their performance. But they just released their injury list early today. 16 mm. players out at the moment. That's not including Charlie Kerner, who I'll probably expect to come back this weekend. Yeah. Then you get, now the way I look at that on the weekend as well is you got Aiden Core and Robbie Tarrant missing for the ruse. So if you put two of Carlton's best key forwards in, you put two of Ruse's best defenders in. That might equal it out a, a little more. Yeah, I think there's a lot. There's, I, know, I know there's a lot more. Yeah, the, 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 the depth of talent. That's... But this is a ruse we were talking about. Oh, no, no, I, I, of... I, that's why I said I don't think it can be used yeah. as an excuse. I think that's probably part of the discussion around the, the football department review. Yeah. You've got to review what's happening with these injuries and why they continue to happen and continue to mount. Yeah. From one end of the spectrum to the other, Micho, Geelong, had a massive win on Sunday over Richmond. That game was done at half time thanks to a five goal to nothing second term. Is it their flag to lose? It's a great question. I think... You wrote it. So. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to think through as to... I think it's down to Geelong and the Western Bulldogs now. I think we saw enough from Melbourne on the weekend, their lack of forward uh, firepower that suggests it's down to the, the dogs and cats. I don't know, I think we can trust Melbourne in a big prelim to come up with a winning score, especially against a, a Geelong defence that we saw on the weekend. Paddy Dangerfield is looming perfectly. Jack Henry's impressed me as an actual key defender. Mm. I think Reece Stanley's come in and at least provided a contest, which allows Mark Witsav to play in defence. Um, as for the dogs, well, Alex Keith, that hamstring is going to be a massive blow for them. We'll get to more on Josh Shackey a little later. But Issa Wood comes back. I'm really keen to see how they cover those uh, key targets. So in terms of Geelong, if it's this year, then I can't see it being any other year at the Cats. You know, Joel Sold and Tom Hawkins are both 33. Are you saying now or never? Yeah, I know we've been going on that for a long time now, but the, the young kids are, are solid at Geelong, but I just don't see them taking that leap like the, the other generation of Cats did. So you've got Hawkins and Selwood there, 33. Are they going to be able to do that at 34? They're still both super important to that lineup. They've got Duncan and Cameron to come back in. I, I think in terms of what Geelong is looking at, it's theirs to lose. Uh, as for the Dogs, well, they're right in the hunt, but they've got a couple of years up their sleeve with the list they've got. Yeah, I completely agree. At the moment, they look like the most complete side, though, Geelong. Yeah. So 10 wins from their last 11 games. Book ended nicely against Richmond. They beat Richmond by 63 points in May. That started this run. They beat them by 38, I think it was, on Sunday. That that's continued this run. Just across the board, you mentioned their, their back line, which I think on paper you'd probably say it's the weakest line that they've got. And that's not to say it's a weak line, just on paper compared to their midfield and their yeah. forward line. They've conceded three first-half goals in the last three <laughs> weeks. Yeah. Um, so I think it was Fremantle, Carlton, and then Richmond. They've only conceded one goal in each first half in each of those games. Um, it was Corbin that actually put that stat up on He loves on his Twitter. stats, Corbin. Good man. Um, then you've got a midfield that you mentioned Dangerfield's coming on at the right time, isn't he? I mean, he's missed a lot of footy this year with that Cinders Moses, but he's been awesome the last month. And you can't forget his groin injury hampered him yeah. in the lead-up to this season. So that groin might have just... The extra Cinders Moses, seven or eight weeks that he missed, might have just allowed him to get his body right in other areas. Yeah. And then, as you mentioned, we've got the three guys up forward and in, in Cameron, uh, Hawkins and, and Rowan. And then you throw in another guy who kicked four yesterday. Yep. Someone that Oof. you <laughs> were paying close attention to on the boundary. Go on, explain it. Big Sav. 
Oh, well, he hurt his knee. He was getting oh, I thought he was and... done. He, he limped around. He was going up, running up and down the race. I've so. never seen a boundary rider move faster than Mitch <laughs> did to get to the fence to peer over and have a look at what was going on with Sav. He just wanted a two-year deal. I was a bit worried <laughs> that he was uh, going to be facing a serious knee injury. Had the tape. I, I've never seen so much a last to pass on one, t- on one knee. So did you hear what, what Chris Scott said yeah. after the game? He just ripped it off. He just ripped it off because he felt uncomfortable with it at half time. So. And he was falling for marks as good as you've seen in the yeah. second half. Kick four. They can't play with him. And Stanley, when Cameron comes back, though, can they? No. Well, no, not the same team. Just because the radical is flying for the same balls that Cameron will be. Yeah. So it's going to be delicate to see what they do. But then does Stanley, is he a guaranteed lock or they want Radigalia well, in a, that Well, that's right? the question. I think it comes down to Stanley or, or Radigalia. I thought both were pretty good yesterday. Yeah. I, I think by Stanley playing the ruck, it allows Blitzarves to play more minutes in defence, which, you know, I've been big on. Just on the Dogs' defence, they've actually conceded pretty much the same points as Melbourne this year. So we've all questioned the names and the Dogs' back line, whether it's going to be good enough to stand up. Mm. It is standing up pretty well at the moment. Keith is going to challenge it by going out of that team. But Lever, May, Hibbard, all these guys we've spoken about having... Awesome seasons at the Demons. Um, I just think the Dogs' defence has held up 20 weeks in now as well as you could have expected. So who have they got in the next month? Adelaide, Essendon, Hawthorne and Port Adelaide. And they don't play Port Adelaide for another four weeks. So yeah. it's a relatively... They might get through and need and get Keith back for that last exactly. game. Exactly. So it's a relatively Dixon. good three games to have while yep. Keith sidelined.
overnight crowd on SEN. Should we go with the rising star now? Yeah, why not? 24 disposals, six tackles on the weekend. An up-and-comer at the Adelaide Footy Club. Harry Schoenberg is this week's Round 19 NAB AFL Rising Star nominee. Good footballer, isn't he? Yeah. Like, just a natural... He's tough. Yeah. Not bad for a pick 24. As you mentioned, I think he had six score involvements, lost eight score involvements, six tackles on the weekend. Tough. Can tag. Had a bit of a tagging role last month or so. Yep. Um, got the body to play senior footy, so... He's got a good burst away from the stoppage. Sort of compliments nice to what they're building around him with Sam Berry and, you know, Luke Pedler will get more game time around there. I think the Crows were stoked to get him. South Australian kid, what did you say, pick 24 yep. at that time. So um, it looks like a nice piece in their future. Yep. Our man as well, Pat Reverdy. Padre Reverdy. Oh, he was good on the weekend. 29 touches. Did that sew it up for Draken? Cody, as Cal wrote in his nine things we learned on the weekend, Cody Waitman's putting to get together a nice little case. Probably hasn't played the it? game. Yeah, that, that's my one query with Cody. Yeah. And then Mitch Georgiatis as well. Yeah. Do you know who's, do you know who's never going to be in the conversation, but I genuinely think should be top three? James Jordan. Yeah, you've been big on him. He's getting 20 every week in a Melbourne midfield that's firing. Yeah. Kept his place every game. It was a shock that he played round one. When the, they pretty much had a full midfield to pick from. Yeah. So, yeah, he's been awesome. I find that very intriguing. All right, next one. He'll be overshadowed by Luke Jackson, though, in terms of a Melbourne contender for the... He's been a bit quiet the last couple of weeks, Luke Jackson, but I still think he's super important to what they do. Going forward, Rolls, this FaceTime pandemic is getting out of control at the moment. I've seen, I've seen Harry Taylor in the Geelong huddle, in the Geelong circle a few weeks ago because he couldn't get into the rooms due to the uh, lockout in WA. Mm. So he's in the crowd... Realised he couldn't get into the room, so they FaceTimed him, held him in, in the song. Then on the weekend, Josh Dunkley was in the Bulldogs team song on someone's phone on FaceTime because he couldn't get in. He was at home in isolation for 14 days. If you could FaceTime someone in the song, who would it be? Well, this depends. Like, who am I playing for? Anyone. Because if I was, like, I'm thinking, if I was playing for, like, North Melbourne, for example, and my mate James is a, a nuffy North Melbourne fan, so okay. it'd be him. But, like, if I'm playing for... <laughs> Any other side, if it's, my, if it's my first win, you, you're probably calling your mum and your dad, aren't you? Yeah. Having them in there. If, if I'm playing for Geelong, I'm calling you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've seen enough. <laughs> Depends who I'm playing for. I think someone from overseas would be pretty cool. And I think this is an opportunity for clubs to open it up to competitions or members. Okay. So clubs will have a sort of marketing opportunity with these sort of things. So I'm thinking uh, the FaceTime thing that the, the cats and the dogs and a few clubs in recent weeks have stumbled across. Remember uh, Simon Leth Lang was, I think, FaceTiming Ruffy last year a few times. He wasn't yes. actually in the song, but was in the room. Mm. Uh, I think clubs might be able to jump at those sort of opportunities. Yeah. Hit us yeah, up on Instagram. Want to do, like, raffle it out and get a membership thing going. Yeah. Hit us up at AFL Exchange on Instagram. Who should be in there? All right, Mitchell, round one next year. Who is Collingwood's captain and coach? Well, I raised Jeremy Howe's name last week on Exchange Extra as an option. Mm. But looking at it, he'll be 32 mid next year. I think it's the chance you're for You're already backing would... down. Well, I, you I think three he's... days and you've backed down. <laughs> I, I well, think so he's... what's changed in the last three days? Oh, he's I realize... playing this week. Yeah, I, he is. <laughs> Can't wait to see him back after that hammy. He'll be flying for marks. But the fact I realise he's 32, I thought he was a, you know, probably 29, 30 year old. So he's... <laughs> Time might have caught up with him a bit to get the full-time captaincy. And that's why I think the Pies should do what Hawthorne failed to do at the start of this year and, and give it to Taylor Adams, who's 28. Mm. The Hawks had the opportunity to give it to Jager, Tom Mitchell, one of these guys, uh, and didn't do it. I think Adams can be there for the next three or four years and really see this next frontier through for the Collingwood Footy Club. And as for the coach, well, if you had asked me a couple of weeks ago, I was, would have said Brad Scott was a serious outsider. I, I think people at Collingwood are warming to him, and I think he's warming to the job compared to what he was two or three weeks ago. I think Brad, Brad Scott, Scott, from people I've spoken to around this, he's a lot more open to coaching Collingwood than he was a month ago. You'd have to be in contention for Steve Hawking's job. Yeah, so it's a matter of what do you want. They always say that, you know, these old school coaches, the coaching bug doesn't leave your roles. Does he get the chance to go back to Collingwood? He spent three years under Mick. Yeah, maybe. It'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Do, do they know? Does Collingwood know? Who they want? Yeah. I don't think so. That's why they're going through this process. And, and I, you know, clubs often talk about processes and them just being a bit of a boat race. I think this is a process that genuinely they want to uncover someone. That's that's my thought as well. I get the sense, chatting to a few people, that 
they're not set on like whether or not they want a proven coach like a Brad Scott or whether or not they want the best young assistant coming through like Adam Kingsley. Yeah. Um, so I think there's yeah, – I'm not sure who, who they'd if, – if they're necessarily set on any one particular de- direction in general, which is interesting. Because Clarko won't be there next year. At the Pies? Ross Lyons ruled himself out. Yeah. Let's say, let, let's say it all goes pear-shaped at, at Carlton. I wouldn't be ruling out Ross or the Blues. No. Me neither. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm with you in terms of Taylor Adams. I think he's almost nailed on to be their next coach. Yeah. Next captain, sorry. Because that would be a good effort. <laughs> Imagine that if they appointed Captain coach come back. Appointed Tay. Um, bring a bit of passion to that role. Yes. Yes, he would. Uh, next one. Who are the players who've had stronger second halves of the year than their first? I was devastated to learn uh, earlier today that Taran Thomas won't play this week. Yeah. Mostly because I've enjoyed watching him play so much. A little part of me because I was planning a, a big <laughs> yeah. story on Taran this week. And, Didn't hear that in the news meeting this morning? <laughs> and I, I rang a lot of people in terms of making calls to get a bit of background on the story and just where his form improvements come from. Since round eight... Will it hold for another week? Yeah, well, Since round eight... Every other journal in town is about to write it. <laughs> he's averaged 19.5 disposals and 1.5 goals per game. Yeah. There wouldn't be many... Averaging those type of numbers in the comp, I reckon, in terms of mid forwards, he's become a player, hasn't he? He's he can play a bit. Cal, yeah. Cal enjoy that listening to the show. Um, the other thing that I love about Tara, and I think this might be the rugby background, is his pressure is unbelievable. Yeah. It's gone to another level this year. And David Doble actually mentioned it in the post game presser on Saturday that he's a player now that has found ways to stay in the game. So if he's not playing midfield and like he's that. gone forward. He's found ways of keeping himself in the game, and that's what's led to him averaging 1.5 goals per game over the last 10 weeks. Uh, when he's in the midfield, he's working back so hard defensively now that he's getting his hands on the ball more because if you're willing to work hard defensively, you're going to win more of the footy. So that's led to it. Before round eight, he'd never had 20 touches in a game, and I think he's done it five or six times in the last eight weeks. What's he ceiling? Well, here's an interesting one for you. Sam Walsh is the best player in that draft. Is, is he, has he ha- Harsh on the lizard. Uh, has he... Put himself ahead of Connor Rosie as number two. Hmm. He's having a better year. He's having a better year than Connor Rosie. Yeah, we'll give you that. Connor Rosie's been hampered a bit by injury. Yeah, it's um, it needs a clean run at it. But yeah, on, on this year's form, Taran definitely. Has been. If you, I think you were going to, everyone loves their old re-rank, but he'd be up there. He'd be top three for sure. Yeah, I reckon at the moment. Um, Bailey Smith as well in that conversation. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah, probably right. Bailey's probably two or three. Um, and Max King only took eight contested marks on the weekend. <laughs> we can, uh, you can talk. We can talk. We can do hours on that on that draft. Um, the other one, Jack Steele. Uh, so I, I look after our Brownlow predictor articles on this website, afl.com.au. He was predicted to poll four votes from his first ten games. Right. Uh, and he's been predicted to poll eighteen from his next seven. Okay. So he's currently second, I think, in that. Is he one of those guys that needs that first year of prominence for everyone to realise who he is and he might come with a rush in his second year? I think his first half of the year might might hurt him a little bit, though. Will he, will he snag a one or two voter here and there? Potentially. I, I don't think you're probably, you're probably not stopping Bonte. No, hmm. not at this stage. But he does fall into that category you've been speaking about, which we'll get to another category in a moment. Uh, I had Max King down as well as, as players who had stronger second halves than they did first. Uh, Max King did kick a bag against West Coast earlier in the in the year, but he just looks a more confident player uh, in the last couple of weeks. His goal kicking has gone to uh, the next level. Um, just when he gets the ball, you just feel uh, you can trust him a bit. Oscar McInerney as well. I know I was big on this at the start of the year. Big O. Brisbane making a mistake, trading Steph Martin. <laughs> Could still be proven right, you never know. But he has become a serious player at Brisbane. Ten yeah. coaches' votes on the weekend. He is a big part in swinging that game for Brisbane against Gold Coast. I know the, the Suns didn't have much in the ruck, but Big O enforced himself on that game and uh, got the other midfielders into it. And just one from left field, George Hewitt at Sydney. Really strong last five or six weeks. Yeah. A bit more opportunity in that midfield for him. Um, I think last year the Swans chopped him around a little bit as a pre-agent, so he had one year to run on his contract for this year. He's restricted, which means he's in the top 25% of earners, so um, there'll be a bit of money on this year's contract for George Hewitt, but he's earning it at the moment, and he's had a few good weeks. Even I think he had a 16-17 disposal game against the Bulldogs a couple of weeks ago, but did some jobs on yep. McRae and Liberatore stoppages. Started his career as a tagger, didn't yep. he? And had a really good period as a tagger. Yeah, so uh, yeah, just a couple of players, and 
Um, you speak about the Swans, you know, we were talking about whether they make the eight only, what was it, five or six weeks ago. They're a show for the top four now. Yeah. If Port or Brisbane have a stumble in them somewhere. A remarkable turnaround. Yeah. I spoke to John Longmire before the season where he, and he was talking about how this was a, almost a tougher test than when they were one and two in terms of rebuilding and getting them back into finals. Okay. I don't think he could have foreseen what no. they've managed to do this year. He's a good coach, isn't he? You would love to play for him. Yeah. Especially when you watch that vision of them pre-game. Yeah. Last week, when he's <laughs> yeah. bringing in the inclusions and they're getting all up and about. Jeez, he's a good coach. Micho. The Amati party's re for two years as well. Yeah, I couldn't believe he was dropped on the weekend. Yeah, was it rested or dropped? Was well, it soft? It's that, it's that omitted, but he might have been managed because sometimes they come through and the press, is, press release is omitted, but then on the club websites it was managed. The Amati party soft drop. Maybe it was that one to Sam Reid in there who was quiet for stages of that game. Mm. Has there ever been a player that spends the last two minutes of a game in their opposite position more than Sam Reid? <laughs> He's the perfect that you mean. They just throw him behind the footy. <laughs> the last two minutes of every quarter. Yeah. Anyway, Mitchell, who are some of the players that we forget were delisted early in their AFL careers? Loved your piece on Ed Kerno on the weekend. He's 200th game. A pity the Blues didn't show up for it on the weekend. But uh, you did remind me in that piece that he was delisted at Adelaide yeah. all those years ago. He, I couldn't even remember that. Um, Spent the 2008 season at Adelaide. Yeah. And then had two seasons on Box Hill's list after that. But that 2008 season in Adelaide, we spoke to him earlier last week and he had a bit of a joke that he wasn't even in Glenelg's senior side when he was on Adelaide's list. That's how bad he was tracking. And there were some days when he said Adelaide, he, I'm not sure, he sort of said it in a joking way. So I'm not sure if he was half serious or not. But he said there were some days that Adelaide didn't let him train with the senior team because that's how far back he was. Wow. Just while I think of reserves at Sandford level, Cooper Sharman debuted on the weekend for St Kilda. They picked him up in the mid-season draft. Yeah. He played six games for Woodville, West Torrens, mm. Sandford reserves team yeah. at the start of the year. Now he's an AFL footballer. <laughs> that is the beauty of the mid-season draft yeah. and how quickly those things can turn. Tim Membry was delisted at Sydney. Now he's a vice-captain at St Kilda. That's right. Um, you forget about Tim Membry, don't you? Yeah. Like that, that couple of... Because he played some games at Sydney. Yeah, he played a game. I reckon just he debuted one? on a Friday night. Yes. Was Maybe it just one a, or... Was it laid in for Buddy, potentially? Did he just Buddy play one play more? Maybe more. I don't know. I'll check that out. Mm. Um, Dylan Moore and James Jordan. I know I've banged oh, on it. <laughs> I've banged on it. Someone took us to task on the weekend. <laughs> Dylan Moore, 25 touches oh, just quietly <laughs> for Hawthorne. Um... I mentioned Dylan Moore's first quarter a couple of times this year. People still can't, in the West still can't get over uh, the Jack Darling and the disrespect we've shown him. He kicked five and a quarter uh, as well. <laughs> and you said that Dylan Moore's was better. <laughs> um, John Segler at Collingwood. Yeah. He was delisted and then picked up by the Hawks and he's doing good things. Um, I'll have a look at the team memory. Have you got any others? One meter Peter. Yeah. Peter he delisted, delisted by oh. Fremantle before he went to North Melbourne. Uh not a bad career. Oh, said in, Peter Wright for a second. No, one metre Peter. Yeah. Ended up going on to play 286 games and won two flags. That's my favourite. That's an extraordinary career. <laughs> I know, after being delisted. Was there a technicality in that delisting to get him there or something like that? To get to, I don't know, I just yeah. saw that he was delisted. <laughs> I'll include him. Tim Memory played one game for Sydney in 2014. It was a Friday night, wasn't it? Went goalless. Yeah. Uh, just some others as well. Will Snelling delisted at Port. Sam Menegola delisted at Hawthorne Frio. That's right. Dylan Robertson delisted at Frio, and Joel Hamling was delisted at Geelong before becoming a Western Bulldogs Premiership player. Then got a lucrative contract at the Dockers. Nick Holman, yeah, resurrected his career at Gold Coast. Yeah, got a new deal for next year as well. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting story out of the US overnight roles. Yes, Andy Benoit, former sports writer for the Sports Illustrated, New York Times, and CBS Sports. Mm. Hide under Sean McVay at the LA Rams. McVay, the head coach, he's yeah. going to work under him as an assistant. This is our dream. Imagine, imagine you getting a job at... Well, I reckon the Cats might have to change their senior coach if... <laughs> if you're, well, hang on, we'll get to that. If you're getting a gig as, uh, if you as could, Chris Scott's assistant. If you could choose one job in a footy department, what would it be? I think everyone would love to be a list manager, wouldn't they? Yeah, that's... But you know, yeah. I'd love to like um, write my stipulations in that I'm <laughs> I'm the list manager and I'll, I'll look after the list decisions, but someone else can take care of TPP. <laughs> I don't want to do the numbers. I'll just bring the players in and get them out, and you can deal with all the other stuff. So a pro scout, stuff. basically, you go around, watch games on the weekend, yeah. go and sit in the stands, chat to families and managers and things like that. Yeah, check out all the canteens around the country. Yeah. Also, is it 
It's harder than what we make out as well. There's a few people at football clubs that I'm not sure exactly what they do, but like they're always the ones, like I'm sure they have another job aside from these, but they're always the ones that are standing behind the goals at the end of training, kicking balls to blokes as they're having shots. They've got other stuff. So of course they've got other stuff. But if they do want to create some place, like some little extra bit in the soft cap for me just to be kicking the balls back to footy players, I'd, I'd do that. Okay. No, I'm with her. I'm Without having another job. I'm going list manager. I want a job on the bench on the weekends. There's a lot of people that sit on AFL benches that are cruising, I reckon. They've, they're sure they're doing other things, but... Uh, Great spot to watch the footy. Mm. You with AFL Exchange. Heaps more to come on the show, including our intriguing players yet to sign some random AFL collections. We're going to talk about the subs and a few things that should happen. Overnight crowd on SEM. 
here on AFL Exchange. It's time for... Hang on a second. Do you want to kick us off? We just spoke about Chris Scott. Mm. There's a little... There's an interesting little exchange between you and him. When was that? Was that Wednesday? Thursday, pre-game. Thursday. This is you and Chris having a little chat at the press conference. What was the rationale you were given by the AFL, Chris, as to why you, you couldn't get your wish? You'd know better than I would, Mitch. I haven't really had any um, involvement in this at all. Um, so I think Brian Cook has. I believe you spoke to him about it and he got um, some sort of rationale that I didn't ask to be passed on to me. Once, once the decision was made, we moved on. Do you know? No, that's why I asked the question. I, I haven't, once it was made, I, I haven't asked. I just, I you did write an article about it, though, so I'm assuming that you do have a bit of background about it. <laughs> what, what's, what's your interpretation of the game being in Melbourne? <laughs> I went on to say that I never actually asked the question because we wrote the original story that the Cats had asked the request to move it mm. to GMHBA Stadium. It came out over the weekend last week that they'd been denied that request. I didn't really follow it up because it was sort of already out there. Since being told, it was a range of set reasons. The signage at the MCG, obviously contractually, um, Geelong have different signage. Um, it had been fixtured there. The AFL didn't want to set a precedent given uh, Essendon's request in round one to move their game against Hawthorne. Hadn't been moved. A range of different things. But it was nice to see Chris reading our stuff. But, yeah, but also, hang on a second. Earlier in the year, didn't he say he doesn't read our stuff? <laughs> he did. <laughs> That's why, hang on a second. First of all, the, 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 the interaction's funny. But more to the point, I thought he didn't read our articles. Mm. Must be a big fan of the AFL app. <laughs> Hang on a second, Luke Beveridge. He must have been listening to last week's AFL Exchange. <laughs> How often have I said never delist a key position player yep. until you try them in the back line? Yep. How many examples of this can we have before clubs start doing it? Last week, and you've been banging on about this all year. Yeah. Never to list a forward until they've been tried in defence. Has Luke Beveridge been just Monday night driving home from Witten Oval, checking out AFL Exchange? Well, we are related, so I just texted him. <laughs> Josh Shackey. Yeah. It could be his Liam Jones moment on the weekend. Could have saved his career. And how many key forwards are going to be off AFL lists mm. that have never had their Liam Jones moment? Or their Robbie Tarrant moment? Or their Majak Daw moment? Yep. Players become better footballers... Key forwards can be... Because it's easier when the, when the play's in front of you, it's easier to just read the ball in flight. Josh Shackey was a footballer that was good at reading the ball and leading at the ball when he was a junior. He's found it difficult at AFL level as a forward. The easiest thing in the world for him to do is try it down back, and he has, and it's worked for him. It's a small sample size, but who's to say Josh Shackey isn't the man that can... Help the Western Bulldogs win a flag down back. Billy Frampton is the next God. man we want to see. Do it. He's tried it. Let's see if he can do it at <laughs> AFL level. Okay, this is becoming. I don't know if there's been a memo sent around at Fox Footy, <laughs> but was listening, watching the footy on the weekend. And I heard this yet again. Lloyd Meek really fought to stay in the aerial contest, and it made the soft drop. <laughs> now that was Derm. That was one of two. Later in the weekend, we got this. Look at the drop here. You talk about a soft drop. That there is just manna from heaven. <laughs> the soft drop is the manna from heaven. Have they been listening to Exchange on the drive into Fox Footy? Maybe. They're using it in the wrong context, though. Yeah. And maybe we need to go on Gary and Tim's show <laughs> and we need to question Gary if he knows. The soft drop and what it was originally made for was when blokes are managed and yeah. they're never seen again. So they're not omitted, they're not dropped. I don't know what the new terminology for soft drop is, but mm. Foxwood's got it wrong, I think. Okay. Maybe you send it, need to send a memo to your old workplace. Mm. Mm. All right, Mitchell, who are the players of intrigue that are yet to put pen to paper? Cam Guthrie, reigning best and fairest at Geelong, all Australian last year, 29, yet to re-sign. So I'm really curious as to why that is yet to happen. I believe uh, there's a bit of haggling over how long, given um, you know next year he'll be uh, yeah, 29, turning 30. How long you get? You know, a few other players at the Cats, Dangerfield and Duncan, a sign long term. He should definitely be in that basket. Liam Duggan at West Coast. We've spoken a bit about him a couple of weeks ago. And Jake Kelly at the Crows is just an intriguing one. His old man, Craig Kelly, runs TLA management. Um, yeah, I think uh, 
they need to uh, see what can uh, be done with that one. Because You're pretty good, Jake Kelly. Is he? No, I love him as a player, but uh, maybe his old man's prioritising a few others before he gets to his own son. Uh, just something that has gone a bit under the radar amongst everything else that's going on at the footy club, but there were 10 players who played for Carlton on Saturday that are out of contract at yep. the end of the year. So 10 of their 23. And there was also five more who were injured that are probably in their best 22 that weren't on in the side that are still out of contract. So got a few to do. There. Who were the most intriguing of those? Sam petrovsky Seaton, Jack Silvani. I'm interested to see how they go about some of their veterans. Um, Mark Murphy, Eddie Betts, Ed Kerno. And some of their rookies as well. So Betty Betts is on the rookie list. Matt Kennedy's on the rookie list. Probably earns himself another year. Brody Kemp, first round pick, still out of contract. Some intriguing ones. All right. Most obscure AFL related things you have collected because we saw a photo on the weekend. David Mundy's three fiftieth. <laughs> a Dave Mundy super fan. Yeah. What are some uh, random AFL things? Um, I used to collect grand final records. Yeah. Used to early days when I. Did that sort of thing. Used to collect that. I'm not much of a collector now from an AFL perspective. I've got a I've got a sports collection though of I've got almost every single Liverpool shirt ever released. Wow. From the start of the Premier League year in ninety two. I'm closing on the sixty four, I think there are at the moment. Sixty so. four. Around not 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 there yet. I'm still searching. The last one I paid like Gee whiz. almost two hundred and fifty bucks for a late nineties one. A couple of weeks ago, just because okay, pretty expensive out there. But any exchange fans got some Liverpool jerseys? <laughs> yeah, you know where to send them. Give me up. Uh, Aaron is that fan, uh, the, the Freo fan who uh, has collected all the Dave Mundy Guernseys. There, there was another one we saw on Instagram. You linked it to us last night. Andy Munro. Yes, he collects random players. We'll delve into that in future weeks. He's got a 2005 ING Cup Queensland Bulls shirt. <laughs> He's got That's some like of the Jim, most peak Jimmy Hope's days. He collects random South Australian footballers who have been on lists for for five minutes. I, like, I wonder if that was worn by Wade Seckham. <laughs> and this is people will probably think we've just made this up. I got a text today from Daniel Hoskin the uh, AFL goal umpire <laughs> from South Australia, w- without even knowing this was going to be in the show, he's texted me his um, AFL umpire collection, including an Indigenous round. He's got all the colours, all the different shirts. We're going to post this, grey, red, blue. Uh, he goes, before even asking, the dark green Indigenous uh, one is my personal favourite. We're going to post it. The Hosk has got every shirt he's ever goal umpired in. It's extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. Micho, random sub moments this year because there was certainly one on Friday night. Yeah, extraordinary. <laughs> Mason Cox, 213 centimetre ruckman forward playing as a sub. Aiden Corn round one was still bizarre playing uh, injured, comes off the ground and then gets subbed out. So didn't even, it came straight off the ground, straight into the vest. Yeah, wasn't he replaced by his sub? Or his sub had already got the kid off or something like that and yeah. ready to go on. Yeah. And he was still on the ground. Yeah. So they were preparing to make the sub as he was on the ground. Yes. Uh, some other players who could eke out another year. Uh, I know Robbie Gray's most likely going to get a contract for next year. Well, he will. He's too good. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if he could play on for another two or three years as a permanent sub. He's the sort of guy that you could see playing on to his mid-30s as a sub. And then Sean Higgins got a contract for next year. He signed a two-year deal when he arrived at Geelong. I think he's the ideal sub next year in his contract year to play him as, plays him as a sub mm. for the entire season. Uh, get him to 80%, 90% fitness. His body let him down early in his career. He's had a great run in recent years, but he had the hamstring at the start of this season, had the knee soreness on the weekend. Uh, if you can get him to 80% fitness and have him as an impact player, he could be the player that could uh, provide some sub options next year. Do you remember when, This is an interesting one to look back on now because it's been quietly forgotten. But do you remember when Oscar McDonald played a full VFL game on the Saturday and then a late withdrawal, so he had to be the sub on the Sunday? That's right. What hasn't sort of... Been, what has been forgotten all this, he hurt his back in the VFL game on the Saturday, so didn't come onto the field, but he hasn't played another game at any level because of that back injury. So not only right. did Carlton dodge a bullet because he'd already played a full game in the VFL, but he had a back injury that developed from that game, and he, that, that was round three, so it's been yep. 16 weeks now. So you get another deal? <laughs> He's only been on the field for a half Yeah, this year, so it's hard to say. Keep two goals, though, in that mm. half.
Overnight Crowd on SEM. You're with AFL Exchange or on AFL.com.au. I mentioned it off the top of the show. We need to get at this Adam Trelaw. Oh, my goodness. Situation. Wow. This is a new series that's been uh, getting massive clicks on AFL.com.au. The Colgate bright side. Adam Trelaw's interview tomorrow will hit AFL.com.au and the AFL Live app. Uh, that is Tuesday. You can check out all of that. This is a sneak peek as to part of what he said. The support that I have and the love and care that I had from, from all my teammates. If I'm going to single out someone, it's obvious for me, anyone who knows me, he's Josh Dunkley. We just do everything together. It's an on, ongoing joke now about our bromance, and I feel like I've known him my whole life. He's, I'm very open and honest in saying that he, he's my best mate. He's just been incredible. Yeah, he's, uh, he's good. He's good. You can catch more of that on Tuesday. Colgate. Official AFL partner, their Bright Side series. Gets emotional about Josh Dunkley. This is a guy I knew only a couple months ago. Have you. It's hard to say, but I've never, like, developed a friendship with someone that quickly. Mm. Where I become. Obviously, you and Cal, I didn't know you guys a couple of years ago, and you become good mates. I don't think I'd ever shed a tear over either of you, though. <laughs> we were doing a podcast together a few months later, so we are pretty close, but uh, you want to check that out. That is extraordinary from, from Adam Trelaw. Um, it's Brenton Speed, the Ducks and Drakes during the Matildas game at the Olympics. Yes. We got smashed our inbox with that. Yeah, you said Ducks and Drakes during the Matildas game. Ducks and Drakes going to the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> New event. Um, AFL players getting into digital horse racing. Guy Simpkin. Yeah, this is a new new craze. So they've uh, prob- <laughs> so they've clocked the uh, the marketing and random spawn they've been doing on Instagram. But what about when... Did they play West Coast a couple of weeks ago and, like, 20 minutes after the game, Dry Simpkins tweeting about his horse? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hosk was in Melbourne on Friday night. He was. That's th- that is... We saw a grand final team on Friday night and it wasn't Port Adelaide or Collingwood. It was Hosk <laughs> and David Roden. <laughs> yeah. They should be the grand final goal umpires because they're the best in the business. Do you get a new goal umpire top if you do a grand final match? If you get the grand yes, final? Yes, it'd have, have to be like stitched, well, commemoratively stitched. That'd be a nice addition to Hosk's I've got a question for Hosk if you're out there listening. Uh, had you worked with David Roden before? Was it a first time? Because I'd imagine he'd be, would have spent a lot of time with just the South Australian guys. Yeah. So the option, the, the, the availability of going into state and seeing more goal umpires, being able to work with more goal umpires. Do you actually have a relationship with the other goal umpire? Like, do you have yep. to do anything? Do you, do you know their, their quirks? Like, does he mm. raise his flags up differently? The chats at quarter time and yes. three quarter time. Wave who, to the... who does the wave to confirm the scores yeah. right? So many questions. We might need Hoskin again. He does listen, so we might have more of that on the uh, Exchange Extra for Thursday. Heaps of... Uh, I've never seen something get so much interaction as our uh, 11s chat from last week. Uh, Seed was the overwhelming favourite among the thousands of comments that there was. Yeah. Heaps of love for Hunter Clark, who didn't make the graphic. But surprise around Tim Kelly's 11. People reckon you can fit Seedsman's 11 into in between Tim Kelly. There's a Photoshop going around of it. That, yes. Which was good. We should actually post that if we can track it down. Um, are f- Olympic sports that would, like football events that would make for a good Olympic sports? Paul said 50-50 balls should be an Olympic sport. So almost like how they start the water polo, you just put a ball in, te- two blokes, 10 metres. Yeah. <laughs> Either side, and they run, they chase, and they collide, and they... That was yep. how XFL games used to start. Remember the XFL? No. Kane reckons uh, the longest kick, like javelin. Imagine this kicking out into uh, a javelin field. Yes. The Marty Party got around us on Insta. <laughs> last week on Exchange Extra, we spoke about Shannon Hearns. No, we've got some grief for Exchange kick. Extra last week. <laughs> Did we? Everyone was saying it was the most unemotional, unfunny, downcast episode of Exchange Extra yet. Was that just Cal hitting up our inbox? Maybe. Tell you what we need to do. Who's just text me? Ask. <laughs> Are you listening live? We need to. We need to have a big sleep. B- book it in your diary. We need a big sleep on Wednesday night. Okay. Ahead of Exchange Extra on Thursday morning. Come with a bit more gusto. Yeah. Anyway, so Shannon Hearn's kick to handball ratio. Someone messaged in. I think it was a, a listener, Mitch, messaged in. 1993, Gary Ablett Senior kicked 124 goals. He had 13 handballs for the year. <laughs> Forget the kick to handle ratio, what about the goal to handle ratio? That's incredible, isn't it? Shows how much the game's changed. And our goal of the year chat last week, Dylan messaged saying, 
he and his girlfriend knew. They just looked at each other on the couch and nodded in agreement. They knew the goal of the year chat, uh, was dying when Alex Sexton had the ball in the pocket, hemmed it on the boundary, and chose to centre it. Alex Sexton has never...